If you had to pick one reason why football is America's game, why it means so much to so many of us, why it unites us like almost nothing else can, in good times and in unthinkable times, it's because we can see so much of our lives through the lens of this sport. In other words, yes, even during days and nights like these, What's important in football is important in life. The basic stuff, sure, sticking together no matter what, working as hard as you can, playing for the good of the team more than just yourself, but deeper ideas too. What real leadership can accomplish, how brilliance can be refracted in so many extraordinary and unforgettable ways. And always, always, what true hope can look like. For a long time now, the NFL Draft has been a place for football fans to chase hope. And even if you take away the party and the pageantry, the scene and the ceremony, you can't scuff out that hope. No matter what the draft looks like or what it sounds like, it's still ultimately about the promise of the tomorrow we all want to see. All the stories, all the possibilities, all the promise. They're just the start of why it was worth finding a way to hold this draft even with everything going on. We can all make an impact while we take part. Every moment along the way, a chance to get excited about your team and support the ones who need it the most right now. It'll be a new way to experience one of our favorite sports events of the year, but still great to be able to look to this game to remember what we love about life, what matters in life, and how great life can feel at its very best. So go ahead, hope your team does everything right in the draft. Go ahead, enjoy a little escape while helping out the real heroes of the moment. And go ahead and still treasure a world where the game of football can still bring us together. As we work to get through these times together, you may not be thinking about blood donation, but blood is needed to save the lives of people who are sick with a range of illnesses. It's easy and safe to give. If you are in good health, please donate. We need heroes now. Visit redcrossblood.org to schedule an appointment. While we're all home, social distancing, Meals on Wheels volunteers are on the front lines across every community, responding to older Americans who are most in need, delivering food and a reassurance to millions of seniors that they are not alone right now. Because of the tireless commitment of these heroes everywhere, humanity is winning. Support Meals on Wheels now by donating at nfl.com relief. We've always been interconnected, interdependent, united. And that's never been more apparent than right now. What we do together today will determine how we live united tomorrow. Stay home, stay strong, and if you're able, give for your neighbors who need help the most. draft and day three of the draft -a -thon. This is a three-day fundraiser to help those 
who are in need of relief from COVID-19. We are here. I'd love to introduce my guests for today. We've got Brandon Marshall. Everybody knows and loves him. You can catch a uh, hundred balls in a season in his sleep and he'll be hanging out with me for the next two hours. We will have Rich Eisen. We have musical acts as we can see. Uh, we've got celebrities, we've got comedians. It's all covered. We also have Dr. Sills with us, Dr. Alan Sills, who's the NFL's chief medical officer. He's here to fill us in and inform us of what's going on from his perspective. And of course, from the NFL angle as well. And this is Jody Beter, who lives in Maryland, Mount Rainier, and she is keeping spirits as high as possible. So we're going to get to all of this, but Brandon Marshall, you're my co-host, my road dog for the next two hours. How are you? Where are you? I'm, I'm, I'm great. Uh, we're down here and uh, like everyone else around the world, just trying to stay safe and take it one day at a time. But uh, listen, this is an amazing opportunity for us to come together and be creative to bring people together. So I love what the NFL is doing through the NFL draft. Uh, it's amazing to watch. And I have a special guest, guest too. You may hear my little daughter in the background. That's little Ziggy. She call it Daddy Daughter Day. We're going to have to get Ziggy on this show. You're a 13-year NFL veteran. You played for a lot of teams. The draft is going on, so we'll go back in the day and talk about your draft day experience, too, in a little bit. I want to get Dr. Sills in here. Uh, what have you seen the past couple of weeks, how this is progressing? Just give us an overall view of, of what people should know this Saturday afternoon. Well, thanks for having me, Kay. And first of all, I, I just want to tip my hat to everyone that's been associated with the draft. I mean, it's been an amazing event to put together. And I'm really proud, um, not only that we've been able to figure out how to do this in the context of all the social distancing that's going on, but also the money that you're raising through the Draftathon. I mean, these, uh, these do dollars will really go to organizations that are doing great work for people that are suffering uh, from this crisis. And so just really proud to be a part of that. So we spent a lot of time and energy, obviously, preparing for the draft, trying to make sure that we're compliant with all the social distancing and public health guidelines. And, and it's, uh, it's been a great team effort uh, led by a whole lot of people at the NFL. It's been fun to be part of that. Love that. And you can go to NFL.com slash relief. You see a number there to text as well. I got to tell you guys, we have raised over $5 million in this process as an NFL family, well over 80 million for COVID-19 relief. Uh, the numbers have almost, you know, almost 5,300,000. We want to get that way up. All the donations again today are going to be matched by the National Football League. Give anything you can. Uh, every little bit helps. Uh, so I want to ask you, Dr. Alan Sills, and thanks for joining me again, NFL.com slash relief for that. So many fun guests coming up, and we would like to get educated as well. From an NFL angle, how are you seeing this? Yeah, so I think we're asking ourselves two questions, obviously, Kay, like everybody. First of all, what can we do to do our part to make sure that we stay at home, that we shelter in place, and that, that we uh, do what's been asked for us from a public health standpoint? So, you know, we have all our club facilities closed. All our folks are working from home, but we're still providing care for our players that need it, those that are rehabbing and, and recovering from surgery and things like that. But we're also starting to ask the questions about what does it take for us to get back open? How do we start to think about gathering back together and planning for the future? So we're doing a lot of work together with the NFL players Association with a lot of our experts and advisors and, and start to think about that. But um, Kay, I'm really encouraged. I mean, I think we've got some positive news and some things that are developing that are that are going to help us as we start down this journey. Uh, and I remain very optimistic about our chances of being able to be back playing football later this year. Brandon, do you have any questions? I mean, it's pretty cool to have the NFL's chief med medical officer here. Yeah, it is pretty cool. You know, I, I've probably had like 13 surgeries, so I got a lot of questions, but I'll <laughs> wait till we dive into the show. <laughs> uh, you guys can also tweet us at NFL hashtag Draftathon. We would appreciate that. Uh, any tips for people out there, doctor? Any tips? You know, we're going to get to to Jody here in a minute. Clearly, keeping spirits high from a mental standpoint, mental health, very important right now, especially as this goes on and on day after day. What kind of tips would you give NFL fans out there watching this right now who are bored out of their minds, they want to go outside. Um, yeah. yeah, tell me. Well, I think, Kay, going outside is a great idea. In fact, I've been encouraging it for all our patients and people that we come in contact with, but I think we just have to do so in a responsible manner. Again, you want to keep your distance from others. Uh, when you're out entering stores and restaurants, maybe to pick up food, that kind of thing, use a mask and hand washing. I mean, it sounds really basic, but hand washing is one of the absolute best things that we can do. So I think we don't have to just be confined to our homes. I think we can get out, get fresh air, get exercise, but we just have to do so responsibly. 
And you also mentioned, Kay, something really important. We know that this time is a, is a time that puts a lot of stress on people from many angles, anxiety about what's going on, uncertainty about the future. So really taking care of our mental health is super important as well. Staying connected, just like what we're doing right here, you know, making sure that we stay in touch with other loved ones. Uh, even though we can't be together physically, we can still be together through technology. And we think that's super important as we all battle our way through this. Doc, yeah, oh, sorry. go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, Doc, are there some things out there like... We we, we always talk about, uh, hey, guys, take care of yourself mentally, physically. Um, any suggestions on what we can do, telemedicine, any, you know, apps that you recommend for our people, right? Let's, any resources? Yeah. Well, that's a great question. And Brandon, we are doing a lot of telemedicine. You know, I, I still, as a doctor, I'm not seeing patients in my office now. I'm seeing by telemedicine. But I think you make, make a great point that, that we're seeing that a lot of people are putting off routine care or things that they might should be doing because they're afraid of going or contacting their healthcare provider. So you want to make sure you're still taking care of yourself, following sure. up on doctor's appointments and scans. There's ways to do that. I think there are also some really good apps and things that are out there. I know there's uh, there's one I believe called Calm that's a meditation app that, that have been offering themselves for free. And if you go to our NFL website, I believe you can find some links to some of those resources that are out there. So you've got, I know, uh, meditation apps. I know there's companies like Peloton that have developed uh, programming that they're giving away in this time to allow people to remain active. So there's a lot that's out there. It's just a matter of kind of doing a little bit of a search and, and finding those things and then keeping a commitment to taking care of ourselves because it's easy to get out of our routine, right? You know, every day is kind of the same. We're at home, but it's really important that we do those basic things to keep our health up uh, throughout this time. I bought okay. a treadmill during this. I have yet to use it, Brandon, but I'm now inspired. Stop by Stop it. Swear. I will. I will hey. today after the draft. Of if we hit the $6 million mark today, I will use my treadmill. At, at uh, home workout equipment is the biggest waste of money. Yeah. And so now it's forcing people to buy more and this is going to collect dust. Yeah, it's, my, it's like my new sweater holder <laughs> over here in the closet. There's telemedicine, but there's also keeping your spirits high. And that's where we bring in Jody. Jody Beter is from Mount Rainier. She's there. Now, she's actually from New York, as I learned a little bit earlier. But you have this massive cello. I feel bad that you're holding it for so long. Tell us about the 30-day cello concert that you put on there for your neighbors. Um, I've been playing since March 19th every day. I, I took one day off from my own restoration. Um, I play every day at one o'clock on right outside here on my porch. Um, wow. And uh, I live in a wonderful community that's very community minded. A lot of us know each other and a lot of us have porches that are fairly close together. So when I play outside, my neighbors can hear, people in their backyards can hear, people walking by on the street. It's a very low density area, but people walking by in the street come and listen. And um, I didn't do it to begin with, to stream. I did it to be in person because I think one of the biggest issues, first of all, because I'm an acoustic player and this is what we do. We play the sound of our instrument, the sound in the air, the sound on the porch happens to be really great. Um, but we're also playing into the communal space, which is very different from playing online. And um, so I really wanted to be in real time and real space and be with people. Um, but we found that a lot of people couldn't be here. And so we stream on Facebook as well every day. And I also, at the same time, I FaceTime with my parents who live in an apartment in Manhattan and haven't been out of their, out of their apartment in a long time. Yeah. So it's, it's quite a, a, a joining experience. Um, and uh, I decided to do it the same time every day because I needed the structure. People wanted to know when it was happening. And it has a bit of a ritual aspect of it for me and maybe for the for listeners too. What's the most amazing thing that's uh, come out of this so far the last, what, 30 days? Um, it's every day is... Like what was unexpected? That's what I want to know. Like, you know, sometimes you do cool things like this and... <sighs> you know, someone hits you up like, wow, like this really blessed me in this way, right? Well, um, it, the amount of publicity it's gotten is very unexpected. <laughs> I mean, really unexpected. I mean, You're I, on I, the NFL draft a thorn. <laughs> I was on the front page of the Washington Post um, fairly early on. And um, 
on a wire, uh, I was picked up by a wire service so that I've been in newspapers all over the world. But it's cool, it's very cool, but the immediacy, immediacy of playing for people is the most important thing to me always. This grows out of my experience. Um, I work with a, a nonprofit called A Musical Heart, which is um, a group of us that, uh, professional musicians who play one-on-one -on -one for hospice patients. Oh, wow. So normally we go into hospice situations, bedside, and it's, it's like a musical chaplaincy. And uh, it's not just a visit, and it's certainly not a concert. It's yeah. to be in touch with people. I think that's, we were just talking about that before we came on live, um, some of my friends. Uh, one of the toughest things during this time and during this moment is uh, folks that are losing people, right? Because we can't even, we can't properly be there for them, you know, during that, that journey. And then also after we, funeral homes, we can only have a few people there. So amazing what you guys are doing. Uh, and it's, it's really blessing so many people. Everybody's doing their part. Everybody's going above and beyond. You can do your part there at home. You're being saved. You're being a tremendous global citizen. You want to get done with this part of our lifetime and look back and say, we did it. We did what we were supposed to do. So NFL.com slash relief for that. I would love it if Jody could play something for us. But first, I'd like to ask Dr. Sills, is there a medical perspective of how this can affect staying up, having good spirits, and sort of getting through this, like playing music, that sense of community from a you know medical lens? Oh, listen, there's no question, Kay, that, that music has a, a great effect on the soul. We all know that, right? I mean, it's just something that's hard to put into words or to study, but we know the power that music has. And, and I think it's just amazing what Jody is doing, and I just uh, commend her for that. But I think it's, it, it's just part of that total wellness that we talked about and that Brandon was referencing. I mean, we got to take care of our body, but we also got to take care of our mind and soul during this time. And I think music is just a phenomenal way for that, doing that. So uh, I tip my cap to Jody. Both of my parents are musicians, and I grew up all around music, so I have a huge appreciation for what you're doing. And Kay, is there a chance we can get a little sample for her? I mean, I, I'd love to hear a sample from Jody. I don't want to ask for too much. I mean, you do have the cello there with you, Jody, and it's not 1 p.m., but it's 1 p.m. somewhere. I have to show you something. Okay. Ooh, let's see it. <laughs> are, you, are you taking requests from your neighbors? Oh, oh very nice. Okay. This is another cello of mine. That's amazing. Yeah. Is the, but I'm not going to play her right now. <laughs> What's her name? What's her name? Her name is Zizi. Zizi? Zizi? Yeah. What's like her it. or his name that you're about to play? Uh, so this cello doesn't have a name. Only Zizi has a name. Oh, we this cello is just a part of my body. <laughs> All right. I me. We'll call, we'll call that one me. Yes, me. that's Cody. <laughs> Nice. I love that. So it's on Facebook. It's at 1 p.m. And when you do these performances for your parents, if you want to let me, you know, I'm in Manhattan, too. I haven't left my house in a very long time. I would be happy to hop on there and be inspired with some music. I, I, I do live here downtown, and it's, you know, every night at 7 p.m., the, the communal part of this is that the entire island, all of Manhattan goes and hangs out their windows and starts screaming and banging on pots, uh, pots and pans and yelling and clapping, and it is the, it is maybe the, the most unifying thing I've ever felt in a weird way. Being here in New York, I live by myself in a one bedroom apartment, but for some reason you get out aggression, you all of your life sort of leaves you and it's very uh, unifying experience as I said. Hey, so, Kay, so Kay, does it remind you of the national anthem in Chicago? What do you mean? No, okay, tradition in Chicago. We have, I forget his name. He comes out, he sings, and the entire crowd just yells and scream. You don't remember? Yeah. You never experienced that? Yes, but yeah. I think this is, I, this, it, it's kind of like that, but it's the, you, you, you played for the Jets, you know New York. The whole city <laughs> out their window. I yelling. know. And any when, car that's on the street is putting the, on the horn. It's awesome. It's beautiful. Well, you gotta, yeah. you, 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 yeah, we've heard about it. We've read about it. We've seen it. You gotta capture that moment for us. We definitely will. Well, aren't you a Bears fan? 
That was, I mean, I'm from Chicago. That's a complicated question, Brandon. Oh, that, see, that's okay. that's why you don't understand. Well, are you a Dolphin fan, a Bears fan, a Jets <laughs> fan, a Giants <laughs> fan, a Seahawks fan? We'll get to all of that. I'd love to welcome in. You can see some uh, new faces here. We have Sam Gordon, who everyone knows and loves, of course. You are the darling of the NFL 100 commercials. We'll get to that, of course. And Santia Deck is here. The Is this right? Highest played female football player ever in the world also aka queen of abs on instagram as i saw a little bit earlier welcome guys thank you thank you thank and you that is <laughs> sam, i'll start with you here if we could just uh take us into a, a day life in the day of sam gordon in social distancing i see there's a lot of books and things to occupy your time huh <laughs> yeah um it's been a little bit crazy had to transfer onto online school which is not very fun at all um and then not being able to go out and play sports we were just about to start um our season for girls tackle football and so have to postpone that until everything else gets figured out so that's been rough but um been playing a ton of basketball with my brother and my families and working out in our gym downstairs just doing whatever we can to stay in shape during this time Sandy, how are you staying in shape and it was very important to you. You have half a million Instagram followers trying to like pick up tips. So it are people right here. Yeah. So, I mean, unfortunately, my uh, season opener was supposed to be next month, but that was canceled as well. So um, fortunately, like I've been able to still do stuff outside with like one of my trainers. So I still hit the track, still, you know, doing drills and whatnot. So just kind of doing what I was doing, but just outside for the most part. So, yeah. This is a real, lot of fun. We're going to have comedians. We're going to have celebrities. I dared an NFL coach to stop by today. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that happens. I would love to thank Dr. Alan Sills. Thank you for all of the information today, for a little bit of direction in a, a time that very much needs hope and just that. And we appreciate everything you're doing to get our NFL players and coaches and fans safe so we can start a season and just have a brilliant and safe 2020. Thank you, doctor. Okay, thanks, thanks again for having me. And just again, to encourage everybody to donate and support the Draftathon. There's so many uh, good causes that are going to benefit from this. So thanks for having me and thanks for what you're doing. And Brandon, for uh, all the attention that you're raising on this cause. Thank oh, you. We'll see if guys will be in. We'll see if I can get my Good Morning Football team to come in as well. Uh, and Jody Beater, we will let you go and put down that heavy, heavy cello. I'm sure you have a performance coming up. So I really appreciate everything that you're doing. And it's really touched my heart today and inspired me to keep learning the ukulele that I have. Good. My pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Jody. NFL.com slash relief. The NFL's matching those donations. So go there, give anything you can. You can text the number two. That makes it really easy for everybody. Uh, Santia, you are a Patriots fan. I am. <laughs> how? I just got it. How you feeling? How you feeling? <laughs> um, you know, I'm in a very awkward position right now because I'm like highly disappointed in Tom Brady but at the same time I understand um his reasonings so I'm trying to figure out am I going to be a Patriots fan or a Bucks fan so I have to pray on it you know like I gotta let it marinate a little bit to see like who I'm going to be rooting for but yeah it just sucks you know that's all I can say so right <laughs> you guys see who popped in you, you guys see who apparently. popped in I don't even know what's Good happening. Morning. Commissioner Roger Goodell is with us, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Kay. How are you? Good morning. I am Hi, wonderful. Sam. Hi. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. How you doing? I know. I've been good. How about you? I missed your big Pro Bowl appearance. I saw it on TV, but... Oh, man. That was such an amazing experience. I won't ever forget that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she's the cool. NFL Honors Game Changer. She is here. Santia Deck is here. She is here. Hi, Sam, how are you? I'm good. How are oh, you? We're, we're loaded. We're, we're, we're loaded with talent. Commissioner, yeah. thank you so much for popping by. It has been a busy, unprecedented weekend for you. I would just love to know from your eyes, how has it gone so far? And then we'll get into your TikTok dancing. You know, I think uh, <laughs> I, I would say that it's gone incredibly well. We were, uh, our first concern was obviously making sure we got it done for the teams and that operationally it all worked. And that has gone very, very well, knock on wood. Um, and the second was just, uh, you know, the technology and making sure we could move around. And, you know, it's funny. I think, Kay, in some ways we have more content than we've had in the past. Uh, you know, it, and I think a lot of things that we're doing this year because of the circumstances we'll probably end up doing again in the future there's a lot of elements i think we'll probably incorporate into the future dress I we, love learned, we learned a lot 
Yeah. I love seeing the the draft rooms, the war rooms of these coaches. It, I feel like they all personified what the coach was, what the team was all about. I, I was eating up every second of it, but I'm a little bit scared I'm going to lose some future hosting gigs to you if I'm going to be completely honest. You nailed it. Uh, I, pr I promise you, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we need we we need you to continue to show us behind the scenes of the commissioner, right? That's the best yeah. part of the draft for a lot of folks, how you're embracing the crowd, how you're sitting at home and you're like, look, guys, I'm tired. I'm going to sit down right now. We need that. <laughs> well, you should have been with me. I could have used you as my helper, Brandon, because I'm changing <laughs> screens on my doors right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> In between. <laughs> the That's people awesome. just the people were I mean you, the M and M's on your table were trending on Twitter for hours. Are you surprised that people are so fascinated with every little aspect of what's going on there in your basement? It's very intimate, you know, sort of vulnerable moment. Yeah, they mention things to me once in a while and, and uh, it does surprise me, yes. Um <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but that's, you know, that's great. I guess it's part of the draft and it's part of, um, I guess, the fans' passion in some way. They always want it. You know, we always say this to everyone in the league that it's people want to get behind the scenes, right? They want to know more what's happening and uh, their curiosity there. And so part of our, our, you know, our deal is to try to do that, right? That's what you do, Kay, for all of us at, at the NFL Network. And, and B knows it as well as I do. I mean, he they they all want to know what the players are doing, what they're thinking, and uh, what makes them tick. And I think that's great. No, no, no. We don't want to know what the players are doing. We want to know what you're doing. <laughs> you are making the draft. You are the See, look, you've done See? a phenomenal job of saying, you know, protect the shield. The, sh the NFL is, is, is family. Exactly. But now we're seeing you, the guy who's leading the ship. We're seeing you. And that's what we want to continue to see. Yeah, <laughs> I think they want to forget Odell, wanna, forget yeah. Diggs, forget to Eli. Reality show, clearly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we just need more to commish. Commissioner, what is it like? What is social distancing like in the Goodell household when the draft isn't in your basement? <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, we really uh, with the girls. I mean, we've been sort of locked up for uh, almost six weeks, so it's the four of us and Blake, of course, and. Um, there's not much social distancing other than the fact that they're teenage girls. So they, they try to keep a distance from their father once in a while. But I, I usually don't encourage that. Ask him what he's watching on Netflix, Kay. You ask him. <laughs> can, well, can, yeah, what is, what is Commissioner Goodell binge watch? I have to know. Uh, my wife got me watching something, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow it. It was actually on Amazon Prime. No, give us the one the girls got you watching. Oh, yeah. No, I told, I told Brandon this the other day. Uh, so I don't know if you've seen Cheer. Yeah. Okay, so we watch all of them, every single one of them. <laughs> it's a great show. Uh, I actually enjoyed it. it. You know, it was a different side of it. And, it, it, you know, to the point you got the chance to see inside – what makes these young girls tick and young guys tick and the coach tick. It was really sort of cool. They have something in that show. I think it's called, is it called Matt Talk? It's when you're really doing, doing their, you know, there's, it's like basically. Oh, yes. So can you give a Matt Talk, a cheer Matt Talk? I bet you didn't know you were going to get this question on here today. A Matt Talk. All the fans out there that can go to NFL.com slash relief. We've raised over $5 million. The NFL matching that number today. Talk to the NFL fans. Well, I would just say, you know, our fans, and I said this up front, are the most generous and passionate fans in the world. And I think, you know, part of doing this draft was not only it was an important element to building our teams, but it really was to try to give back and try to bring attention to the people who've done so much for us on the front lines, the healthcare workers. And, and frankly, a lot of, we, we all talk about the healthcare workers, but some of the people who are just making sure groceries are in the grocery store and you know we just have access to our normal days and, and our normal life those are the people the real heroes over the last six weeks for me and so we wanted to bring attention to them but the draftathon is is really funds it's going to six national organizations that uh, i think are going to make a huge difference in all of our communities and you know it's just something that's really important for us to do is to leave a mark on something so when this draft is done We'll remember the virtual part of it, but don't forget, it's going to have real impact in our communities. And that's really what's most important is that we leave an impact on whatever we do. And I think this draft-a-thon is going to be a big part of that.
Well said, Coach. I know you're uh, you're at home with your wife. You're at home with your girls. You're surrounded by women of football. I want to welcome in Tony Harris, of course. Who's uh, thank you for joining us today uh, at the draft on the last day. The fourth to the seventh rounds uh, are going on. What's social distancing been like for you? Keeping your body in shape, your mental. What's going on? Oh my God, it's so crazy. Just because at the beginning of the social distancing, I actually thought I had the COVID. I only had some of the symptoms, but thank God that I wasn't. You know, the test was negative or everything, but I still had to self quarantine. So, of course, they made us vacate the premises at school, and I've been having to work out. Me and my boyfriend, we work out at the park and on our balcony here in California just to try to keep ourselves because we have to send in videos to our coaches and stuff and uh, workout sessions with them on Zoom. So it's been kind of crazy, especially with taking seven online classes, which is hard because now everything is online. So the quarantine and thing has is, is been crazy, but I think it's just given all of us the time to just relax with our families and trying to, try to wind down, not stop moving so much. Cause I know I move way too much. So I kind of needed this time to wind down a little bit. Well, that screen time is up for everybody. You were also in the Super Bowl commercial. So what is the coolest part of that? Uh, which one? <laughs> oh, big time. Oh, big time. Big time. Wow, that was big. Tony. <laughs> Yeah, that was a scram. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, I think both of them were pretty nice. The the Tony Super Bowl commercial, which happened last year with the Rav Four, was totally ecstatic. It was my first, you know, Super Bowl of all. It was, you know, around the story of me being a college football player, accepting my scholarship. But like I said, I love that one. But I think the whole fact of this this year's Super Bowl commercial was. I got to say that I laid Ray Lewis out, and can't nobody else say that. So that, that has been my favorite part. Ray, please forgive me. He said he was never gonna live this down, but I can say I hit Ray Lewis, so that has to be my favorite part of the That's funny. How many people can say that? I thought you were gonna say he was working with Bunchy Young. He was also in the Super Bowl commercial. Bunchy that- was also he he was he was great. Don't get me wrong, but who can say they laid Ray Lewis out? Mm-hmm. And this That's wasn't true. like the fake. Oh my God! I, I work with Ray on Inside the NFL, and that's a big guy. He is a big guy, and just to keep hitting him, going at it back and forth, back and forth. Okay, I put all a hundred and twenty percent into Ray. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, listen, so, when yeah, I heard your story, when I heard your story uh, a year ago, I messaged you, and you didn't message back. So I'm this. Your really? new name is Big Time. I don't. If you messaged me, I promise you I would have messaged back. I promise I probably didn't see it. Was it on Twitter, Instagram? Instagram. I was like, oh, my goodness. It's an amazing story. I would love it. Great for ball. Great for everything we're doing in the NFL. And then I didn't get a reply. Okay, I'll make sure I go through my DMs and stuff, and I promise I will message you back. I'm sorry. I I, I promise <laughs> you I probably did, and you probably just didn't go back and look. Okay. I probably <laughs> did. I tried to respond to everybody. I'm, this is not coming from me. This is coming from my producer. I'm supposed to ask you about Santia wanting to do an ab contest with you. What's happening here? I'm not uh, privy to this information. Go ahead, Santia. Santia, we ain't talk about that. What, 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 what's uh, happening? What? Here? I didn't even know. <laughs> look, 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 look. They're trying to get this stuff started. What's, what, what ab contest? Let me know. I mean, I'm with it, but let me know. Right. I mean, you got the queen of abs sitting right there. What, what's the competition for? I don't know. Who, who do you want to do a competition with, Santia? Oh, man. I would love to do something with, like, Saquon. Saquon Barkley. And he'll be, yeah, just because we're both running backs. Um, he reminds me a little bit of Barry Sanders, and that's my favorite, you know, running back of all time. Me so too. I definitely Good want taste. to do something with him or Barry Sanders, to be honest. Some type of footwork thing. I think my, my feet are pretty nice. So, you know, I'd like to see who I can really, you know, demolish on the on the ladders or whatever. So something <laughs> that like would that. Be, that would be insane <laughs> seeing you go against Saquon with the abs and you go against yeah. Barry, who's my all-time favorite running back when it comes okay. to feet. I've seen your feet. Your feet are insane. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I'm I'm trying to learn from Barry and Saquon. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the commissioners will disappoint you. You don't want to take him on, Kamish. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed too. You, you know, you. I, I mean, just, we can go at it too. He's making TikToks and everything. He, he's trying to get a little competition in everywhere. Let's talk about it, Commissioner. How did that go down? Did like, did how did that go down? Oh, the TikTok. Oh yeah. <laughs> they yeah. came to me. Uh, they came to me last week. I had to get my girls to sort of spend a long time teaching me that. That's what I mean. You think it's easy? It took them. Oh, 
took him a half an hour to teach me that one. So at least. So. Well, you got it out there. You're probably going viral with the video. So it did. I watched it about six times. I don't know. I, that may be my that may be my first and only TikTok appearance. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so what did you miss most about the actual draft? Was it you know the handshake, the dap up, the energy? What what was the biggest? Uh, I think, the thing you I think it really was. Um, I think it was the energy of the crowd and the guys. Uh, you know, just yeah. being there and the and the probably the draft hugs because. Uh, you know that that's a time when you know you're, you with that moment when they're selected and they realize their dream and they know where they're going as much as they're all uh, big tough guys and they are man that's an emotional moment for them and it, just to be there and and sort of have that moment with them that's the part that i probably miss the most love it we want to get bunchy young in here the athletic prodigy at some bunchy. point so, um, yeah we love having you i know you want to get drafted by your hometown teams tell me how things have been out on the west coast during this time well, during quarantine, it's been it's been really crazy. Actually, uh, we haven't been seeing a lot of people out. Uh, we haven't been seeing a lot of people out on the streets. It's been like really quiet, actually. Because usually it's really busy and it's really been quiet. A lot of people are actually following the rules, which I'm surprised. Because usually, usually, <laughs> usually I don't know my part. They <laughs> all out. Get that in LA. And yeah, it, it's just been really. It's actually been really fun. You get to bond with your family. You can just spend more time with people that you didn't get at first because you've been been so busy. So it's really cool. And you get to meet people you normally wouldn't talk to yeah. in the room right now. And we're thankful to everybody watching. Uh -huh. Yep. At NFL.com slash relief. What was it like to run on the field with the Super Bowl game ball, Bungie? Oh, it was amazing. It was truly a blessing. It was really fun. It was really loud. I really, I was really, well, I was a little nervous because I didn't want to fun with the ball. And I was hoping <laughs> I was, I would trip. It was, it was, it was fun though. It was really fun. And I, I the crowd had a good reaction and I was happy after that. It was really fun. What do you think, Brandon? That was probably top five commercials of all time for Super Bowl. And that's hard hey, I, I for you to be. Thank that's you. hard. There's been some amazing commercials. You Thank got a lot of people talking on that one. That was yeah, good. That and you didn't fumble. I, I, I probably would have fumbled. I probably would have fumbled. <laughs> I would have been so nervous because there's, what, 130 million people tuned in. You know, there's 70,000 people in the stadium. That would have been a fumble for me. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I was so happy to get her off the ball. I was relieved. I thought I didn't even have to worry about fumbling no more. Like, oh, <laughs> get to the rest. Hey, Sam, Sam, I saw you in Nashville last year for the NFL draft, and I haven't really gotten to see or talk to you since. What's next for you? What have you been up to? Um, well, I've just been keeping up with schoolwork and everything like that. And then, of course, this Girls Tackle Football League, um, we've sued our school districts to try and make them offer it in their high schools. Um, so that's been a long process. And then just keeping up with myself and staying in shape and working for soccer. I want to play soccer in college. So a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, I got a question for you guys. I, I feel like I am the least talented athlete on this uh, draft the phone <laughs> right now. As an athlete growing up, I modeled my game after Barry Sanders. I was a running back growing up for, for forever, and then I outgrew it in high school. Um, who do you guys model your game after? I think my person was always um, Luke Staley. Uh, he didn't really have a long career in the NFL, but uh, that's actually where I got my number from, number six, because yeah. uh, he was a BYU running back, and that's always been my favorite uh, college team. And it was actually funny. I ended up playing – um his son's team and he was the coach of the other team and oh, so that was kind of an awesome sweet. experience to get to meet him and talk with him yeah that's sweet that's so i feel like commissioner this should be the next super bowl commercial right here this <laughs> i agree well, <laughs> hey, i'm not this, athletic but i can you know pretty, it can happen they've all been in super bowl here. commercials it's, uh, that's old school for them Wow. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for coming on. This was amazing. NFL.com slash relief for all that. Commissioner, thank you for taking the time. I didn't know that you were popping in, but thank you for all the, the care and for taking us like inside your home. Just a tremendous, tremendous weekend, raising so much money, and we're not done yet. Exactly. Well, thank you guys all, and it's good, to, it's good to be with you, and thanks for supporting the draft and the NFL in general. And you guys are all role models, and I can speak to my home because my girls look up to all of you. And um, I, they got mad at me this week because when I we did an interview earlier in the week and I was talking about the man cave, which I'm in right now. That's what we affectionately call this <laughs> in the past. But 
it, when they were growing up, it was full of a lot of dolls. Let's just put it that way. But now they're, they're the biggest football fans, and they, they sent me a text right away. They said, Daddy, you made it sound like we're you know, five years old. But right now they sit here and watch football with me, and uh, they talk about you guys all the time and uh, how important they are, you are to them. And so keep being role models because you're making a difference with young girls and, and making a difference in what their dreams and their hopes are. And that makes a big difference for us. So thank you. That's and right. we'll support you. That's right. Thank you. Well, thank you so much to Bunch, to I'm here, to Tony, to Sam, Brandon Marshall. Don't you go anywhere. You're staying here. Make yeah, sure Pete. Everything you've done. Right. Thank on. you. Thanks for See getting you, here. We'll back on the air. See you, Roger. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye. See you. Uh, the commissioner watches cheer. I love this. My favorite little nugget I've heard so far. Cheer. I love that. Be Mark. Kay, cheer. I'm surprised. I've never seen it, Kay. I've seen it. Oh, OC, where are you? OC, New York, oh. London, where are you at? What's up, OC, Senora, with the chandelier. Gotta love that. We've got where, your pocket. Where are you at, London? Yeah, I'm in London, Brown. I'm here where you left me, Brandon. Where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you K, when you go to London, yeah, call OC. All right, OC's <laughs> gonna freaking take care of you. He's gonna introduce you to everyone. I got you. I got man, you, man. I miss you, bro. I know, man. Where where you been? You know, I thought about you the other day. I'm in South Florida, but you know, obviously, yeah. I'm just locked down like everyone else. Okay. I got you. Hey, OC, it's Kay Adams. How are you? So we've got OC. We also, I believe, have Karen and Sundance. That Sundance. Oh. Hi, oh. everybody. I love it. Oh, there's Sundance. I love this. And then we've got Kitson. Kitson, good morning. How are you? I guess it's good afternoon. Hey. How are you? Thanks for joining us. This is Petey. He's a quarantine baby. Oh, oh. okay. A quarantine baby. I love that we've got Petey Beautiful. with us. Um, and we've got Sunny. So let's say, Karen, how are you? Fine. How are you? So, so, so wonderful. So you're there with your golden retriever and tell me a little bit about what makes Sunny Sundance so special. Well, Sunny is our wide retriever, first draft. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And we got his sister Margo. What position does Margo play? <laughs> yeah, this is called the variety pack. Okay. And what makes this uh, dog so special is his desire to to want to help when i originally asked him to go next door to help renee now i'm in my 60s she's in her 70s and she's a lot worse off with heart problems diabetes and she's on oxygen so i thought i would try him out doing what he does for me at home so he will get my shoes my purse oh, wow. uh, pick up trash get the mail so I thought I would try it, and sure enough, the first try, I said, go get the list from Renee, and he went over to her porch and got the list and brought it back to me. We went to the grocery store and uh, brought the groceries back, and he delivered every single bag. So oh, my gosh. Became, yeah, right? It just became a regular thing for him. And when he does this, his tail is wagging. He's so excited. He knows he's doing something good. And as you can see, he's a Broncos fan. Yeah, hey, the Broncos, go Broncos. Broncos got a killer draft. Broncos are crushing it right now. Oh, he missed that one. Catch that ball. Football. Damn, yeah. Go. yeah. Good job, Sundance. Karen, we'll get to you in one second. OC, where are you? What are you doing? And what is a day in the life of OC in quarantine slash social, social distancing? First of all, Kay, what you got, a, a Vincent Van Gogh painting behind you? What, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like oh, don't, don't ask me this question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good, man. You got my man Brandon. Brandon looked like he in a bath. What is that, Brandon? What you got? Going know, on? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in my I'm in my empty gym right now. That's where I'm at. Oh, I got you. I got you. No, I'm chilling, man. I'm okay. I'm just um I'm in London actually. This is where I reside, you know, with the NFL UK, mm -hmm. just you know, taking care of stuff. But um so far I'm just at home, not doing much of anything. I get up, I work out in the morning, and then I just, you know, play FIFA. Oh, really? play and wait around. It's been um, it's been rough, but you know, hopefully we'll get through this sooner or later. 
I think we'll get through it because there's so many incredible people and animals clearly doing their part, not even just staying home, but going above and beyond that. And it's really heartwarming. We thank everybody for hanging out with us. We've got more stars on the way, more feel-good stories to keep you uh, not bored on this Saturday. The draft is going on, of course, rounds four through seven right now. This is our draft a We're raising money. So the NFL is going to match every dollar today. We're at over $5 million. Karen, I know that you are doing some reading, doing more than your part to make this uh, go by and, and just to make things better. Yes, that's that's how I feel, you know, just helping where I can. And then also, he's a, he's a working retriever, so um, mentally for him, it's good, and he likes to stay busy. And I, I think he gets it. I truly do think he gets it. And Kitson, you're reading to children? Yeah, so um, I my uh, my other dog is a German Shepherd who is a therapy dog. She's down here napping at my feet. Um, so, uh, I actually work for Children's National Hospital in Washington, D.C., and, um, my dog Tabby for almost her whole life has been certified as a therapy dog, and so when I started working at Children's National about a year ago, um, I, on my first day of work, I literally busted into the volunteer services office to sign up for, um, for her to be a part of the pet therapy program there. And one of the things that she and I do as a volunteer is uh, read, well, you know, kids will read to her in the, the hospital resource room, which is like a little library. And so, you know, uh, gosh, five or six weeks ago when everybody was sent home to quarantine, um, I started recording stories at home, sometimes with Tabby, sometimes without, um, to send for the hospital to use for kids that were still stuck in the hospital even though you know the hospital children's national has this amazing um force of volunteers but nobody can be there now of course mm -hmm. so. thank you so much you. let's open and contessa bass she is here as well and you are visiting your special needs students i am i um i am a teacher at john marshall high school and we kind of morphed into a different type of high school we're not traditional teachers and students we are teachers that have we look at holistically the whole child there's not a teacher at my school that doesn't if, if a child's hungry hey bass you got some food we we cook we laugh we sing um i'm the mother of a child with multiple disabilities and him not being able to go out and get on that bus, follow that routine that is so precious, look forward to that, has just driven him nuts. And I reached out to my other parents and their, their students, my, my students, my babies, were a little sad and not understanding either. So I'm at their houses, mm -hmm. Robin, I'm reading, singing, dancing, jumping jacks, I just make the rounds every couple of days and see my babies and give them what they need. Say that the crazy bass woman is still here. She's not going anywhere. No, that's, that's absolutely do you, beautiful. Do you, see, do you find that this time is actually bringing you guys closer? You know, your, your team, your teachers, your students? Oh, I'm going to say definitely. There's not a student that at, at John Marshall that I don't believe I've not fed. And then you feed a child, you feed the whole family, moms, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles. We've just become just a closer group, even more so than we were besides being, not being the traditional teacher-student relationship. We're family. I think that's Hi, most sorry. amazing. Like that's, that's the silver lining in all of this, right? There's a lot of communities. There's a lot of teams that were, and companies also that are gonna come out of this thing stronger on the other side. So I commend you for all your work. That's amazing. We love hearing these stories. Uh, I see a, a Super Bowl champion. I know we already have one in here, but a Super Bowl champion, uh, Dr. Dr. Laurent du Duvernay Tardif is joining us. Uh, he, of course, was Super Bowl 54 with the Chiefs. How are you? I haven't talked to you in a very long time. <laughs> I'm doing great. What about, what about you? How are you doing? I'm wonderful. I'm here in Manhattan. I'd love to know where you are and how you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I'm back in Montreal right now, and, uh, and with the border closed, I'm going to be here for a while, I'm sure. And uh, I'm doing great. I mean, it's, uh, it's not an easy time for anybody, but uh, 
I try to contribute with, with, with this whole like crisis situation and I try to get involved. I actually just did my first shift uh, in a long-term care facility yesterday as a, as a nurse uh, with different nurse tasks. So it's, uh, it's been interesting. Let me, let me ask you a question. Do you find, um, is there any correlation in like something in you as an athlete that's like, you know what, I'm a fight, I'm a stand up and I'm gonna do everything I can at this time. Is there something that is there that's helping you say, you know what, I wanna go be a nurse. I wanna go volunteer. I wanna go help out on the front lines. Uh, of course, I mean, and I think every professional athlete can say that about themselves. I feel like we're all really privileged, you know, in that whole situation and to be able to like give back and, and contribute to the effort. You know, there's a lot of people at the front line right now that are that are really fighting. You know, they're, they're there, they're doing long hours, they're, they're under a lot of pressure and to be able to contribute is, is something you, I think you want to do when you're, you're in our situation. That's it's not just you. You don't have to have a, a medical degree to make a difference. Thank you so much to Karen, to Contessa, to Kitson, to Sundance, uh, the Golden Retriever doing his part with Grocery List. Every little bit helps in your community, in your home, but also here at the Draftathon. It's our third day of a, a, this virtual fundraiser. So please keep hitting us up with what you can at NFL.com slash relief. Thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. All right, so we are here with O.C. We've got Laurent Renee Tardif, Be Marsh in the building. I'll and uh, we'll see who else uh, decides to pop up. Uh, Laurent du Renee Tardif, I feel like it was a very quick turnaround from Super Bowl champion to what we're into right now. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. It's been uh, it's been crazy, actually. You know, you, you win the Super Bowl, you go back to Kansas City, there's the parade, there's a million people outside cheering for you. And, uh, and, and I mean, this is clearly not possible to do that right now. So that the turnaround has been a really crazy. And, uh, and I think now we're fighting something really like bigger than, than football. And that's why it's uh, important to mobilize ourselves and try to contribute to the best of our ability. Because, I mean, people do need help. And, and it's, uh, it's amazing to see like different initiatives like this one uh, that we're part of today. But, but also like all those donations, you know, people that support the different food bank and all that stuff and and for me you know to be able to contribute and do my part going back into the healthcare system and, and work i think it's uh, it's really important to do it we see michelle tafoya has joined us michelle i imagine you're actually i don't know where you are tell us where you are and how you are doing how does michelle tafoya the goat social distance the oh goat. please oh no, god no. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, I, get nervous. Don't know. I get nervous. Commissioner Goodell came on here and I was like, oh, hello, Mr. Commissioner. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle Tafoya is in here and I'm sweating. I can't. Oh, hit. please. Well, Casey yeah. has 100 grand, 100 uh, sports Emmys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can't even. I'm so honored. Yeah, how how you get the goat in here? You guys, the hyperbole. You guys have <laughs> such interesting backgrounds. I'm like in this dirty office with my kids' computers behind me. <laughs> no, we love it. You're very glam. Thank you. You're very glam. Um, Michelle, tell us about social distancing in the Tafoya household. Well, yeah. So we had gone on spring break. Our kids were on their spring break back in March, middle of March, March 13th. So we had flown down to Florida. At that time, believe it or not, Disney was still open. And my son was saying to me, Mom, there's no way we're going to Disney. It's going to close. It's going to close. And sure enough, it did. But we stayed put in Florida. We just got back uh, to Minnesota yesterday. So um, we just kind of were our little family at home, you know, just doing our deal, playing cards every single night, having dinner together every single night, uh, once in a while having to come between the 14 and 11 year old when they got, you know, sick of each other and were bickering. But other than that, um, you know, we've, we feel really lucky, actually. I see all these stories out there and it's just it breaks my heart. Um, and so I, I, it was really interesting, you guys, when we flew home yesterday, both the airport we left from and the one we landed in felt abandoned. Um, airlines aren't selling middle seats, so you are kind of naturally social distanced from one another. Um, airlines are very grateful that you're flying with them. And uh, they're like, the airports are like ghost towns. It's, it's, it's just weird. But other than that, I feel so lucky um, that we're just all fine. Well, we're glad we're glad you're home safely because we Thank need the you. goat strong <laughs> and ready for this football season when it starts up. Whenever it starts it, up, you think we're gonna have one? Oh, Michelle's yeah. got to ask you the question. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, she goes right. I need a quote from you. We okay, this is why she's the goat, right? 
please. <laughs> Are we going to have one? I, I, I really hope we're going to have one. I, I feel like we are in some way, shape, or form going to get this done, uh, but it's going to be different, that's for sure. We have, yeah. we have Dr. Sills here, the NFL chief medical officer, and he seemed cautiously optimistic that they're at least they're approaching it the right way. Just safety of the player, the most important thing, safety of the fan is the most important thing as well. So we're excited about that. I imagine you and Brandon Marshall have had some awesome conversations throughout the years, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> well, I, my question for you, uh, well, you've also had some cool conversations with O.C. as well. You know, O.C.'s in London right now. He's been there for about 20 years, it feels like. <laughs> oh, see, you're in London. I am in London, Michelle. I am. How you doing? I'm great. It's good to see you. What are you doing there? Are you back there living? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah right. You know, I was actually, um, I was actually born in London. So yeah, I remember uh, when that. I, decided, I came out here to, you know, work for the NFL UK. Things have been going great so far. So oh, I think I'm safe. Awesome. Love it. That's awesome. Oh, and, and it's, it's the situation out there is, is different too, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah, a little it's, dire. It's uh, it's 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 rough, but um, you know the the responders out here, the key workers here for the for the UK have been outstanding, man. They've been doing a fantastic job, man. So you know, hopefully they'll keep that up, and and the people will. They have a saying out here: keep calm and carry on. Absolutely. Uh, you know, nobody's really nobody's really calm right now, but you know we're just gonna carry on, and hopefully things will work out well. We love yeah. that, uh, Dr. Laurent Dubernay Tardif. Give give the NFL fans, your Super Bowl champion and a doctor, one piece of advice on how to handle this the rest of the way through. I mean, we heard, uh, we hear a lot about like reopening the economy and all that stuff. And, and I think what's really important is to, uh, to, to not get ahead of ourselves. You know, we, we really got to respect all the measures that have been put in place by the public health authorities and, and follow the, the guideline, you know, and, and we keep hearing about social distancing and flattening the curve and all that stuff. And, you know, for, from my perspective and my opinion, of course, I'm not a specialist, but you know that what, what's gonna what's gonna end this thing is a vaccine, and that vaccine's not gonna be here for like a, another six months to a year. So, so right now, the best thing we have is, is to follow those those measures because it's it's a viral infection. You know, it's it's not a, a bacteria where you have like antibiotics and all that stuff. Like the best we can do when somebody gets it is to isolate them and 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 give like support treatment. So, so staying away from each other and making sure that we stop the spreading of that virus is really the the best thing we can do right now. And, and I think we're doing a good job with it. We just got to keep going, keep pushing. Well, we appreciate you, Dr. Laurent Duvernay, Tardif, and O.C. Why do you keep calling him doctor, man? I'm, I'm confused. Is he an actual doctor? doctor. Yes. doctor. Oh, my goodness. It's incredible. Love you guys. Love um, you. Sean Payton has been here. I did not see him because he was in some weird corner of this room. I'm so sorry to keep Sean Payton waiting. No, Thank listen. You. Laurent, we love you. Thank you for being here. Hi. Hi, Coach Payton. I, I appreciate you guys. Uh, I'm listening to everything. Um, obviously fascinated. And uh, yeah, I, I would say this. I, the last couple of weeks, I feel like, you know, we've got kind of like a 10 point lead in the third quarter. And some of us are talking about taking our starters out of the game. And that's, that's, that's literally the, I think the biggest mistake we can make. That's my, my own opinion. Um, we, we have made uh, some headway and yet, um, you know, I, I, that that concerns me a little. So, I mean, give me the first person perspective on this. I mean, you you battled it. I saw you were getting plasma this week. You can no longer give or or get COVID nineteen, but you went through it. Take us into that situation. Yeah, I um, I had probably uh, it was a Monday morning. I had the symptoms that all of us would associate with a normal flu. You know, you didn't want to get out of bed. You had the chills, a slight fever. Um, that lasted for me for about three days. Uh, I didn't have any of the cough or respiratory problems. I was fortunate. I was diagnosed on that Monday, uh, or, or I was tested that Monday, diagnosed on Thursday, and basically was, was literally quarantined in the house for, uh, for about 21 days. Um, it's now been over a month. And uh, yeah, they just started in New Orleans last week, a blood plasma uh, treatment program and essentially they're looking for um, patients who, who've had the disease or had the virus that they can uh, take your blood and they, they hook you up to this machine and it's drawing blood and it's spinning it in this machine and it's putting it back in and you're kind of on it for about an hour and gradually they're filling up uh, a bag of, of your plasma it kind of looks like a clear jelly 
And, and that's what they're looking for. And generally, um, one plasma donation uh, can treat between three or four patients. And, and then I can't go back for another donation for another month. And the cool thing is, just two days ago, I got a text from the doctor here in New Orleans, and all of this was going to the four hospitals local, and they, were, they didn't have any B-positive plasma. And so I, I didn't know what my blood type was, and it happened to be B-positive, and there was a patient waiting for B-positive plasma. And, uh, and so I think that's really picked up. Uh, that's, like, that's one step that are, were taken in... Uh, and then the next is the antibody step because they feel like so many people have had this that don't even know they had it. So you can't go donate your plasma if you don't have a positive, all right, COVID-19 uh, result. But if you get a positive uh, antibody test, it basically tells you, yeah, you had it. It might have been in February. It might have been somewhere else. Uh, then you're a candidate to, to also donate plasma. I see, I mean, I've got the goat here. So Michelle, I know you probably got a million questions. Ask your best one, go for it. Oh, coach, I, I, it's so fascinating. And I remember you know, hearing about your diagnosis and I thought, my goodness, it, it seemed very early in the whole thing that, that you got it. Um, did you, like a lot of people uh, it, it have it, it's described it, did you lose your sense of taste or smell? I, I did not. And unfortunately, I didn't lose my appetite either. <laughs> All right. So I really had chills. I'd get up in the morning, have something for breakfast, and then feel like I wanted to go to sleep again. And then uh, that lasted for about three days where any type of just getting up and moving around felt like you were exhausted. Um, so my symptoms I, were pretty crystal clear. The challenge I had was trying to figure out, man, where where could I have gotten this? Cause I was in New York for a week. I was in Florida for a week. Uh, and of course, Mardi Gras was here. And so it was almost impossible trying to figure out where I, uh, where I would have gotten it. And, and it was kind of right on the front end of the news. You know, had I had these symptoms, let's say two months prior, I would have just thought it, it is what it is. And then in, you know, day three or four, just going back to work, I, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. You would have thought you had maybe the flu or something. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Well, so now from what you're hearing and understanding through the league, how optimistic are you that some sort of season is going to occur? I, I am optimistic. Um, I think the, the better question is, um, you know, are we going to have – what can we do with our stadiums? I, I think that's the biggest thing, you know, is uh, I think – Look, it's an easy transition for golf, and we're going to see that pretty soon here. Uh, it's going to be an easy transition for a few other sports. But in the large stadium venues, uh, I, think, I think we're going to be able to, to do this. Um, and I, I, I don't know if the schedule will be reduced or not, but I think the biggest thing or the biggest question that I, that I have in the back of my mind is how is it going to impact our fans at our stadiums? Yeah. yeah. Coach, I got a question for you. Absolutely. All right. So I made some headlines recently. I called I love you, you out. I love you. I, I, I love you too. <laughs> I love you. you. On Twitter, then you went on Twitter. You called me out, or you just we had some fun. Out. Listen, listen. It, you didn't see before this whole thing started on Twitter. I have a post that says COVID nineteen Twitter rules. Did you see that page? I did. And that COVID nineteen Twitter rule page says we can have fun now during this time. Okay. And then when Kobe 19 is over with, then we go back to our normal selves. So, uh, okay, so, 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 okay. We got that out. Cause a little awkward, right? We had a little moment. It wasn't right, awkward I though. Love I love you. I love you. Right. But now we got Tom Brady in the division. Oh boy. How you going to deal with that? Come on now. <laughs> well, honestly, I thought that was going to be Michelle's segue because I was counting on a home and away on Sunday night football. <laughs> 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 That's kind of, I thought we were going that direction. So <laughs> here's the good news. The good news is, and, and I say this in all seriousness, is man, it, it, there's only about 10 or 11 relevant teams. And I think you, you're on point, Oops. not only Tom, but also Gronkowski. When, when someone like Tom comes there, it's not just the quarterback position. The thing as a coach in the division that concerns you is, you know, um, 
just the standard's going to change. And I think that's a credit to uh, the, the really, really, really special players. And we're watching a month of, uh, a month of uh, my man, Air Jordan here. He, he, he brought up everyone else around him. And I think that same thing will happen with Tom. But I, but I do feel like uh, it makes it exciting and certainly newsworthy. You have the day off today. We appreciate you joining us, Coach. How do you feel about your draft? Just three picks and done, but your team is loaded. Last is the last one before we let you go enjoy your free Saturday. Yeah, look, um, we hit on some players that we weren't sure would be available. It's harder when you're picking at the end of the draft like this. Um, but honestly, the, the one thing it's allowed us to do, and it's hard for the fans when you're looking at getting into the third round and you say four, five, six, seven. Well, four, five, six, seven really – on, on your trading charts doesn't equal a three. Um, so one of the challenges in this whole draft with everyone at their own homes is going to be what takes place after the draft, and that's the hour of signing free agents. And Brandon knows this. Every one of you guys know, man, there are a lot of good football players that aren't getting drafted in seventh, seventh round. So we're looking for the Pierre Thomases. We're looking for, uh, man, these players that were free agents. And – Everyone being in their own homes is going to make it that much more challenging. So we're going to be – right now we're communicating with a stack, and as a player gets drafted, it comes off the stack. Um, but hopefully this will give us a chance to be a, a little bit ahead of the curve relative to free agency. Coach, i got to tell you, I'm going to donate $100 right now because that's what I told you that I would if you came on and gave us a little bit of your time today. Thank you. And that puts us at – $5.5 million. Whoa. Oh, amazing. That's for these Man, – Listen, that's outstanding. I was, I was telling Mickey, the general managers and the head coaches decided to do $8,000 per selection. And, of course, all the teams start the draft with, with different amount of picks. And I started the morning meeting with Mickey. I said, Mickey, did you realize you just handed the Vikings yesterday? You handed uh, Coach Zimmer and you handed uh, Mr. Spielman four more picks to what they already had. and They hadn't even thought about that. So that trade – cost Minnesota about $32,000 for the head coach and the general manager. You see, you see, he's always competing, right? It's always, always. something. Always. Hey, I'm thinking, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> what do you binge watch really quick? And this will be the last question for you and for Michelle. What are we binge watching at home? Michelle, you go first. Oh, man. Okay. Well, we started McMillions, the whole thing about the McDonald's mm. scandal. Uh, so we did that. And my husband... I can't get into the the one that he's watching, the, the Ozark or whatever. Oh, I love Ozark! I know, but I try, the first episode, I'm really queasy about violence. <laughs> so I could I just couldn't do it. I couldn't get past the first one. So uh, mostly I'm binge reading right now. Oh, of course. Of course I'm is. boring. I'm very <laughs> dull. John? Coach Payton's watching film. I'll answer it for him. He's just watching film. No. No, I, honestly, um, man... I finished, long finished Peaky Blinders, finished Ozarks, and I feel like it's a little bit of a torture that this Jordan documentary just gives us two every Sunday night. Like, had they given us 10 last weekend, I'd have, I'd have been finished that too. It's fascinating because growing up there, I remember a lot of it, and yet there are certain things you learn that, you know, you didn't realize Scottie Pippen was as underpaid as he was. You didn't realize you know, all these things that I, I, I find fascinating. Sean, Peyton, thank you so much for hanging out. And we're so glad that you're feeling better. Please go to NFL.com slash relief. Everybody out there watching, Saints fans, you're, you're done with the draft. You're done it. Done. Do your thing. Please go donate. donate we're out. And we appreciate you so much. Uh, when is somebody coming to accept? Is it just going to clean cut right here? Or? Well, it's going to be a Cleveland Clinic doctor. And... <laughs> Look, we made no, a trade in the. I <laughs> traded my left arm to the Browns yesterday via Twitter. It was not <laughs> very cool, but you're the best. Thank you so much. And thank you to Michelle Tafoya. She is the absolute GOAT. Sunday Night Football oh, is the absolute best. Yes, Thanks for helping me with my job a little bit. I love that you guys are doing this. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have new faces in here. We'll see new faces this whole time. We've got musicians and country artists. And now we, of course, are joined by, I see Marcus Rashford. I see Corey. I see, let me see who else is in here. Hi, Clay Helton is in here. Okay, let's get started with Marcus. How are you? Explain social distancing to me and Brandon Marshall. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. You know, um, it's, it's, it's tough, you know, because we're so used to being active every day. Um, 
you know, being out, out and about and, and training and working hard. But, you know, we have to deal with the circumstances and sort of just respect uh, the people that are risking their lives to try and help the situation. So, um, yeah, we've got to stay indoors and just keep working. Hey, Marsh, you see Derek Johnson here? <laughs> right. Yes, sir. What's up? What's up, my man? You okay? What's going yeah. on? Not much. Just chilling, man. Just, just. Bro, you're a legend, bro. <laughs> oh, man, come on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You played, like, linebacker for 20 <laughs> years. Like, how does that happen? Man, man, it's hard. I tell you what, it's a lot of hard work, man. Kansas City was good to me, though. It's you know really what? But the best thing that you've ever done, uh, it wasn't anything on the football field. It was that Texas <laughs> video <laughs> two weeks ago. You guys had some, you had Vince Young, you had Charles on there. How did yeah, y'all produce Huff. that? Yeah, we had a lot of people, man. Brian Arakpo, uh, Jamal Charles. We just kind of, you know, just embracing this uh, this COVID-19 uh, uh, pe pandemic right now and just have, trying to have some fun, man, bring some smile to some fans' faces. We just got, you know, got dressed up a little bit. We just, we took it off right back, you know, after the video <laughs> We got dressed up a little bit, man. It I want to know who who was cutting y'all hair. Like who's 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 lining y'all up during these times? You know what? Well, we got a, we we got a special guy to come. You know, come by and uh, you know, with the gloves and just yeah. trying trying to trying to be respectful okay. of everything. But it's 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 hard. But we got to get got to get fresh though. Derek, are you it. cooking at home? What's like the meal that you could cook to survive social distancing? Oh man, I'm I, I like cooking. So uh, when you when you talk about this during this time, it's all about grilling. Going outside, put some steaks on the grill, some lamb chops, or something like that. Uh, may maybe burning up a few meats, some new things. Just trying to try. Bro, you out. got? Do you got the big green egg? I do, I do. And oh, I the do. baby ran in the back. Your wife trying to get your I, baby. I, I, I know, right? <laughs> I love it. This is quarantine. <laughs> I got, I got. Yes, I got, I got. This is quarantine, and it's fine. I got five boys ranging from one, one years old to twelve years old. So wow. Yeah. Oh, y'all yeah. getting after it. We've got a coach. You've got Clay Hayton with us, uh, Helton with us right now. Look, that, tell me everything I need to know about the guy who went to the Dolphins. Not Chua. He's there. I know a lot about him, but mm -hmm. Austin Jackson goes there. Let us uh, give us the, you know, give us more of his personality side here at the draft. <laughs> don't, I don't need to know his hip swivel and stuff like that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to tell you, he's a great teammate. He's going to be great for the Dolphins locker room. You know, you're talking about a guy that's only with us, with us for five semesters, so he's still a young kid. You know, he's 20 years old, but as far as being a terrific teammate, football instinctiveness, loves the game, um, he was one that was just a dang joy to coach his time here. We were sad to see him leave, but, man, did we celebrate when he got picked by the Dolphins. Mm. Is, this, is this like a for, – for Brandon and for Derek, what is this weekend like for you guys? Do you, when you watch the draft, you know, these, these later rounds, the first round, does it take you right back there to when you guys went through the same thing? And what's the first thing you both think of? You, Marsh? Well, all right. Well, for me, um, wow, my draft day wasn't great. I was one of those guys. I'm, I'm kind of like a slow blinker. <laughs> uh, just tra just train you you're around a lot of slow blinkers blinkers at time what that means is it just takes a while to get it for some reason I was at UCF uh, and we weren't even a mid major at the time and I didn't have a great college career and I thought that I was going to go first round I don't know why I thought that Kay so when the first round went by uh, I cried. Second but round went by. You're a wide receiver. Of course, you thought you were going in the first round. Yeah, but I mean, I didn't. I mean, I had one decent year, my senior year, right? So for the draft, for me, it was it was tough. Uh, fourth round came around. Uh, Mike Shanahan, Coach Shanahan, called me. He said, "Listen, be ready to play tight end." You know, I'm a wide receiver now, but at this time, I was so anxious and so so hurt by not going the first day that I was like, it doesn't matter, put me anywhere. So for me, it takes me back to those emotions. Yeah. Uh, but I'm a competitor. Like when I watch the draft, when I watch the Hall of Fame speeches, when I watch the combine, it just makes me want to go out there and work harder, right? Um, so I love this because there's so many emotions that come up when I'm watching anything NFL. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I second that, man. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, remembering of, of a special moment. I mean, this is what we dreamed of. So watching these kids, I mean, watching their families, watching people cry. I mean, it just brings back all the, um, the blessed moments and uh, being appreciative of, of the opportunity to play in the NFL. And even though these kids, they want to go as early as possible, just like Brandon just said, 
uh, it, it's about going to the right team because that, that at the end of the day, once you get picked up, you can throw all those those um, those draft status out. It's about what you do when you get to that team, and it's, is that team uh, flexible enough to uh, 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 to develop your craft and 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 help you to produce and and, and be a, a factor or make an impact in the NFL. Well Just said. train. Yeah, I feel like just train. Let yeah. me ask you a question, right? Because we're all sitting at home. We're all sitting at home watching a draft right now. And one of the things that come up for me when I see living rooms, because I didn't have that, right? I didn't have, you know, ESPN or NFL Network or Kay and, and Nate Burleson chiming into my living room. I didn't have that. So I was watching these guys. And then you see all of the family, like the aunties, the uncles, mm -hmm. everybody crying. Like, why are they crying? Like, you didn't make it. The kid made it. So what happened when you see the living room and you see everybody in the in the family crying, what do you think of? So when I just so you know, Derek is my cousin, my first cousin. First cousin, yeah. Oh, no way. So it's really, really cool. But I think with the family, they're overwhelmed because there's Hold a on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not just gonna blow past that. <laughs> cause cause you 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 know, you with Kevin Hart, you and Kevin Hart are like co-hosts of so many yeah. different shows yeah. and things. Uh, Hold on, because you could be a little comedian. <laughs> Bro, This are y'all really first cousins? You are yeah. first cousins. This is his mom and my dad are brother and sister. Huh. So, well, I look alike a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, you know, my football dreams didn't come true, right? So um, I had to live through Derek. I tried to go to the NFL to your story and watching people in the living room crying. That's the hope, right? And they're, they're, everybody's hopeful for, you know, a new chapter of life, you know, uh, something to be excited about. That's why they're crying, you know, get... There's so many different emotions going on because there's a new opportunity. There's new advances uh, for the But family. the auntie's crying too? Because everybody, you know, it's so they much. Cry. It's a proud moment. Coach, coach help, help them out, coach. The aunties, <laughs> the neighbors down the street crying? Of course. So, to we, know someone. Everybody wants to know someone. Well, we were all raised by an entire family, and it takes a village sometimes to raise football players, I'm going to tell you. So some of those aunties are important. And I tell you what, it's really been neat to be able to watch a little bit less flash this year and a lot of heart in these yeah. living rooms. And that's, that's what's coming off is the heart. And that's what's really cool for me to see. I've really enjoyed it. It's been a different year, obviously, but I have really enjoyed it. And congratulations to the NFL and what they've done. I think they've really pulled off something extraordinary this year uh, in a fabulous way. We appreciate that, Coach. Are you, how are you keeping in touch with your players? Because now it's all, face, I mean, I'm bad at Zoom and links and downloading yeah. apps and stuff. Are you, are you FaceTiming your players, checking in on them? Are you, what are you, what are you up to? Are you on the TikTok well, situation? Well, Roger Goodell I've got, I've got three children by birth that, thank goodness, are under my roof right now. But i got 110 adopted sons that are from Connecticut all the way to Hawaii right now. So I might as well have this uh, iPad duct tape to my head. This is all I've been doing is FaceTime and Zoom, making sure that, one, you know, their health and safety is good, but also that all the services that they need to continue to be a highly functioning student athlete is still provided to them uh, as we go through this crisis. So it takes a lot of time. Uh, and I think the greatest gift we can give each other right now is our time to be able to have these one-on-one -on -one conversations and check in on people and have the conversations just to see, are you doing okay? What can I help you with? Coach, well said by you. Boss, one more from you. I need, a, I need a tip here. I told Brandon, he made fun of me for buying home workout equipment. I have a treadmill. It's, I, could, I, I have it right here. I haven't used it. Give, give people, give people like a little tip on what they could be doing. Uh, and we know you have Just Train. You, I heard you ran the NFL Combine. Give me something I should be doing while I'm in uh, social Well, business. you know, I think Brandon gave you a hard time because Brandon has a facility that he can go to every day. Yeah, he's in his gym. <laughs> So that's the, one of the reasons why. But I think if you just create a daily schedule, there's always, you know, I'm always talking about movement and motivation and, and making sure that we take care of our mental health. And I think that comes a really, really, it's essential to get up and work out every day because you need to make sure that your mind is constantly moving so that we, we're shifting the focus away from what the world is putting out there and the negativity and the real reality that's happening. So we have to move more. So get on that treadmill. If you just walk in for 20, 30 minutes a day, just make it, make some compound ventures every day it doesn't have to be these super big things just these small little things that will compound into a bigger bigger thing that you're trying to ultimately accomplish and that's bettering yourself bettering your mind your body will look a little better along the journey you'll create some new disciplines for yourself so when you come out of this you're 10 times better
I, I mean, love following it, you, man, because you break up the monotony of it. You know, the other day, I gotta follow genius you. post, amazing post. You have um, Russell Westbrook. You're training was Russell Westbrook in the sand pit, right? One of my Practicing favorite social players, distance. by the way. One of my favorite players. Great goat, goat, right? Well, we throw the goat name out there a lot. That's another discussion. Yeah, that's but you're, but then you so you're showing his speed. Then you come back. You follow it up with another video showing Kevin Hart literally <laughs> looking like he's insane, insane. Yeah, sure. For sure, man. You know, I think what I try to do is, you know, when I approach anybody, and, and the game of life is so important, and so many people don't approach life as the game. The game of football is the same as life, and we have to approach it, prepare every day like we're getting ready for our big stage on Sunday, Saturday, Friday night light. So that's how I approach training, right? So, Kev, I, I, he's the best in comedy, but I want to, when you're training, that's the element of life. So what can we do? What obstacles can we overcome? And you, you, we got a chance to see Russ, an elite athlete, touch the sand and then you got can't kid go and you just it, it's no difference when there's no comparison but we, we created some fun you show you know and, and obviously shown how difficult it is to really you know what these guys are taking on it's it's serious you know what i mean so awesome. it was, it's funny but it's cool and uh you know just trying to bring it full circle but letting everybody know what movement can happen in any space anywhere it's last a tough question. time right now. You are making the best out of it. We do have to take a break. Thank you so much. It's a family affair. Clearly, we had Boss and Derek Johnson. Marcus, thank you so much. Coach Clay Helton, thank you guys so much for being here and doing your part and helping us raise, hopefully, closer to $6 million than $5 million here on mm -hmm. day three of the draft is on. Thanks, guys. Man, thanks for having me. We'll be back right after this. Our team at New York Presbyterian wants to thank all of you. Great you job, everybody. Kay and Brandon, you guys are doing fantastic. We're smiling. Your cheers are keeping us strong. People are doing the right thing by staying home, keeping themselves safe, keeping us safe. It's why we care for all the people who need us right now. We want them back on their feet and back home with their families. From the bottom of our hearts, thanks so much for your support. We know we'll get through this together. Hello, my name is Linda, and I'm a simulation education specialist with Advocate Healthcare in Chicago. I am proud to be on the front lines of this pandemic, helping our patients beat COVID-19. Team up by doing your part. Stay home and practice social distancing. Go Bears! I'm Natalie Jarrow, President and CEO of Second Harvest Food Bank of Greater New Orleans and Acadiana, and a die-hard Saints fan. For more than a month, our team has provided more than 3 million meals while we respond to the COVID-19 emergency across South Louisiana from New Orleans to Lake Charles. And on behalf of Saints fans all over the world, Go Saints! Hi, I'm Sean Payton, head coach of the New Orleans Saints. As many of you know, I was diagnosed with COVID-19 a month and a half ago and have been fortunate enough to have fully recovered. Many people across our country and across the world have not been as fortunate. My thoughts and prayers go out to all of those who have lost loved ones during this extremely difficult time. To all of our first responders, healthcare providers, and essential workers. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. I can't stress enough how important the stay home, stay strong message is to our NFL fans. Please stay home. Please be a good neighbor. Keep your heads up. We'll get through this together. And if you have the means to support, we ask that you join us in supporting our communities during this unprecedented time by texting DRAFT to 21000 during the draft. Every single dollar counts. Thank you. While families go hungry, as they do now, I'll fight. While workers see their jobs disappear, as they do now, I'll fight. As the lonely sleep on beds of concrete night after night, as they do now, I will fight. While sickness spreads fear. While caregivers grow weary. While love is kept distance. While parents fear for children and children fear for parents as they do now, I'll fight. I'll fight for families. I'll fight for the vulnerable. I'll fight for heroes. For joy. For hope. For good. While light can vanquish darkness. While love can change lives. While I can make a difference as I can now. I'll fight. I'll fight. I'll fight to the very end. Hey guys, it's Luke Bryan here from my home in Nashville, Tennessee. 
I know you guys are at home watching the NFL draft, and uh, what an exciting time for these young men. Um, last week, I was able to do a live stream, a partnership with Verizon called Pay It Forward Live, where we help small businesses in our community and across this nation of ours. So many small businesses, restaurants, mom and pops, they're really, really struggling right now. And uh, Verizon and I are doing our part to help. If you want to help, make sure you hashtag Pay It Forward Live. She was sitting all alone over on the tailgate, ten legs swinging by a Georgia plate. I was looking for a bowling friend, thinking, no way, she ain't got one. Soon as I sat down, I was falling in love, trying to pour a little sugar in her Dixie cup, talking over the speakers in the back of that truck. She jumped up and cut me off. She was like, oh my God, this is my song. I've been listening to the radio all night long, sitting around waiting for it to come on. And here it is. She was like, come here, boy. I Play it again, play it again, play it again I'd have gave that DJ my last dime If he would have played it just one more time But a little while later we were sitting in the driving my truck Before I walked up to the door I was scanning like a fool AM, FM, XM2 But I stopped real quick when I heard that should have seen her light up she was like oh my god this is my song i've been listening to the radio all night long i can't believe that it came back on but here it is she was like come here boy i want to dance for i said a word she was taking my hand spinning in the headlights she gave me a good night kiss she said play She was like, oh my God, this is my song. I've been listening to the radio all night long. Sitting around waiting for it to come on. And here it is. She was like, come here, boy. I want to dance for I said a word. She was taking my hand, spinning in the headlights. She gave me a good night kiss. She said, play it again, play it again. Play it again, play it again, play it again Yeah, play it again, play it again, play it again Somebody play it again, play it again, play it again Welcome back to day three of the draft -a and thank you Luke Bryan for that awesome music. We've had a lot of music uh, during these three days, this virtual fundraiser, please keep going to nfl.com slash relief. Donate anything that you can. Text the number on the screen. The NFL today is donating everything. We're matching everything, so hopefully we can get this number over what it is already, which is $5.5 million. We've got a full room. I co-host for the next half hour-ish, Brandon Marshall, of course. And then we've got the receiver, Cooper Cup, who I'm sure that could be a brand receiver. To. Put some respect on his name. <laughs> But Mr. Catches Everything, coming off a career year, by the way. Uh, we also have Russell Dickerson, who I'm sure uh, wants to talk about 
but Luke Bryan and everything that's going on, he's rocking the Titans uh, hoodie, and so is Nate Bargatze, our comedian friend who I met at the NFL Draft in Nashville last year. Eliza Schlesinger is here. Congratulations on your sketch show. Thank you. This month, love having you, and you're here with Chris Jacobs. So let's start there and talk about what you two, Eli uh, Eliza and uh, Chris, are doing with USO. Oh, thank God, because I don't have anything to say about football other than L.A. has two teams, <laughs> both of which aren't really playing at the moment. <laughs> the Who's your team? Which, which, which one's your team? Which one between the Chargers and the Rams? No pressure. No pressure. It's probably the Rams, um, and I love uh, receivers. <laughs> so much. That's <laughs> all I think about. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, yeah. Chris, you're a Bears fan. I was born in Chicago. What are you guys doing with uh, USO? Uh, well, you know, we've been continuing the longstanding tradition of the USO entertaining the troops, but we're having to do it virtually now in this lockdown. So it's my honor that they tapped me to uh, host these interviews with really great talents such as Eliza. Um, we did her USO Zoom video uh, about a week and a half ago, and it was a huge success. Um, troops from around the world are able to log in to the Zoom meetings and use the Q&A chat feature to ask questions of the various guests that I have. So it's been a great series and uh, it's gonna continue through through June. And um, hopefully it's it's a good thing for our, our troops who are out there keeping us safe. Great. Did, Love you know that. Kay, did you know Kay was from Chicago? I did not know that. I did not know that. I, I'm she born. also speaks Polish. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's on your Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually a good time to be doing this Zoom meeting because the Bears don't have another pick until the, the fifth round or something like, like that. that. Eliza's like, um, I thought Deion Sanders was going to be in here. I head was head told head. Deion Sanders. I'm from Dallas, and so, like, the 90, like, 95 to 99, which is when he played, like, those Cowboys are, like, an institution where I'm yeah. from. And so I'm, I'm much more versed in cowboy lore than the uh -huh. average bear. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna you are not from there. You and, you and Chris can actually go, but I did want to ask okay. you, so Eliza, before this, you were in a movie on Netflix opposite Mark Wahlberg. So I know that you don't have like an affiliation for any NFL team, but how much Patriot, like, woe is me did you have to hear during the filming of that? <laughs> There was a blood oath that had to be taken uh, right at the top. Um, we also had some crew that uh, were from Pittsburgh, so you know there were a lot of cage fights. Uh, there's, it was very Boston strong there, uh, yeah. very Boston proud. And any day on the set, it, you had anywhere from like professional MMA fighters to Boston PD, Boston firemen. Like it was like dude time all day, every day. Uh, and then Mark Wahlberg and I had sex on a sink in the movie. So oh my it, everybody won. <laughs> Another day in the life of Eliza Schlesinger, you guys. Watch Spencer check Confidential. Out her special, The Eliza Schlesinger Show. Thank you so much also to Chris Jacobs, who, of course, is the host of the show. Long. Can I say one thing? Yeah. DeAndre Swift's dad for president. <laughs> <laughs> He's well going to get drafted, too. He'll probably be the last <laughs> pick in the second get... round. And go right, Bears. Watch that. Go yeah. Bears. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Hey, B-Marsh, let's get the uh, your tie-dye friend in here. Oh, Ziggy, come here, my daughter. Come here, baby. I was talking about Cooper Cup. Ziggy, hey. let's get everybody, everybody Oh, in. never mind. <laughs> well, you come here still. But Coop, the receiver, put some respect on his name. Coop, man, talk to us about L.A., what's happening in L.A. Are you getting outside? How are you training? What are you binge watching? Just talk to us, baby. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's definitely a different time right now um, from the football side, just trying to be creative, trying to figure out ways to uh, still get workouts in, still be able to prepare ourselves. And, you know, hopefully, in my hope, um, hold, holding on to um, any hope that we can play a football season this year and I'll be able to get back out with the guys. So don't want to be the, the guy that gets out there and doesn't know, that isn't prepared. So I'm um, making sure I'm staying on top of that game better. Um, but, man, we're – I mean, at home, I'm spending time with my son. I, I've got a one-and-a-half-year-old, uh, so uh, I, I mean, he's keeping us busy. I've been counting my steps. He keeps me up around 10,000 steps a day, so we've been uh, chasing him around, chasing him up and down the cul-de-sac, uh, going on tons of walks. Um, you know, it's just been uh, – been, I mean, I'm pretty blessed. I, I love being around my family, so um, any opportunity I get, more time I get to be around them. It's a pretty special. Does coach, awesome. does coach check in on you? Make sure you're, you know, keeping in shape. You were one of my favorite draft stories because my favorite, I like looking at all the facts about, you know, players that are entering the NFL and the fact that you talked about how you wore ankle weights under your jeans. 
He wore ankle weights under his jeans in high school, I think. Oh, yeah, I was really, like, I was so one of those really school, cool guys that wore the ankle weights. I was pretty stylish in high school, so, um, you know, it was a good thing for my reputation. Um, it was it was one of those things, I think for two years, I just had to commit to just being like, okay, well, like, I just have to not care what anyone thinks about me for a, for a while while I go through this, but uh, it was good, you know, it, it was, uh, it was, uh, if anything, it was a good test of mental will, I guess, to just strap those things up every morning. Um, but um I love it i love yeah, it I, uh, I am where i am now so question for you ser two serious questions for you coop yeah um yeah. tie-dye shirt did you <laughs> buy that or did you make it oh, this is this was bought this was bought unfortunately oh, I, I know. my daughter made mine no I, I like yours a lot and hers looks incredible too <laughs> if, if she's still around i think you gotta pull her back up there because those are some some fantastic colors she's got going is hey, this second. Moose? Is Moose Johnston in the building? Is that who I see here in this little uh, Zoom box? Yes, Moose Zoom is box. here. Hey. Of course, we've got oh, yeah. Chris Deer is here. This is going to be so, so, so much fun. I want to get Nate Bargatze in here in just a little yeah. bit. Uh, I, uh, we've got lots of guests coming in. Please keep going to NFL.com slash relief. There's so many people uh, coming up. I saw you at the draft a year ago. What is new? How is social distancing from your seat there in now? Uh, it's good. My daughter wanted to wave hello <laughs> to everybody. Uh, it's been great. Nashville's very, you know, it's all spread out. It's been nice to be down here. Uh, so everybody's been doing what they're supposed to do. And we have a cold sec. I had my birthday during this. And so it was like, it was a very sad birthday. <laughs> I mean, luckily, my, you know, I'm 41. So it's an age that doesn't matter anymore. So, uh, but you just have a circle. There's just like a circle of dudes around. They're like, all right, man, we'll see you. And they just left. <laughs> so it was like kind of sad. <laughs> uh, so I don't think it counts is how I take it. And so I'm still 40. Uh, was there any I'm beer ready. at this birthday party? Uh, yeah, they had, uh, they, they walked some over like in our neighborhood. And uh, so, you know, is that, hey, I was a big uh, uh, Jay Cutler fan. Cause I'm a huge Vanderbilt fan too. Oh, Lord. So when y'all were in Denver, dude, I uh, was, a, I loved it. Jay Cutler was uh, what? Brandon Marshall, will you call text? Here's all of us want this. The whole world needs this right now. Will you text Jay Cutler? Yeah. And please come on. I well, did. I got John Payton. Ah, pretty cool story. Listen, 2000, 2006, we were drafted together to Denver. We have this special bond, but things ended bad in Chicago. We haven't talked in a very long time. Oh, wow. I did not expect that at all. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, well, I talk about it all the time. I talk yeah. about it all the time. I am the, uh, what, what, what would you call it? I am the, the scorned. I'm scorned. <laughs> I'm scorned, bro. Sure. All right, well, let's get Moose Johnson in here. Moose, please uh, take us into, and we get to, I see we got, uh, we got Joe Coy in here, another comedian. We're going to keep things light in here. No, no talk about being scorned uh, on the <laughs> day of the draft. -a Moose. Tell me about your, what is a day in the life of Moose Johnston? Are you cooking? Are you cleaning? Ooh, yeah, uh, catching up on a lot of stuff. Um, went right from the NFL season last year right into the XFL season. So I was probably behind on a lot of stuff. So I think my office is finally clean. Um, there you go. Looks yeah, great. My, my wife, yeah, my, I told somebody, I said, I had, a, I had a long list of honeydews and they're almost honey duns at this time. So I'm, <laughs> I'm checking them off uh, one at a time, but. Uh, it's been good, you know, more time around the family. It's been tough. My daughter is a senior in high school, so it's been a real hard year for her. Uh, it seems like every week she's getting something big canceled on her. Um, they were favored to win the state tournament in lacrosse this year in Texas, and the season was canceled uh, this past Monday. So, uh, What's the plan for prom? Prom is scheduled all the way. Um, she missed prom. They've rescheduled graduation ceremonies August 1st, and then prom is like July 28th. So they are starting to reschedule stuff late July, early August right now, some of the bigger events. So that's uh, that's been nice to hear. That's some of the first positive stuff we've been hearing over the last. Okay. And you're here with Chris Deer. Chris, tell us about what you guys have going on at the College Football Foundation. Sure. So I'm a teacher out here in Louisiana, and I advocate for any organization that supports teachers. And the College Football Foundation has a platform called Extra Yard for Teachers, and it's the largest sports entity that supports uh, teachers and education worldwide. They've uh, given over $38 million to teachers and education. 
that's how I was introduced to them because they gave me a thousand dollar grant last year to help my students. So this organization is incredible. They support teachers across the country. They have two auctions online right now that you can check out nfl.com backslash auction. Okay. And the first one is uh, you can bid for actual uh, a package to surprise a school. And the winner of that bid gets a um, helmet signed by over 27 uh, players, including Drew Brees and Peyton Manning. So that's, that's incredible. So cool. And yeah, the second thing you can bid on is uh, our tickets for the college football championship game in Miami. It includes hotels. It includes uh, special events tickets. So you can go on there, auction, and all the proceeds go to teachers like me. And if you don't want to auction or bid, I highly recommend that uh, people check out that organization, Twitter, CFP, Extra Yard. And um, yeah, when you help out teachers, you help out communities. And that's what it's all about is, is uplifting communities. Yeah, and those two, uh, those two items right now, Kay, they haven't met the reserve yet. So it, it's a great deal right now. So they're, they're, still, they're still valuable. Two tickets, uh, as Chris said, to the, uh, the college football playoff game next year in Miami, hotel for two nights, special events. But that, that helmet that's signed by the guys, um, not just guys, uh, Walter Payton, man of the year. NFL players. So you've got uh, Roger Staubach, Dan Marino. You've got you know some of the old guard, the you know the, the great guys that uh, that this game was built on. So um, you know two fantastic items there. And and Chris is being modest. And I just told you about all this stuff that's happening with my daughter as a senior in high school. And you know, we we've talked about the nurses and the doctors on the front lines of healthcare, the police officers and first responders and everybody there. But the teachers have done an absolutely amazing job through this whole thing because. You're talking about learning how to do remote learning on the fly. Yeah. And I've watched my daughter go through this, and the teachers have been absolutely fantastic. So Chris and, and everybody in the teaching industry across our country, uh, I'm just so very grateful for kind of rescuing my daughter's senior year uh, of high school. We love hearing that, and we love everything you're doing with the College Football Foundation. NFL.com slash auction for that. I heard hotels. I heard flights. So everything we're doing here today on the third day of the draft a is geared towards getting back on our feet so all of those wonderful things can happen. Thank you so much, Deer and Johnston. We love you guys. You guys have a wonderful day. Stay safe and be kind. I, we will get to back to Nate, back to the comedy, back to the country music uh, singer who's also rocking the the uh, Titans. We've got Russell Dickerson here, but Cooper Cup, just to wrap things up with you. I Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace. Uh, Cooper, before we let you run, can you give us like your top three things that you couldn't survive social distancing without? Oh. Okay. And don't, family's off the table. We, we know. <laughs> okay. So top three things, um, I, I need my pseudo weight room in my backyard. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd be in a lot of trouble without that. Um, just scrap together, you know, it's like a, it's not quite Rocky style, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just a step above Rocky style. <laughs> um, we're getting that done. Um, Rocky like in the Soviet Union, like the USSR, like with logs and things, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's just it, it's a step above that, but it's uh, it's definitely kind of just thrown together a little bit right now. Um, but we're working on it. It's it's progressing. Um, second thing would be um, our walking stroller is huge. If we couldn't, if we couldn't, if I had to carry, I guess I could carry him on my shoulders. Um, but if we had to carry my son around for our walks, I mean that's kind of our our thing at night is being able to get out and walk. So I'm gonna go with big ankle weight stroller as well. Um, the last thing I would I would need um, like so this is I mean I, I, this is assuming I have a house. Okay. Yes. Right. I'm talking like food, like provision, show. Uh, um. Okay. So if we're going going, uh, can I just say like DoorDash? Yes. <laughs> Do that. Perfect. Food. Yeah, uh, Cooper, congratulations on your first 1,000-yard season, and hopefully you guys get back to the Super Bowl and win one. Thank you for hanging out with us and for being uh, such a good role model for everybody to stay in, stay safe, and help donate to this cause. Thanks, Cooper. Thank you All so right, much. Big dog. All right, I appreciate you. Uh, I want to get Russell Dickerson in here only because you might have to go here in a minute. I hear you're expecting. Yeah, uh, my wife is indeed expecting. It's our first child. So pumped. I like this time at home could not have come at a better time. We've been going, uh, and she's been a vital part of my career this entire time anyway. So like 
we've been on the road together for like five years straight. Wow. And so it's like this whole, this whole time where we're forced to shut down, forced to just chill for a minute. And uh, yeah, coming up early September, about to have a baby. <laughs> well, I mean, Cooper Cup just gave you some advice on, uh, on obviously how the, the stroller is clearly uh, pivotal in that. Nate, you have your daughter there. Any advice for new dad, Russell? You guys have the Titans vibe. Go and give him some advice. Yeah, we, uh, you know, I don't know, you, you just do it. You know what helped us? Is we have, I have a very weird sleep schedule, like, so I can stay up late. My wife can go to bed early. So that was a huge help as being just a comedian, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, and also as a musician. Like, so we, you know, I could stay, I'll stay up till two, three in the morning. So that is a, an enormous help when, you know, so you're not just like exhausted. One yeah. of you kind of takes the shift. But how so, is that? But how is that a huge help? You're at two in the morning. The babies and kids need to be asleep. How, well, I'm talking about when they're a baby. I'm talking about when they're a baby. You know when they wake up and cry at two in the morning okay, for no reason, okay. like when it's a you know. Uh, so I mean, obviously, I did. Did you help work on your way, material? But, did you were you working on your material with the babies? Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I mean, we have a baby for the material. Uh, that's the <laughs> oh, only reason I didn't need. I know we got a dog for I more material. Wait. I'm gonna do a lot of stuff. Uh, maybe get a parrot. You know, just anytime I feel low on material, I just bring something else to live in this house. Yeah, it's darker that than Labrador. Joe here. knows. Yeah. <laughs> well, we love having that. The material always is from the kids. Yeah, we got Joe Coy coming in hot. Oh, How are snap. you, Joe? Let's go. Thank you. Joe, what's going on? How are you? Um, I'm just adjusting to these Zoom meetings that I'm taking every day. It's uh, everything's dressed from here to the waist, and I'm just wearing pajamas from the bottom. Where'd you get that from? That's dope. Same. I love the Seahawks swag. Mitchell and Ness, man. That's the only way to go. Oh, that's... Throwback, the Seahawks, that's the large and air right there. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Are you <laughs> that's in, that's in Seattle. Let's talk about... What up, Nate? What's up, Joe? How are you yeah. How many material in time of quarantine is that? Does it come easy? It seems like a lot of low-hanging fruit out there. I'm just trying actually, to. Oh, go ahead, Nate. I've actually have been uh, trying to write some, just to have like I don't want to have like over like when you when we when we start back up touring and then I, I'm supposed to, I want to tape a special soon, and so you figure you're gonna have to have something to reference it. I don't want it to be like overwhelming. So I have thought of uh, some. Some of it's been who you quarantine with. I mean, my goodness, if you quarantine with a barber, you need to get a barber in your life. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you need to get like someone that is like a nerd. Like, like next time, if this ever happens again, you got to really think who you can go grab at the last second to be like, let's quarantine yeah. together. Bro, yeah. bro like, crazy, you know. uh, wild story. So we have like 12 people in our home right now. So it's, I know it's, it sounds weird, but we have this um, pretty cool house and there's a lot of people. All right. So two weeks into this whole quarantine thing, we're all like trying to figure out what are the rules uh, for our home and our new government. This is a new city. This is our government. We got to play by our rules. Yeah. So anyways, we're all locked down for two weeks. Nobody has left the home. And uh, I turn around like, man, I need to get a haircut. I, I got to figure this out. And my buddy stands up. He's like, uh, actually, can I cut? So my cousin and I, we looked at him. We're like, bro, like we've been sitting here for two weeks trying to get a haircut and you got yeah. all the tools? <laughs> <laughs> Haircut barbers are essential right now. So yeah. don't, don't trust that. But you're, Russell, you have a wife. She can try maybe cut your hair. We've got you. Nate. Yeah, she's. You know, she's helped me out on the sides a little yeah. bit, but I don't know. I don't know if I can let her touch the top. You know. Joy is like, I don't have this problem right now. I'm no, good. I don't have that problem. Yeah. I've been learning how to cook though. That's the crazy thing. I didn't know I could cook. What are you cooking? Until, uh, what, are you cooking? what are you cooking? I'm throwing anything that I have in the. In the in the drawer, anything that I see, I'm just mixing it into a pot. And I'm like, hey, this is amazing. Anything Lucky come out charms and pasta. Uh, yeah, just uh, the pasta is my thing right now. So <laughs> pasta is his thing. You guys want a new spaghetti? <laughs> yeah, figured something out. This has <laughs> hot dogs in it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys so amazing. First yeah. stop by Russell Dickerson. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Nate Fargazzi. You guys can can have a wonderful day. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. As we Thank you. Wonderful. We've got a Jet Super fan in the building. I know Anthony Ramos is here. Uh, we have Rhapsody sitting here. Brandon Marshall uh, <laughs> is staying. Russell, congratulations to you on your firstborn. I hope you don't, you know, I don't know if you're thinking about naming them COVID or I heard there was like a couple 
in uh, Asia somewhere they're naming their child Lockdown. There's some really mm -hmm. weird names coming out of this. So we were we were uh, toying with Baby Rona, like you know something like that, but baby baby maybe Rona. I'm maybe kind little, of little Rona. And we also have Daphne. Is it Sashin? I want to make sure I get it right. Oh, okay, great. We've got Daphne Sashin here uh, from California. And so let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. There's so many people here. This is so fun. Thanks for having um, me, guys. Thank you. Thank you so Good much. Job. Good luck. Appreciate Good luck. it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And congratulations. Um, Thanks, buddy. See y'all. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. So we're, we're Jet Super fan. Anthony. Where yeah, you at? What's going on? Where you at, baby? What's good? What's what good? What do you think about the draft so far? It's good, man. I, I I like Denzel Mims. You know, um, Kai Beckton, he's a great player too. You know, I, I, I yo, man, I, I just think they keep building. You know, and uh, I'm just like, come on, man, come on, come on. If they take that momentum from the sec from the second half of the season into the into this so, season, so you approve of the draft so far? Because you know, I, I played there, my my number one team. Yeah, man, I was hyped when you when you went to the Jets. I know, but you guys can be tough too. So yeah, are you guys cool with the draft so far? What are you hearing? I mean, I'm cool. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm cool with it, man. I, you just never know. I mean, they, it, it can, it can go, it can go anyway, anyway. You know what I'm saying? I will like, tell you this. I love, I love what the Jets are doing. I think getting big boy, uh, he's huge. He's like a house. Uh, that helps out uh, the quarterback. That helps out the running game. Um, you know, obviously with Tom Brady being out of the vision now, uh, other people can breathe and potentially compete. Potentially, we'll see what what Belichick do. But I'm excited for you guys. Yeah, I mean, me too, man. You know, and and uh, and you know, Dar Darnold, he's you know, I think he's just gonna keep getting better. You know, and uh, and hopefully, you know, we we Le'Veon Bell has a crazy season. You know, I, this is a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of potential for. A good season, but you just never know. You just, you just, ne you just never know. And yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad yeah. Brady. I'm like, thank God, Brady is in Tampa Bay. God bless. <laughs> Have a great time, bro. I hope the weather's great. <laughs> I'm the Dolphins went and got Tua. Let's welcome in the Sashin family. Daphne, we know you're in California, and you asked neighbors to draw on their driveway driveways with chalk. Tell us everything about what you guys have going on. Yeah, it was the first week that you know, school was closed and we were sheltering in place. And I, I have a really wonderful neighborhood that, you know, we get together and we do events. And I was just missing that connection with people. And so I thought that um, one thing that we could do because, you know, we couldn't really do anything together, but we could take walks and we could, you know, take bike rides in our neighborhood. So I thought that um, if we all made a, you know, an, um, some art on our driveways and our sidewalks that on the same day that that and then that was something that um, we could each enjoy on our own, but it was a way to kind of connect us all. And so we had about 60 families that um did art and it, it was just like a really nice um a nice really nice experience and then the wonderful thing was you know other neighborhoods friends um heard about it and tried it in their areas and um it was just a, like a, a really um positive way to feel connected i asked this question earlier we had a we had a, some pretty cool families and individuals on um, and I'm going to ask this question to you. Um, do you find that this time is actually bringing your community closer together, your family? You guys are sitting here together doing things that you guys never have done before. Um, what do you find during this time? Absolutely. You know, and I think I'm so happy that I, um, you know, reached out to neighbors early on because, you know, after that, then since then, um, you know, we've been sharing, we've been trade, we have, we have a really active email group in our neighborhood. So we've been sharing essentials. There was one day where I really wanted to bake and I couldn't find flour anywhere. Oh, and wow. I emailed and, you know, all these people uh, offered me flour and somebody called me from Costco. And during a time, during a time where you go into a Costco or a Publix 
and everyone is running and taking all the toilet paper, taking everything for themselves. Yeah. And that's pretty cool to hear. It was really great. Yeah. Like just, just the other day I had some chips that were, weren't being eaten. And I, I just asked, you know, would anyone, does anyone like these chips? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and a couple of people said, Oh, we love them. And so, you know, I offered, I had to bring them by on my bicycle and then, and then one, um, person said oh like you know do you need anything in return and I said like well I haven't been able to find tissues anywhere and so she left a box of tissues for me and they're you know, showing like NFL GMs and owners and coaches trade things uh, during the everybody here is really uh, yeah, is longing for it. yeah yeast and anyway and then you know, like we had other neighbors um, start doing a collection for our local food pantry and, um, you know, so they were recruiting some volunteers to collect and it's just, I have such a great feeling. I mean, I already love the neighborhood, but now I just can't wait, you know, for whenever we can, you know, eventually see each other in person, well, I think we're going to have the best block party. Well, you, yeah. you guys are giving us ideas. Kay, make sure you go to your neighbor and give them some flour, all right, when we get off of Let me tell, the draft. My, neighbors ha my neighbor has like a salsa party of one every day, all day for nine hours. She moves it <laughs> off furniture. <laughs> I knock on the door the entire time. I'm like, please give me some quiet. So no, I don't think there's any flower sharing going on <laughs> here in downtown Manhattan. Rhapsody is here. The new album, Eve, is out. Three Grammy nominations. How has this time been for you? Clearly, I'm not enjoying it as much as, uh, as some other places, but we're doing all doing our part. And we're all here to uh, support a really great cause. Um, actually, the downtime, it's been pretty good for me. I just came off a crazy busy year. So to be able to sit down in one place has been good for me. Um, so, you know, I've just been resting. I've gotten to another creative mode. I'm working on two more albums. Um, yeah, I've, I've talked to my mom every day at probably 8 a.m. <laughs> on the dot. Um, so it's just been real good. Um, I'm catching up on some shows I haven't watched in a while. And, you know, just awesome. doing some learning. What on shows? Um, I just finished um, Little uh, House with Little Fires. I probably messed up the title. Carrie um, Washington. Carrie, Wait. You said what? I said with Carrie Washington. Yes. And right. Blair Underwood. Amazing show. Um, I'm starting on Snowfall tonight because okay. I have completely missed that. But those are uh, those are the two. Uh, we're we're going to get back to uh, Anthony Ramos here in a minute. Rhapsody, thanks for stopping by. Give me your dream collab. This is all about good energy. Who's the dream collab for the future album? My dream collab? If I could get Lauren Hill, I would be I would be set for the rest of life. Anthony <laughs> Ramos is a musician. He's but like, didn't you have Kendrick Lamar? Yeah, me and Kendrick, we worked together three times. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was on, uh, I was on To Pimp Butterfly. He was on Layla's Wisdom. Did a mixtape. Okay, then. Yeah. <laughs> Rock with me, Brandon. Come through with it. <laughs> I love it. Rhapsody, thank you so much for stopping by. It means a lot to your fans and to ours, of course, that you're helping support this cause. And people from not just sports, not just theater, not just country music or comedians, just everybody across the Drop board. that album ASAP. We yeah. need it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to bring in Shavy Shaw is here. She's a similar situation to uh, to the Sashin family. You were in California though, and you have put together kids to donate to the homeless. What inspired you to do that? Um, so I've always been involved with a, a local homeless shelter in my area um, by donating meals and uh, just setting up donations. But it wasn't until I heard the governor of California talk about the amount of homeless people in just the state of California. And so. Oh, oh we lost you. The, 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 the sound might be out. I'll yeah. be trying to get back. Um, oh, I'll be trying to get me back. Let me ask you, Anthony Ramos, you were in the original Hamilton cast. I have to ask you, which NFL player oh, do you think would make the oh. oh, there we go. We lost you for a little bit. Can you, can you give us an overview again of what you're doing? We lost you. Run that back. Yeah, so um, I just uh, heard the governor talk about like the amount of homeless people in just the state of California. And um, so I just put together 50 kits and donated them, just an act of kindness from my family to the homeless shelters. 
Um, but it wasn't until I talked to um, the staff members where I saw an actual struggle. So I further expanded this project. And so I had two goals. One was to create a fundraising platform so I can uh, raise money and donate even more kits. And then the second was to reach out to news, pla uh, news platforms um, so I could spread awareness and uh, hopefully inspire other people in different areas um, to uh, start this in their own area. I love that you're doing it. You've donated more than 150 coronavirus sanitation kits to the homeless. Thank you for that. It's every little bit counts, even if it was one kit or one dollar at NFL.com slash relief. Thank you so much for being here. Ramos, I want my answer. Which NFL player would be the best in a musical situation? I know Eddie George. We can go to the past. He's done, been there and done that. But who would be great on Broadway? Oh, I know. Uh, who would be great on Broadway? I think Peyton Manning. <laughs> Really? Uh, he's funny. Put him in a good play. Okay. Omaha. If I, hey, but if, we, if, 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 if we really had to pick someone, I would say Marvin Jones. Why? Marvin if you Jones. go to his page, he's, he, I mean, he has the personality, he has the look, yeah. and he can sing. A word. All That's right, bet. Check him out. Check him out. Marvin Jones. All right, let's get it. Thank you so much, Anthony Ramos, of course, for being here. Good luck to your Jets this year. Take down the AFC East. Thank you so much to Shavy. Uh, and thank you so much to the Sashin family. Who, oh, we see the Eagles thing. We, we see it. We see it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the few teams that B-Marsh well, didn't play for, didn't did you? Well, you guys want to have a little bit of controversy taking a quarterback in the second round? I don't know. I, don't, I think everybody in Philadelphia is kind of wondering what is going on with the Eagles and their drafts. You know, I mean, it's it's uh, not uh, a Jalen Hurts. I love the kid, but I don't love the team in the pick. I know. I know. How did you learn not to question what Howie does? Okay. Howie all right. Play, you in Philadelphia, we question everything. We just need to listen to Kay. Kay, you know, I, she. Yeah, I just. Yeah, you're. You may be right, Kay. I'm just saying Howie does pretty good. I'm just. I'm gonna miss Darren Sproles. I mean, it makes me want to cry, Brandon. Oh, yeah, he's a, he's a legend. He's a he's legend. Absolute, absolute and he can do everything. We have a what else we got in here? Oh, man. We got Chase B, Nigel Ooh. Sylvester, Storm Reed. Our, these are our it's final good. guests, I think, Brandon. I'm going to let you lead this off, Brandon. What do you got? Well, no, I want to see Storm. What's up? Hi, how are you? Hi, Rich is in the building. Oh, you're so odd. Oh, <laughs> Stormy. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if you're better. I don't know if you're better uh, on a big screen or just on social. Thank you. That means a lot. I try to be both. I mean, um, being an actress, it, it's great because I get to play other characters and, and get to tell other people's stories. But I feel like it's imperative to be a young person on social media that people get to know me and get to know my personality. So. I try to find the, the best of both worlds. You know what I love about what you do, especially like you said, young, the young, you're younger and then you're inspiring not only the younger generation, but all of us. Uh, but I love how you have a huge focus on wellness. Yes. And this is before COVID-19. Right. So can you talk to me a little bit about where that passion comes from and why? Yes. I mean, both of my parents are very active. So I've always tried or they've always tried to keep me active, if that makes sense. But I feel like wellness is goes all around, whether that's moving your body and going outside to work out and trying to keep yourself healthy. Or there's like mental wellness as well. And just being able to like love yourself and take a beat and know when you're not having that great of a day, but just know that you're perfectly imperfect and you can move on and try to not only empower yourself, but empower the people around you. I find that really beautiful. I love that. And I feel like music is a big part of that, at least for me personally. I live in a one bedroom, like 700 square foot apartment in Manhattan. So <laughs> and that puts me into a different place. It takes me back to a different memory. So you want to get to Chase B here really quick. Uh, you're a yeah. DJ, of course. You've been uh, broadcasting DJ sets on Instagram live during this pandemic. What mm -hmm. inspired that What's your reaction been? Man, uh, I feel like just as a DJ, you kind of always want that satisfaction of just like, you know, giving people what they want, you know? So, um, and just doing it live on Instagram is such an interesting thing because you get those like immediate reactions, you know, like you play a song and you know, you see how people feel about it, you know, verbally right on, right there on the screen. So uh, it kind of gives you a sense of, you know, being outside a little bit. So, you know, it's exciting. And, you know, I feel like that's why a lot of DJs still do it. You know, so so Tyler Rich in the building had a performance from Luke Bryan. This has been full of country stars this entire draft on weekend. Tyler, you're a newlywed. What is that like in social distancing? I imagine out of all the places you can be in a relationship, newlywed phase is the best. 
Uh, yeah, it's crazy because also thanks for having me. What's up, guys? Good to see you all. What's up, uh, T? You know, we, uh, it's crazy because so my wife is an actress and so she holds down our house here in LA. I live in Nashville and so it's all we've ever known. We've been dating for four years and so we've always been going back and forth. This is actually the longest we've ever been together in the same place. And we're like, all right, we're six months married, seven months now, and we're going to be together in the same exact spot. No touring. <laughs> No switching houses, nothing for five, six weeks straight. It's going very well. We're enjoying it. Tyler, <laughs> Tyler, I, I, you know, I love all music, okay? And I start jumping into country um, probably six years ago. Yeah. My all-time favorite uh, uh, song is Don't Break My Heart, Achy Breaky Heart. Can, yeah, you give us, can you give us five seconds, bro? Come on, five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Let's go. But you want Billy Ray Cyrus right now? <laughs> I want <laughs> That's that. That's what you're asking for? <laughs> Give it. That's tough. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need to get my guitar, man. We got to do this proper, right? <laughs> Don't break my heart. <laughs> Is that what song you're talking there about? There you go, dear. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, come on. We, let's all get involved. Let's all get involved. Come on, Stormy. That. Let's all get involved. You lead it, T. T, you lead it. And right. Stormy, you come in. K, come in. Let's go. Okay. Ready? Oh, my go. goodness. <laughs> Don't break my heart. Uh, my break break my heart. heart. Oh, come on. Right. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, those are the only words I know. He sang them already. So it's like, right. like, what is this song? <laughs> the building BMX biker, Nigel. Hello, man. Uh, what's up? How are you? Have you been able to get out there and do your thing? Are you indoor on a bike? What's the deal? Um, I rode my bike around my apartment a few different times, and that was cool, but that was the extent of it. I haven't been outside on my bike during this whole uh, quarantine situation. We love that. Well, we love that you guys Nigel's are all here. Nigel's a beast. Tyler, are you, yeah. Tyler, my are God, you what's up, bro? What's up, bro? Everything's I actually good. just, I actually just messaged him, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> and you actually hit me back. We we had a guest on earlier that I messaged a year ago. They didn't hit me back, so we called them out. So um, I don't have to call you out because you actually hit me back. Nah, I'm here, bro, and I much appreciate it. And we're going to figure that out, you heard? Yeah, no problem, bro. Like, I just love what you do on the bike. I grew up riding a bike a little bit. So seeing you take this thing to a whole nother level with the culture is everything. So, man, yeah. keep going. Uh, keep inspiring. Um, you know, and I just can't wait to continue to see what you do and how you push the limits moving forward. Oh, yeah. Much appreciated, man. And once we uh, get out of quarantine, we'll get, get, get back on my bicycle and do what I'm supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? We're pushing right. exceeding limits here today, guys. We've raised over these three days $5.5 million just in these five days as an NFL family, well over $80 million. The NFL's matching every don donation today. So keep them coming. Storm, I love you. Euphoria, mind trip, but I love it and watch it every week anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Chase, if you want, if you want that achy breaky heart thing, just like let me know. I can DM <laughs> you. Hold it down. Uh, thanks to Nigel Sylvester, Tyler Rich. You should know this. From, can you say goodbye in Polish? Oh yes. Um, uh, do widzenia. Do widzenia. I'm Polish too, right? Uh, He's really wife from Poland. And Brandon yeah. Mark, you are amazing. And that's it. Two hours are done. Do widzenia. Right back. Hello and thank you for having me. I'm Norman Rice with Extreme Networks. Extreme is the official Wi-Fi solutions provider to the NFL. Today we're very proud to partner with the NFL on their COVID-19 response. We're working with the NFL and the teams to provide the technology to support the facilities that are being set up for temporary testing or field hospitals in these local communities combating COVID-19. We're also working with our supply chain to produce and pull in additional protective equipment, which we're providing to healthcare facilities and healthcare workers. And finally, we're working with our customers across the world, whether it's governments, healthcare, education, or our enterprise customers, as we all transition to work together to deal with the challenges we're seeing from COVID-19. We're honored to be part of the Draftathon, and we hope that you'll consider making a donation. On behalf of Extreme and the NFL, thank you. Hi, I'm Anton Vincent, president of Mars Relay North America. I'm honored to join the NFL Draftathon today on behalf of all Mars associates across the US to talk about our relief efforts during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Our first priority remains the safety of our associates, their families, and doing what we can to help slow the spread of this virus. But we also understand that communities around the globe need our support now more than ever, which is why Mars Incorporated has committed over $20 million to support people, pets, and communities most affected by this unprecedented crisis. Here in the U.S., Mars has made donations of both human and pet food to organizations including Feeding America and GreaterGood.org. We've also produced and donated hand sanitizer for local communities, in addition to donating masks and ventilators to hospitals in need. There are thousands of Americans who continue to show up to work every day. To all those that keep us going, we wanted to provide a little something to keep them going. So as an official NFL partner, Snickers created an opportunity for you to recognize a neighbor or friend or family member who is an essential worker by sending them a gift card for free Snickers. Head to the link below, and for every Snickers sent, we'll also make a donation to Operation Gratitude. We are humbled to have the honor of bringing a little bit of joy to families, frontline workers, and everyone in between. And I want to take this moment to recognize the compassion and resilience of our own frontline associates during these challenging times. See you all on game day, and congrats to all the 2020 NFL draft picks. Hi, this is Matt Garman from AWS. And AWS is thrilled to be a partner of the NFL and to take this opportunity to talk about a few of the ways in which we're supporting COVID-19 relief efforts. We recently launched the AWS Diagnostic Development Initiative and are committing an initial investment of $20 million for that program to accelerate diagnostic research. We're also offering no-cost resources for virtual classrooms to assist kids learning from home. And we're supporting a new initiative to recruit, train, and deploy 1 million volunteer health workers. Additionally, we're supplying the World Health Organization with advanced cloud technologies and expertise to accelerate efforts to track the virus, understand its outbreak, and to better contain its spread. Separately, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos made a personal $100 million donation to Feeding America, one of the organizations that the NFL Draftathon is supporting. Thank you for letting us be a part of it and for allowing us to share just a few examples of how we're supporting COVID-19 relief efforts with world-class, highly reliable infrastructure when the world needs it most. Follow Amazon News on Twitter to stay up to date on our continued response. And if you can donate, please go to nfl.com relief to help the cause. As the official motor oil sponsor of the NFL, Castrol, in conjunction with our parent company, BP, are supporting customers, consumers, and communities through local initiatives. We have also donated over $2 million to local and international charities. And Castrol would like to help you and your family during this time. Now, through Sunday, April 26, take 25% off all Castrol products on Amazon. We encourage you to donate your savings towards the NFL Draftathon and go to nfl.com forward slash relief to learn more about the NFL's relief efforts. Stay safe, stay well. Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us in this whole new way of experiencing the NFL Draft. Ford has a long association with football and the NFL, but an even longer history with America. And we are so proud and humbled by the brave Americans that are out there on the front line of this crisis. And we're also proud of our Ford team who is working hard to support their efforts. Our teams have shifted from building vehicles to producing respirators, ventilators, masks, and face shields. Our Ford dealers across the country are going above and beyond to offer mobile remote service to keep our customers safe. And on behalf of those 3,100 Ford dealers, we are donating $250,000 to this great draft-a-thon in support of COVID-19 relief efforts. We're a family company at Ford, and family is so ingrained in our culture that we didn't have to be told what to do when this crisis broke out. But we couldn't do it without the brave people that are out there supporting us. We thank them for the essential work they're doing to keep all of us going. Please, stay safe and join all of us in Ford in looking forward to a better season ahead. Shelter in place, they say, out of harm's way. Most of us have, but some of us can't. The ones who have been deemed essential. The ones out there delivering, cleaning, cooking, healing, responding, volunteering, adapting, inventing, and saving thousands of lives. Thank you for being so good at being essential. 
Hey guys, it's Zach Gertz here. And I remember my draft weekend like it was yesterday. So I just want to say good luck to all the guys going through it right now. And it's been an honor over the years to partner with Campbell's Chunky Soup. And recently the Ertz Family Foundation, as well as the Chunky team, teamed up with Phil Abundance Food Bank right here in Philadelphia. And we are committed to being a part of the solution of all the trying times going on right now. And we want you to be a part of the solution as well. So we'd love for you to consider donating right now. Um, everything matters during this time. And so now I want to send it over to Mark Klaus, CEO of Campbell's, and of course, Fly Eagle Fly, baby. Thanks, Zach. It's an honor for everyone at Campbell to work with you, the Ertz Family Foundation, and the NFL to ensure that we're providing food and comfort to those that need it most in Philadelphia and all of our hometowns. I wanna thank Campbell employees and their families, especially those in the plants and in the stores who are making sure there's food on America's tables every day. In honor of these heroes, Campbell's is donating $500,000 to Feeding America, bringing our total support to $4 million for communities across North America. Please join us and donate what you can Visit nfl.com backslash relief to learn more. And Zach, I'm looking forward to seeing you and 70,000 of our closest friends at the link very soon. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the draft a -thon. We got a whole new scene here. We got a great, great crew. I'm going to introduce quickly everyone. We got Demario Davis. We've got Erica Costell. We got Regina Carter. We got Colton. We got Calais Campbell. We got Matt. We got John Brankus. And we got Yaya. Kyle Brandt. How are you feeling today? Peter, did you forget Titus O'Neill's name? Because he's going to snap okay. you in half, bro. <laughs> he is. I don't know how. Come on, man. neglected a WWE champion and superstar. My bad. Yes. <laughs> Titus has been letting himself go badly in quarantine, as I can see. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, Peter, before we get into this, uh, before we start making friends and counting blue cars, Peter, I understand you woke up this morning and did a day three mock, and you have uh, the Eagles taking quarterback Jake Fromm. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> no more mock drafts. We're talking about the draft of thought right now. The mock drafts are done, and we want to know what's going on in this crowd right here. So let's start it off right now. Regina, what do we have going on? Where are you at, and what are we talking about today? Well, um... Hi, I'm Regina Carter. Nice to meet you guys. Um, I'm at home right now. I've just been, you know, quarantining, staying healthy, staying safe, and, you know, getting to know myself. It's beautiful. Yeah. Are you learning some stuff about yourself? Yes, I actually am. I've actually got really spiritually involved with myself, and I've been loving it. And my, I've been um, critiquing my craft. You know, I act. So mm -hmm. it, I've been getting great feedback with my TikToks and things like that. I started a YouTube. So it's been doing really good, going really good. It's beautiful. You know, we, we are in the presence of so many wonderful people here, but only one of us is the current Walter Payton Man of the Year for his work <laughs> oh. in the community, all the things he's done. That's big Calais Campbell, my man. Yeah. Calais, how are you? Man, I'm living the dream, man. You know, every day is a good day. You know, just happy to, you know, be a part of this. You know, uh, seeing all these kids get drafted, you know, going back to, you know, it was a long time ago for me. I'm born in the year 13, but, you know, it brings back the memories of that day. And, you know, really just being a kid and wanting to be in this in this world. And so, you know, every time I get around the draft, man, it really just it brings that surreal feeling of, like, man, wow, I really made it. You know, I really accomplished my dream, you know, at the highest level. Um, yeah. But besides that, man, just trying to, uh, you know, make a difference in this world. Uh, you know, getting ready to give out a whole bunch of stuff coming real soon. I'll make sure everybody knows about it when it comes around. But along the way, man, just trying to spread some joy. John Brankus, yep. we've watched you for years. You have a machine-like mind for all things athletics and science. What, what do you think of when you look around this room and see the athletes, the talent, the actors? Uh, Yaya's got about 50 different big movies coming out. We got to get about all of them. Frank, yeah. I want your analytical breakdown of this room right now. Uh, I'm, I'm humbled and honored to be included in this room. Um, and I think that that's what's the great thing about the quarantine is now all these people aren't so inaccessible. We actually can all hang out together. It's pretty amazing. You know, it's funny. We were doing a... I have a charity with Ray Lewis, and uh, we did a, a. I have a new show called Because We Can um, with a company called Kill Cliff. That's a clean energy drink, like, you know, Monster Red Bull full of sugar and everything. Kill Cliff is a clean energy drink. We did a, a show called Because We Can, and we were talking about how to be resilient. 
and listing, we had Sage Steele on and Ray Lewis and four different Navy SEALs and MMA champions. What was amazing is how for elite athletes, especially like a time like this, while it's difficult to stay home, you see people like Calais who are concerned, really concerned about giving back to their community. Even in a time like this, like not worried about, well, how do I preserve myself? It's how do I do good for others? How do I make this world a better place? That's why I'm just so honored, man. I got a great, uh, I had the great privilege of working with Calais. And, uh, you know, he was amazing when he was on sports science. He's even more amazing now. I don't know how that's possible, but <laughs> congratulations, Calais, man. You're amazing. I appreciate it, man. That was a good time. Hey, I want to welcome in Demario Davis from the New Orleans Saints, a great New York Jet as well. Demario, how are you doing? Where are you right now? And what is your take on what's been going on the last few weeks? Man, it's uh, it's kind of like what Kalea said. Man, you you watch this draft right now, and it takes you back to when you had the opportunity to be drafted, and, and you realize how much of a blessing when you see all those guys crying, those emotions for that part of the journey. But even what, what Khalid's hit on later and, and, and what John talked about, um, understanding that, you know, as athletes, we, we're given these huge platforms and we have a voice and we have a responsibility and we got to do something with that. And it's all about what we do. And um, that's why I'm on, you know, champion in uh, United Way. I'm a player plus player for them, an ambassador for their brand. And when you see... I, at, at moments like these and in, in, in these trying times that we're all in together, trying to win together, it makes me proud to be a part of like groups like United Way um, that are strategically positioned for times like this. Yeah. I kind of liken it like to an airbag in a car. Hmm. Like the car can have a wreck and, it, and it's really bad, but you're so appreciative of like the airbag that's there for times like this. And like groups like United Way, I mean, Around the world, they've raised like four hundred million dollars right now so far. Hmm. One hundred thirty-five million of that has been outside the U.S. Wow. And then ninety-five, uh, you you can find United Ways in ninety-five percent of communities around the country. Yeah. And so, not only are they in a position to mobilize, giving in a unique way, and, and, and draw in resources very quickly, but they also have the partnerships and collaborations on the ground that are doing work. So. Like, say somebody wanted to donate to a United Way right now, you can know 95% of the money you get are going to go directly to the uh, COVID response programs they have in place Beautiful. now. And 5% of that is just going to be able to make sure that that, able, that money is able to be mobilized consistently. And so Beautiful. you're able to give real quickly and know that it's having an impact on the ground, like, right away. And so you've been doing this for over 100 years. They're strategically placed for times like this. And... So it just makes me proud to be able to use my voice in that way to champion them and know that there are more athletes coming in right now that are going to be able to do the same. And I just got to say, this is the dopest room I've probably ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> the great room, hey. Mario. You couldn't great say it room. any better. I want to hear from Massey. I hope you don't mind if I call you Massey. Massey, oh, yes, I know you've been sitting there. And I want to hear what you're appreciative for right now. And just how are you and what are you, what are you up to in this incredible room? Uh, well, thank you for actually pronouncing my name properly. <laughs> of course. But um, I've been quarantined. You know, I actually um, run a health and wellness um, company, and I've been literally showing people how to move from home, how to stay active, um, and, you know, like, this is real. And me being a mom, um, we partnered up with No Kid Hungry. So my company, I actually have a supplement a plant-based supplement company and we're about to you know donate about fifteen thousand dollars to no kid hungry um hopefully team up with um meals and wheels and we'll see what we're gonna do i mean at the end of the day there's a lot of kids out there um who they just don't have access to good food so what i've been doing i've been trying to reach out you know i've been blessed um all these years with the support of people who are in my community and you know in times like these you know you ask yourself how can you extend how can you be of help and how can i just instead of just bettering myself how can i better others mm -hmm. so i've been literally keeping active in better shape than i was <laughs> before and hey just expressing my gratitude and let's see where this goes 
It's this is an incredibly physically fit room, save for <laughs> you guys. Um, and it's so fit. Look at the double bicep. We got to make room for more. So, uh, Massey, thank you so much for joining us. I know you're very busy. Come back anytime. Thank Regina, you. too, I know you're perfecting your craft. You look lovely. Thank Very you. talented family you come from. We wish you the best. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. and, and Mr. John Brankus, any parting words for us? Yeah, you know, I would just tell everybody, you know, this too shall pass. Yeah. And, uh, you know, keep your head up, you know, keep believing. And we will, look, we're all coming together, I think, tighter than ever. And, you know, when this thing is over and it will be over, you know, I think that there'll just be more love than ever before. God bless you, John Brankus. Heart, science, we have it all. We will see you soon. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to keep hanging out here, though. Peter, there's so much we have to talk about with so many people. One of the first people to get here, it, on my screen, he's below you. It's our guy, Colton Underwood, from The Bachelor, <laughs> from I, Illinois State, a, a pedigreed football background. Colton, how are you, man? What have you been up to? Well, I'm doing well. Um, well, actually, I, I was one of the first – people I think in Southern California to have the coronavirus. So I, I recovered for about two weeks and uh, now I'm back up in my place in LA. I was with Cassie's family in Huntington while I was recovering. So um, I've just been trying to help however I can. I've been working with doctors in the um, American Red Cross for my plasma donations. And there's a lot of, a lot of kinks, a lot of systems that we got to get up and running, but we're working uh, really closely to try to help people out. And I think that goes back um, I try to remind people day three of the draft looks a little different for me because I went undrafted and mm. played on the practice squads for three seasons and I took a lot of pride in that so um, I just would like to encourage everybody who doesn't get drafted and the people who are battling every single day on practice squads just to know your role is important to know you help the team out and to keep working hard uh, but anyway I think I think just everything that was instilled for me from the sport of football I can contribute to any success that I've had today and that includes giving back so uh, I can't thank the sport enough. Colton, you're one of the, the most beloved bachelor uh, or bachelorettes because of your work in the community. You were always so philanthropic and you used that platform to do that. You also had one of the greatest athletic moments in bachelor history when you jumped over a fence, I believe in Mexico, and you cleared a six foot fence. I, tell us, I mean, that moment right there is one of the legendary moments in reality TV history. Take us through it. Yeah, well, I mean, I joke that I feel like I trained my whole entire life not for the NFL, but to jump the fence on reality TV. And somehow, <laughs> somehow I had more NFL teams tweeting me. Like, I, I remember Zeke Elliott and the Dallas Cowboys were, like, memeing it and putting it up. And my sports <laughs> agent was texting me at the time being like, you sure you don't want back in? I was like, dude, I'm, I hung that up. But uh, anyway, yeah, it was great. It's a true story at the draft. It just didn't get a lot of publicity, but back at the Combine, they had uh, Isaiah Simmons and Chase Young try to do that jump over the fence, and they couldn't do it. They failed, actually. <laughs> really? Not as athletic as you. Um, oh, stop it. Colton, you're the best. I think you might be hey. the greatest athlete in the history of the planet. Thank you for coming. We're so glad you're feeling better, too, man. I Seriously, appreciate you guys. Added. Thank you, thank you. Very important. Um, and we will talk to you soon. What's up? Demario, what would you say? Do we have that clip of him jumping the fence? We got to show it. <laughs> I may try to, I'm going to try to pull it up on my phone. Yeah. Colton, before you go, still with Cassie, I see. Everything good? Yeah, everything's going well, man. We, uh, yeah, she took care of me, nursed me back to health. I'll tell you what, I had a rough couple of days, but she was the one standing by my side, so I appreciate it. I love it. Awesome. Colton, yes, thank sir. you. To Mario, hey. thank you. Thank guys, you, guys. Appreciate you guys joining us. Awesome stuff, and keep on doing what you're doing in the community. Yes, well, there he goes. Thanks, man. Man. There he goes. Go, he goes! <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Uh, I want to welcome in Erica Costell. Erica, welcome to the room. Tell Hi us guys. what you're doing. Hi, Tell us how you're doing. I'm doing okay. Um, I said this a little bit earlier before we went live, but I was actually in London um, before the COVID got really bad here. It was just talked about over there. So I came home to what I thought was like a five day vacation in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I've been here ever since, so I've been here for like two months. But it's been good. I feel like people with really busy lives, it kind of takes something like this, unfortunately, to slow down and appreciate like what's really important in life. And I think that COVID has done that for a lot of us. So I think it's just important to take things day by day, which I'm having to learn myself. I'm one of those people who are like ah, all over the place all the time. So it's been good. It's been, it's been a learning experience for sure. What would you say is your next project if we're looking for something for some content to get us through this or we could see your work? 
Okay, well, let's talk about some COVID content. So I actually helped co-found an organization called I'm Making a Difference. And basically what that is, is just a centralized source for verified facts. And since I do have such a big platform with Gen Z and millennials, I was looking for a way to really just like get them to pay attention to what's going on. So we partnered with people like Pray for Humanity, Partners in Health, uh, Seed Global Health, and Harvard um, Medical School. So on that Instagram page right now, there are weekly live streams with doctors where people can tune in and like ask real-time questions. Um, our website launched today, I'm making a difference.com, and there will be merchandise, and all the proceeds from that merchandise will be going to those three funds that I mentioned earlier. So that's what I've been working on during quarantine mainly. Um, but after quarantine, probably just every single thing that I could possibly do, I'm going to try to do it. It's yeah. just like, it's one of those bucket list moments, like, let's get it yeah. in, right? Yeah, a little traveling, some more music, some more modeling, just literally anything, um, anything. I'm down. Any any ideas, questions, throw my way, yes. I'm going to do it. It's awesome. Yes. That's the attitude we all got to have. And Erica, thank you so much for coming in here of today. Cool for being patient. I know you love yes. the NFL, so we love you. Yes. I actually wanted to be a football player okay. in seventh grade. Okay. Yeah, my dad said no, so I became a cheerleader instead, but I'll be watching. No doubt. And we'll <laughs> you be watch the you. show Cheer. That's so, the question. You, I'm a big fan. I saw Jerry on there earlier. I was like, oh, my God, I stand. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> the star of Netflix is the stars. Monica, yes. Andy, and Jerry are here of Netflix. We have a, we, we got to, we got to uh, tie up some loose ends. Titus, before you go, there's some important stuff to talk about with you. You were the first WWE 24 seven champion. The current champion is currently a member of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. What yeah. are your thoughts of Rob Gronkowski, one foot in wrestling, one foot in your home team right there? Tell us about the state. Well, of I'm, I'm the inaugural champion, and he's the current champion, and he hosted night one of WrestleMania this year, and I hosted night two of WrestleMania uh, because he didn't want to stick around for the second night. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> now that it's now now that we now that we both will be in the same city, it's just a matter of time uh, before everything starts opening up. Obviously, I have his phone number, and he has mine. I'll just invite him out. You know, Tampa is, quote-unquote, my city. So I'll just invite him out for a nice dinner, and uh, uh, hopefully there's a referee somewhere present, and uh, and we can settle, <laughs> settle, yeah. settle this, and I yeah. can help him smoothly transition back to playing tight end for the yeah. Tampa Bay <laughs> Hey, Yaya, as a guy who has, has fought uh, Jason Momoa and uh, John Wick, and who, how would you uh, – Handicap the Titus O'Neil versus Rob Gronkowski match. Ah, uh, that's a good question. I think I, I think I got to roll with Titus, man. Uh, you know, one because he's sitting right here, but then two, you know, you've like, you been in shape. You haven't had an off season. You know what I mean? So you've been hitting the yeah. gym, you know, gym. staying Home ready. Gym, so. man. Yeah, 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 you stay ready. Yeah, I can't run good. around. I can't run around with underwear, boots, and baby oil on live TV every <laughs> week. But, you know, right. looking like I've been eating bonbons. Right, uh, right. So yeah, you gotta stay yeah, ready, man. Titus. Yeah, I know you I do a ton in the Tampa community, so we always appreciate it. We love you in the ring, and we love you here in our little uh, Royal Rumble. You are our Big John Stud, my friend. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate it. I, 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 it was cool to hear that Massey's doing uh, something with No Kid Hungry. Actually, uh, I just finished doing a uh, PSA with, uh, with uh, Nestle Pure Life uh, because 22 million, American, uh, 22 million children around the country uh, have lost the school meals that they depend on. I came from a single parent home, uh, mother raised uh, four kids. And, uh, you know, I grew up in poverty, so I know what it means to not have meals, uh, adequate meals without going to school. And so uh, partnering with Nestle Pure Life, uh, we were able to give uh, $1 million to No Kid Hungry. And wow. uh, here recently, last week, uh, myself <laughs> and Jameis Winston donated $50,000 to a local organization here at mm -hmm. Metropolitan Ministries to help some of the homebound uh, families that are that are uh, at home that don't have access to adequate transportation. Uh, they don't have access to being able to go uh, out and about like the elderly and things like that. And then some people just don't know where the feeding sites are. Been working very close with the Hillsborough County School uh, District here. Um, to try to make sure that the kids that were in school, uh, we have the eighth largest school district in the country. 
Uh, there are 225,000 students and 118,000 of those are on free or reduced lunch. So uh, this pandemic has uh, affected people in more ways than one. Uh, the support staff, the support workers, uh, you know, that don't make a lot of money, the paraprofessionals, things like that. So while I'm very appreciative of those that are working in the uh, health uh, uh, industry, in the hospitals and things like that, uh, we, we can't forget those that are janitors and, and, uh, and cafeteria workers. They're, they're exposing themselves every single week trying to open up schools. Now we, uh, we've, we've went from doing uh, week daily school uh, feedings to providing a whole meal, uh, week's worth of food, five days' worth of food every Wednesday, uh, opening up. We started off with 21 campuses around the district. Now we have 174 campuses. We've served 1.7 million meals last week. Uh, and so that's, I think, what people need to understand is that there's so many folks out there um, that are, that are, uh, that they were in a bad situation prior to this pandemic. And now they're like, like a, a far worse situation now, too. So the fact that everyone in here is, all, is continuously using their platform, you know, Demario's working with United Way. I've worked with them for the last five years, too. And I know the great work that they do as well. Uh, we're all, some of us are Boys and Girls Clubs kids. We got Calais Campbell on here who's, you know, obviously done so much for his community wherever he's been. And uh, so it's, incur it's, uh, it's inspiring and encouraging to see so many athletes and entertainers and, uh, come together uh, to, you know, like, like uh, the gentleman said earlier, like we're all in the same situation. We're all quarantined to our ho homes. Uh, some of us have families, some of us don't. Uh, but to take this time now to really appreciate not just how fortunate we are to have things, but also to how fortunate we are to be on a stream like a draftathon that we can raise, I think at this point, $6 million plus mm -hmm. uh, to help service so many great organizations. Um, that's, that's the beauty in our platform. People think it's fame. Some yep. people think it's finances. The beauty of it, honestly, is, and we say it in WWE all the time, we love to put smiles on people's faces. And sometimes a simple meal, sometimes a cup of coffee, sometimes a simple hello, sometimes a, hey, a 10 second, 10 second, hey, man, what's up? Happy birthday. Like, that stuff can go so far when folks are just so down and out. And so kudos and hats off to every last one of you guys on this stream. Uh, so appreciative of the opportunity uh, to be on here as well. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to run into you guys once we do get things open back up uh, at a WWE show. I'd love to have you as a backstage guest. Don't try to get in the ring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you'll do it. Yeah, because yeah, Brent will do it. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, just uh, we appreciate everybody's crafts, man. Appreciate everybody's talents. But more importantly, appreciate what we're all trying to do to make this world a better place. That was beautiful. Titus, thank you. So good. Thank you, Erica, thank you. thank you. Go enjoy your day and continue to change the world. Both of you guys, thank thanks you. so much for joining. Thanks for having yes, me. Sir. Bye, thank guys. You. you guys. Alrighty. We, we have to get to our resident Cowboys fan in the room who's representing Netflix's cheer. But, but first, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we got we to finish this, dude, because I, if I could buy stock in you, I would. You have so <laughs> much going on. Yaya Abdul-Mateen. Listen to what this guy's got coming out. All right. Uh -oh. Got this small art house movie called Aquaman 2. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's got John Wick, uh, The Matrix 4. Yeah. All right. He's got The Candyman. Yeah. Like a remake of the Candyman? Yeah, yeah. He's in the Candyman. Yeah, Candy Tony Man Todd? Candyman is going to be coming out September 12th, I believe, is that date. And uh, really, really excited. It was initially, it was on June 25th. But uh, yeah, June, no, I'm sorry, June. Um, it was in June, but now it got pushed to uh, September. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a real good time. That was my favorite horror movie as a kid, Kyle. I would yeah. watch that movie. I would say The Candyman, you know, three times into the mirror. And I love you, Dave. Virginia Madsen, Cabrini Green. Oh, that's, is it all yeah. the same, or are you guys doing a new way of it? Oh, you a dangerous boy. You, if, if, if you used to play the game, oh, man, you'd be down. <laughs> well, you know like, what? Yeah, yeah, there's nothing going on right now. So, like, oh, if you man. just then, would you do it? Pardon me? <laughs> would you do it right now? Would you go to the mirror and... and... I don't mess around with candy. Man. <laughs> I don't mess around. Look, I, I barely made it all the way through the trailer of my uh -huh. own movie, and I know what happened. <laughs> uh, you know... I saw the trailer uh, about a month ago. I, I watched it again, and I, I had to, I had to check myself. I said, "Man, what am I doing? You know, what have I got myself into? This is wild, <laughs> you know." 
Uh, it's, it's my movie, you know what I mean? But, yeah. but, but uh, you know, it comes out in September. Hopefully by that time, the country's in a good shape to get people into the theaters and, you know, um, you know, and, and, and help put out things that lift the morale. You know, I have another project that comes out next, next week on Netflix. It's called All Day and the Night. I went back to uh, Oakland to shoot that movie. I grew up in Oakland. And um, and and that's gonna be be be, be a really really um, important important story. You know, it takes place in Oakland, hometown movie about a young man who ends up uh, incarcerated for life. And we you know we look back on his story, see how he got there, and to see if he still has a chance to, you know, to um, to change his life and to make his life count even in that situation. So that's a really really important story. And then other than that, man, um, you know, keep my head down and. Uh, 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 trying to eat good and make sure that by the time I step back on the set for the Matrix, that you know I, I still got a body. You know what I mean? Got something. You gotta to fight Neo, or is he a? T are you friends with Neo in this movie? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all yeah, yeah, shooting in SF too, right? Thank you, dude. You, I, I mean yeah, it. I've been watching yeah. you for years. You were a big time movie star, and obviously a great, great dude. Thank you so much, brother. Oh, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Thanks, thanks so much for having me. I just want to say, man. You know, yeah. um, you know, this is a really good opportunity for, you know, to put smiles on people's faces, you know, just like Titus was saying, you know, this this really uh, is an opportunity to let us realize that, you know, we're in these situations where, you know, we're, we're actors, athletes, entertainers, but we also provide a, you know, provide a service. You know, I can't I can't tell how many nights I've, I've stayed in on Instagram live watching somebody DJ and then feeling like I'm at a party and just, you know, that that helps to raise my, my uh, morale or watching shows on Netflix, you know, just to. Put, put things back into the conversation to make sure that, you know, to make me feel like I'm a part of community. So I'm really happy that, you know, that we can do those things um, in addition to giving our time and our money and our thanks to, uh, you know, to those who are, uh, who are working on the front lines to get this, get the world really, you know, back on, back on track. So, uh, you know, thank you all for having me. Um, Respect, you know, yeah, yeah. Glad to do my part, man. Candyman, Candyman, Candyman. Oh, yeah. 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 Be, careful. Be careful, man. <laughs> thank you, Yaya. Yeah, salute. Uh, I appreciate y'all. We'll see All you right. later. Now, you said yeah. Netflix. Um, aside from the Tiger King, the show that's taking over Netflix right now seems to be Cheer. We got three of the stars right here. We got Monica and Andy in that box. And then, Jerry, you're here as well. Welcome to the room, guys. Thank you Thank for you. having us. Thank you, guys. Jerry, I want to start with you because while we were in the waiting room, you did a bit of a cheer. I think we could all use it right now. Do you <laughs> mind maybe rolling out an actual cheer for everyone? Come on, Jerry who hasn't had the chance to get some real life cheerleading entertainment. Okay, you want me to cheer? You want me to come out talk or you want to cheer? First you talk and then you can cheer whatever order you want. <laughs> <laughs> like that I can cheer. Okay, I I'm going to mouth talk first and then I'm going to go into a cheer. Okay. okay. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> now listen, Jerry, 24K Golden is watching, so don't put up no brick here, all right? Let's hit this thing. Okay. Those no Karen Civil. I got this. All these players are so lucky living a lifelong dream. After this quarantine, the world is going to be ready for some amazing, exciting football. America loves the NFL, and we are ready for some football! Yeah! Let's go. Let's go. Okay, period. Now I got a little, I got a little eight count for y'all, okay? Here we go. <laughs> period. You know, I like to show out a little bit. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> Yes, sir. In a Matt Forte jersey. You look fantastic. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Monica and Andy, what, what do you think? You, you guys have been through so much with this show. Obviously, you know, Jerry, you're sitting there watching this. You're soaking in the success of cheer. What do you think right now? How's life? Life is awesome. Life is amazing. Life is Jerry, amazing. I'm trying to talk to Monica and Andy. Oh. <laughs> it's not Sorry the Jerry Harris that. show, my friend. Please. Um, Life is pretty good. I mean, you know, we um, we had our season canceled, that, so that was pretty devastating. And I think all of us took about a week to kind of mourn that situation so that we could then, you know, pick ourselves back up and, and move forward. So, um, you know, we're, we're all doing okay and, and moving forward, working on, uh, Andy and I have been working on uh, next year's team and, and trying to get ready for hopefully a season that will start on time. We'll see. We're all just kind of waiting and seeing what's going to happen. But I definitely love football it, more than probably anybody here. And uh, so I'm really hopeful that uh, everybody's season kicks off on, at the right time. 
Mm -hmm. I have a question for the Cowboys, both of you guys. Uh, they get C.D. Lamb, a first-round pick, mm -hmm. arguably the best wide receiver in this draft. I know that the cheer season might be coming to a quiet pause right now, but you had to be excited Thursday night when you get C.D. Lamb. Oh, absolutely. For sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, I graduated from UT, but it's okay. We're going to take the best <laughs> OU player we can get. We're sooner. So, yeah, I mean, we're all super excited to have him here. Um, he's definitely going to make a difference. So I'm excited to, for the season to start. Hey, Karen Civil, you are a philanthropist and entrepreneur, and you're also a Giants fan. Does it pain you to hear this Cowboys talk? <laughs> are you cringing? <laughs> No, no, no. And honestly, growing up in my household, you had to be a Dallas Cowboys fan. So my brother was a fan. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to be a cheerleader. That's what our lifelong goal was going to be. But then I realized I had no rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> I want life to be more than just um, regular cheering for me, went into some other stuff. But I actually got to work with um, Tony Romo. Um, oh, yeah. Associate producer for his Google commercial. Oh, cool. And I got Tiana Taylor along. We went and we did that in nice. Dallas. It's still online now. It's the one where we teach him how to dance. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So I'm still die hard. Still love my Cowboys. I grew up on it. But end of the day, I love. I'm from Jersey. I love Victor Cruz. So it's like, I just even though I know he's still he's not playing anymore, but I still just have to hold on. This is all we have left. All right. So Victor was a Patterson, New Jersey native. Where are you from in New Jersey? And when those Giants teams are winning Super Bowls and he was doing the salsa in the Super Bowl, in the Super Bowl, how is it feeling for you? Oh my gosh, it was such an incredible feeling. I was in LA at the time and it just I was just like first thing, I'm going home. I'm going home. People are like, Oh, but you're from LA now. I'm like, No, 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 no. Not when we win. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. It's the, most it's the most amazing feeling because I still wear his sneakers to this day, still rep. But I honestly, I it's it's a cross between him and Tony Romo. I just love mm -hmm. them both. Both great, uh, Karen. Thank you so much for joining us here. Is there anywhere we should be looking for stuff that you might be wanting to promote and maybe us direct our attention to maybe kind of give more light on now during this time of quarantine? Um, I'm working with my foundation right now. I sit on the board of 400 Ways, which is an organization that uh, Rapper YG started. We adopted 100 families who are in um, temporary housing. They were basically homeless moms who during this COVID situation, they don't have the basic necessities. So we make sure that we drop everything off to them every week. So that's just been a goal. That's the only time I go outside. So it's been really, really incredible. So many different partners have come in and helped them, um, have been helping us. So that's been bringing me the joy of like dealing with this. Since we can't go out, I've just been working on my inner. And that's really it. So make sure you guys check out 400 Ways. You know, big up to just everyone who's just participating, helping, and just, just, doing, just doing my part. <laughs> Thank you to Karen. Thank you to everyone. Monica, Andy, and Jerry from Cheer. Jerry, you're a national treasure. Monica, you're doing incredible work. Go Cowboys. Go everybody. Thank you guys so much, and uh, stay safe out there. Thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so Peter and Calais, we, we've got some, yeah. some rappers in the room, and let me, let me do a little roundup here, because we got uh, Pilo, who represents the Bay, uh, 24K Golden, who represents the bay and yes, little bozy who is not far in seattle so do you guys the three of you guys know each other yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you guys gold friends are you tight i mean you could be in a group and i wouldn't know tell me man so i probably met pilo through our, our mutual boy dan and we just kept running into each other everywhere and then mosey i saw him at the at the rolling loud last year and it's like i don't know that Pacific Northwest, we all got the same kind of mentality, real open, real charismatic. So it's all it's all love every time we see each other. Little well, Mosey, the Seattle guy. Week 17, we got Niners versus Seahawks. These guys might have had the uh, the last play of the game that might have stopped you. What was your take there? Yeah, I, I mean, like, every time, you know, we play, it's always a good game. I feel like, you know, sometimes we win, sometimes they win. Yeah, the same ones. Okay. So I, I was at that game. Seahawks, you know, there? In Seattle? Yeah, I like, yeah so uh, one of my homegirls worked for, uh, worked for the Seahawks. She ended up giving me tickets, so I just I, I flew up for the game. And then I was, like, in, on, on the end zone, too, like, on that side. And it was, uh, it was crazy. I was just watching, like, Russell Westbrook just, like, march. I mean, uh, Russell Wilson just, like, march down the field. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is happening. Like, this, is not, this can't be happening. And then 
Did yeah. you go to the Super Bowl? Did you attend out of my Super Bowl? I did go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, like shout out to the Niners for, for hooking me up too. Um, but yeah, like uh, yeah, that was a rough one too. I mean, Hi. like one play, a couple plays away from from winning it. So that was tough though. Peter, this is this is some room here. We got uh, Pilo, Lil Mosey, 24K, Golden. Uh, we also have Michelle McKenna. We want to say hello, the NFL's chief information officer, and Rich Freeman, who's with Mount Sinai. To my my MCs in the room, you know, we work with uh, with Nate Burleson, who is um, among many things fancies himself to be a rapper. He always is saying that he can freestyle. Do you guys have that freestyle ability, like, or is it? Do you have to sit down with a pen and a pad first? And and if you can freestyle. Is there a possibility to freestyle about this room right here? <laughs> what do you Try think? Something with Mount Sinai. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Lil Mosey? I, I want to hear what you have to say. I said Pilo got that one. You know how he coming. <laughs> right, Pilo. <laughs> he just put it right off on you, Pilo. Because I, I, I'm not going to ask Peter. These the guys, though. These the guys. These two are the guys. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just here because I want a contest. <laughs> no, see, I, I don't even rap. I'm a singer, so that's all on you, Mosey. <laughs> all right, so Lil Mosey, you want to give us something on the room? Hey, nah. You ain't here 24? He said he gonna go. No, no, that was all you, Mosey. That was all you. <laughs> uh, no, the one I know is is a Vanilla Ice rap. You guys don't want to hear that. Uh, yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear oh, it. No, spit that. Come spit on, that, bro, please. Go. All right, stop. Please. Collaborate and listen. Ice is back with my brand new invention. <laughs> Something grabs a hold of me tightly. Flow like a harpoon daily and nightly. Will it ever stop? Yo, I don't know. I don't know. Turn out the lights and I'll glow. Through the esteem, rock a mic like a vandal. Light up a stage and watch a chump like a candle. Oh, That's like all I candle. got. <laughs> <laughs> I need you on the album. I need you on the album. Stop playing. Anytime. Listen, Let's go. that's going to cost. That's going to cost. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to cost. I need paper. <laughs> Michelle McKenna, I'm sure you're really impressed with what Wait, I got to introduce Michelle. Oh, this is great. <laughs> Michelle, I heard your name so much the last few weeks. All of the technology that we're watching right now at the NFL draft, the, the cameras in every single coach and general manager's house, the, child, the kids that are getting drafted, all of us. You're the chief officer of all of it at the NFL. What has the last six weeks been like for you? Oh, it's been crazy. I mean, we went from not sure how we were going to operate it to, to putting over, I think there's well over 200 and something feeds uh, with content, content creators coming from all over and all getting it across the internet into, into Bristol. It's, it's been an amazing collaboration, but yeah, crazy. Uh, from one-on-one -on -one phone calls with uh, top prospects with the commissioner to calling every head coach and GM and telling them news they weren't, you know, always excited to hear. It's been a crazy, uh, crazy few weeks. All right. I'm not jinxing it because we still have probably – to 100 picks left in this draft, but it has gone yeah. really well technologically. Or the night before, did you sleep at all, or were you nervous this thing would not go as smoothly? Oh, I haven't slept a wink in weeks, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I think I get to bed, you know, one or two, and then I make up by six or six thirty. But yeah, you never want to take a victory lap, at, you know, until it's done. Uh, so knocking on wood, but um, yeah, everything has gone, you know, really well. Everybody was prepared. Uh, I think. Uh, that, you know, you just prepare and then you re-prepare. And I think it's a lot like our players, like you prepare and you train and you never know when you're going to have to go on the field. And the IT people are often in the background making sure all this stuff works. And it's typical you wouldn't be having me on an interview like this. But um, it's been amazing to be pulled out, you know, sort of put me in coach moment. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I also just want to hear what was it like when you, you know, Bill Belichick, you need to do a draft by Zoom. How did that go down? What was that conversation? <laughs> there was a lot of silence. Um, and I'm then sorry, say uh, that again. I got to do a draft by what? What did you say, Michelle? Are you kidding me? You know who the hell I am? I mean, that's a tough call. It was, uh, but he was obviously he got on board as you as did his dog. So uh, yeah, we've uh, awesome last night. yeah. Incredible. That was so good. All right, Michelle, thank you for all your work. We're going to let you go. I'm going to continue to watch, but what a modern technology marvel your team has helped pull off. You should really be considering yourself. I don't want to over, overdo this, but so many millions of Americans needed the draft, and you helped pull it off. It really means oh, a lot to all of us. Thank you.
Great Thank job. you, Michelle. See you Best later. This weekend. And we need to talk to we need to talk to our man, Rich Friedman, the co-chair of the board of trustee at Mount Sinai Hospital. Before we do, please, I, I, I got to get the MCs out of here. Lil Mosey, before we go, can you tell us something about how your life has been during this time? And there, there's so many people who respect you and respect what you do musically, what your message might be to them in this time of quarantine. Yeah, I've been in the house a lot, you know, trying to keep me and my family safe. I've just been working. The best thing I can say is, you know, people watching this, just keep working, take this time to work. When you come out of this quarantine, you want to be on top of your game. So, you know, you want to just continue to work your hardest so, you know, you can come out this going strong. Don't stop. Cause, you know, you know, take keep over. going strong. Don't stop. 24K Golden, Pilo, Lil Mosey. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, I respect you. I'm a fan of yours. And it's, it's not going to be cheap to get me in the studio, but I will do it okay? Thank you very much. And uh, respect to the Bay and respect to Seattle, okay? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Great job, guys. Of course. Of course. All right. Mr. Friedman. Doctor. Hey there. Dr. Friedman. No, I'm not I'll a doctor. A lap. Dr. <laughs> Friedman. Uh, you've been unbelievably patient, sir. You have a, a very important position always, of course, but certainly now with what's going on in the world. Can you please tell everyone watching exactly it is what you do and how these last couple of months have been for you? Um, I'm assuming this was a uh, target. So, um, no, Preston, you just hold on. We got plenty of questions to ask you, buddy. <laughs> You're fine. This I is for Dr. Friedman. Go ahead, Preston, Friedman. Preston, what is that? That's such a cool setup. Do uh, Mr. Friedman, please, go on. <laughs> All right, so I, I'm, I'm the co-chair of Mount Sinai, and the last six weeks, I think, with, as Michelle said, have been really crazy. And um, you know, Mount Sinai is at the epicenter of, you know, the whole COVID pandemic. And since the surge started, we have been, you know, sort of fighting against uh, a lot of challenges. So I've been literally working, you know, just as Michelle said she was, uh, you know, 24-7, you know, dealing with, um, you know, all the challenges that we face. And the first most important thing, and I think this will resonate with uh, football fans, is our key was protecting our front line. And our front line are the nurses, the doctors, and everyone else in the hospital who was being, you know, exposed to all the people who were getting sick. And, you know, we needed to get them supplies and PPE is like, that's the biggest phrase, if you will, personal protective equipment. Yep. Uh, we had to ship some from China. Uh, I mean, we've been trying to get it anywhere we can. But, you know, as an example, the, uh, the amount of these N95 masks that's getting, yeah. you know, sort of featured, we're now using 20,000 per day at the Mount Sinai mm. Health Systems in New York City. Well, Dr. Freeman, I, my family and I just secured some of those. We, we bought them at a local hardware store. I went out and got them. The N95 mask, the 95 refers to, I think, 95% of what is outside. It filters it coming in. This is the that's mask. That's correct. It gives you 95%, you know, safety, if you will. Yes. And we're using 20,000 of them per day. And before this started, we were using 150 per day. Mm. So wow. this would be no different than if every football player needed to change their helmet after every play. Mm. <laughs> Think about that. That's how crazy this it's, is. It's, it's ridiculously crazy. But Calais, as a guy who, who's still playing in the league, imagine every single snap you got to run over on the sideline to get a new helmet. That's what that Dr. Freeman's up against. Yeah, no, that was suck. I mean, I couldn't even imagine, you know. But and we appreciate you, you know, being on the front line, you know, leading this charge, you know, uh, trying, you know risking your own your, your health to make sure everybody else is safe. Man, that's a big salute to you guys. Mr. Freeman, can you tell us really, I mean, just from that community right now, obviously you're seeing it every day, or at least you're in the epicenter for what's going on in New York, but New York and New Jersey are going through it right now. Do you, you've been through it in New York, I'm sure. What, what, what do you think happens when this thing is all said and done? Will the community rally and will it be stronger than ever before? Yeah, I, there's no doubt. I think the community is going to rally. And frankly, I think the community right now is getting anxious to want to rally. But I think that, you know, the stay at home message has been the key. So, you know, at the, at the worst in our health, in our hospitals, we had 2,200 patients and now we're down to like 1,400. So we're declining by 75 to 100 a day so that the stay at home rules are working. So, I, you know, I'm hoping that if this keeps going on, that we can get down to a much more manageable number in the next, you know, six weeks or so. And then I think all of the testing that, you know, was talked to, has been talked about will help reopen business, um, reopen the communities. But I think it's going to be a, you know, a mask society for a while. We're all going to have to be careful. And I'm hoping, you know, we get a reprieve during the summer when it's warmer and we can be outside. 
um, and where you know the humidity is higher and the, and the germs won't spread as much. But uh, there's no doubt, I think the community is going to rally. But you know, we really need the testing. And that we're not going to return to the normal until we get uh, you know, um, a vaccine. Mm-hmm. And that could be a year to 18 months away. And that's going to be the toughest thing. Society is going to change. I mean, you know, the one thing I'd say is we all want football to, be, you know, to start um, and see the games you know, in, in September. So I hope the commissioner you know, um, has a plan to sort of get those football games going because we need to watch football on, on Sunday, <laughs> not just Sunday, <laughs> almost every day. <laughs> no doubt. That is Rich Friedman with a message of hope, some intel from the inside. Chairman of the Merchant Banking Division of Goldman Sachs, uh, Mount Sinai uh, Health System. I, I, I guess that, that's how you pay for that background there, Rich. It's, there you go. <laughs> incredible information. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Stay safe. We got Great, so much. You too. Stay safe. Stay safe. Good luck. Thank you very Peter, much. Who we got here? We've got such a good crew here. The, the room can be <laughs> Let's get right into this, guys. You know him from the show, Alexa and Katie. Jack Griffo, what's up? How are you, how are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm sitting here in L.A. with my dog. Just staying inside, you know? Yeah, we hear you. You know, obviously, as someone who is an actor and usually on the move and constantly going for callbacks and rehearsals or maybe just in the show you're working on, how have the past few weeks been to maybe collect yourself and maybe kind of look inside and maybe look outside of what really matters? Oh, man, it's been tough. I mean, it's like taking everything that kind of makes you comfortable, your job and your friends, you know, all the normal things that we have in our life that kind of we've we've structured to feel normal and things that we do, you know, and it kind of just leaves you in a place of just uh, being stripped down to just yourself and maybe if you have dogs or your significant other or whatever, and it... uh, I don't know. I feel like it could be kind of a wake up call. Like it's, it's kind of making people kind of think about what's important, you know? What's been important. What have you really gotten into the last few weeks? Is there a show you would recommend? Is there a book? Is there anything, what have you done to Uh, kind of keep yourself occupied? Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to read a a little bit more. I'm not a big reader, but uh, I watched that show Waco, which uh, is, you know, a crazy story. And I didn't, I'm, I'm, I didn't really know much about it. Uh, So I watched that. It's on Netflix. It's pretty good. Um, but, uh, it just got really hot in LA. So I think I'm going to hit the pool. Nice. (laughs) Good for you. That makes one of us. (laughs) It's really hot. And I love Jack Griffo as the rest of us have struggled to maintain our hairstyle. You are still a beautiful Smurf blue. It looks great, dude. (laughs) You know, I've always wanted to do it and I figured it was kind of, it was the right time. Uh, it was kind of ironic that I got, I got these pups too, like right around the time that, that this thing happened. It was right before COVID happened and like, just kind of realized that I was just going to get to be home with my new dogs like a lot. So it was perfect. Jack, congratulations. I mean, you know, I have to acknowledge a few things in the room. Peter, we have a little East Coast, West Coast uh, thing going on here, right? We have Fabio Foran, who represents Brooklyn. Wow. You, Peter. Nice. Shout out Brooklyn. And then we also have AMBJ, who is the LA Yes, base. sir. So yeah, we're East yeah. Coast, West Coast, and then look at this. We got Irv Smith Jr. is in here. Yeah, Irv. Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> yes, but... We have a sensation, a dreamboat, an influencer named Preston, who's had a, a great flow, a yellow shirt, and some sort of pink marshmallow. Preston, I what are you doing? How are you, man? <laughs> dude, doing great. Excited to be here. It's, uh, it's uh, dude, we've been sitting in the green room chatting about this for like 30 minutes. So I got to watch Jack pet all of his dogs, flexing on me over here. <laughs> <laughs> How about this, guys? Uh, AMBJ and Fabio Foreign Earthman. This kid that you see up here in the yellow shirt has 34 million followers online. Oh, 34 Irv. million. I mean, let me hold a couple. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Irv wants to hold a So, what I'm saying is, this kid over here with the great smile and the yellow shirt, if you wanted to like plug your single or plug your fashion line, 34 million. Man, Come, on, the baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. That's all we need. It's about a million. That's all I yeah. Yeah. Oh, what you want to talk to this to, to Preston and tell him what you what you do and what you're up to right now? Because he, he's a he's a power broker. Oh yeah, man. I, you gotta pass the followers, man. Go share the tape on me, man. <laughs> <laughs> man. Fabio, how are you, man? Yo, what up, gang? Bow. What do, you, what do you got going on? You know, the guy who's wearing the jersey, Peter Schrager, he reps Brooklyn too right now, man. That's your guy. Oh, right. That's my I- guy. I live in I live in Borum Hill, downtown Brooklyn, right there. Oh, we family. That's it. You know it. Um, I'm right off. I'm right off the end train, right there. Uh, Listen, 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 listen. When the Corona closed, I'm throwing a party. You invited. 
Where is it at? What part of Brooklyn are we going? We're going to the 90s. Okay. East Flatbush. Okay. I'm in. Okay. Uh, tell us how you've been staying busy and what you're working on right there, where you're in your hood, right? In Brooklyn, I guess, right? Yeah, that's Brooklyn. That's a fact. Um, nah, I've just been in the crib chilling, smoking a lot of weed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, chilling, like, I'm catching up with the kids. I oh, I'm, 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 I open my Call of Duty. What does that mean? You're on the video games playing Call of Duty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hey, open my Call of Duty. Warzone? Warzone. I open my Call of Duty. I ain't get on Warzone yet, but I've been I've been trying to get my guns up on that map. Okay. You're playing Warzone? <laughs> you ain't living, Bobby. You gotta play Warzone. <laughs> you playing Warzone? Griffo's an apoplectic. I just I just I just started. I I, don't know. Oh. I had the game the whole time, but I never even opened the plastic. Hey, Fabio, I, what's your style in those games? Sometimes you get aggressive. Sometimes people are campers. Like, how would you describe <laughs> oh, no, your no, style? Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. I'm, I'm the run around. <laughs> Bow! I'm going by right now. <laughs> Herb Smith Jr., guy. Minnesota Vikings. You are a world-class athlete. You are a genetic freak. I, I was a Notre Dame fan, <laughs> so I watched your father. Okay. Dude, have you been staying in shape or are you just playing video games and doing whatever Fabio's doing? What's going on? Uh, no, I've been getting I've been getting to it, honestly. Uh I've been running around a lot. It's, it's, it's I'm in Minnesota, so it's finally nice outside. Uh I talked to uh, your your teammate, Kyle Rudolph, and he's like, it's kinda like being back in high school, man. Like you just you do push ups and sit ups and like it's it's you do what you have to do. I mean, I, I I'm sure you're ready. Like if are you gonna be ready for the season? Are you thinking about September already? Oh, yeah, I feel great, honestly. I mean, like, all I can do is work out. That's, I mean, there's not much else to do. I got a little puppy. Uh, she's eight months, so really just running around with her and, you know, just trying to do whatever I can. It's, 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 it's not too bad. It's nice in Minnesota. So, if, if, like, earlier it was, like, 30 degrees when I first got here. So, now it's, like, 70, so it's great. Irv, I respect Preston's followers and his skills on YouTube, but – the biggest story all week in football was Tua Tunga Vailoa. You were his teammate in college. Tell us, is this guy good? Is this guy going to be all right? Or is he going to fall hey, apart in the NFL? Lefty, I'm telling you, look, he going to be the he going to be the first, well, not the first, but right he now the, only, the last one. The only court, lefty quarterback, but you going to see, that's all I got to say to it. I mean, our offense, I'll say my junior year offense, I think everybody skill position first second round. So and two of the top five pick is just so, you know, the bam away. Calais, you hear that? A lefty quarterback. They don't exist in the NFL anymore. Do you lick your chops for that? A six foot kid who's going to be throwing the ball lefty? I mean, to me, you know, uh, I've been on the left side a little more rushing the passer. You know, I used to be a right side back when I was young, you know, but I'm on the left side more now. So I like a lefty quarterback because that's his blind side. He can't see me coming. So I hit the little tackle with the move, man. I'm coming. Mm. All right, no, let me do a roundup to... here because they're pushing us to go. So this is what we're going to do. Preston, I know you do incredible pranks, family-based, wholesome internet content. You're obviously huge online. Thank you for joining us. Anything quickly you need to say, we, we're up against it. No, dude. Yeah, man, everybody stay safe. Keep doing what everybody's doing. Seriously, it's been, it's been wild out there. I'm sure everybody else has been struggling in their own ways. But whatever we can do to come together like this, awesome. And I Preston, keep... where are you from? You got a great voice. Where are you from? Uh, Dallas, Dallas, Texas. So I might like the Cowboys. That's okay. <laughs> uh, incredible. <laughs> MBJ. Yo, yo. Yeah. UEP was called The Cost to Live Like This. I like it. We get some new music from you soon? Yeah, for sure. I've been in the studio a lot since we've been on core team. And I'll just be playing the game. So I've just been doing a lot of music. Working on the album now. AMBJ is just playing the game. Fabio, I don't think anybody's having a better time in quarantine than you, my friend. Uh, oh, no, no, your no, album no, is called 800 BC. That stands for Before Corona. So it's 800 BC. <laughs> when are we doing that? Is that out now? Yo, that's out right now. It came out. Go yesterday. get it. Go get it. 800 BC, please go get that support. That is viral. It's movie. It's bow. It's big drip. I feel the love of the lit bitch. You got to show them the little dance, Fabio. You got to hit. Come on, Fabio. Do it. Yeah, there it goes. Wow. Shoulders. Shoulders, baby. All about the shoulders. My <laughs> next life, I want to be Fabio Foreign. I want to know, Fabio, oh, your me. favorite <laughs> or the best New York rapper or MC of all time? It's a ba great debate. Who do you got? Um, I got, I got, I got, I got a New York? Yeah. I got to say big. Yeah. Right. Oh, we, we gotta go, then, Jack Griffo. We love you. After, after Biggie, my Netflix, Alexa, and Katie. Biggie, Before we go, though, Irv, 
Tell us, Irv, tell us what you're doing with the American Heart Association, dude. Oh, yeah, you know, we're doing a lot of great things. Um, Play 60 is Play 60 is something that's doing an amazing job, just getting all the kids involved, uh, getting the kids outside, something to do, because, you know, it's, it's tough being stuck in the house. So, you know, you want to get outside, have fun, uh, and, and do whatever you can to stay active. So the NFL and American Heart Association are doing a great job with that. They always do. Peter, take us out of here. One more, one more thing real quick, Peter. Yeah, press what got. Later uh, this evening on YouTube, we're doing a 32-person uh, YouTuber celebrity match. Rock, paper, scissors, $250,000 of charity. If you guys are interested, tune in. I'm one Rock, paper, scissors, let's I'm do it. I'm one of the all right? Let's so do I'm it gonna, now. I'm going to be playing scissors. Jeez. You got to watch me cut some people, all right? Don't, it's gonna be don't show your cards yet, dude. <laughs> dude it's the psychology. <laughs> exactly. Then <laughs> AMBJ, Fabio, Herb, Jack, Calais, and Peter – we will be right back after this with more Draftathon. Wow. Right. Later, guys. <laughs> As we work to get through these times together, you may not be thinking about blood donation, but blood is needed to save the lives of people who are sick with a range of illnesses. It's easy and safe to give. If you are in good health, please donate. We need heroes now. Visit redcrossblood.org to schedule an appointment. While we're all home, social distancing, Meals on Wheels volunteers are on the front lines across every community, responding to older Americans who are most in need, delivering food and a reassurance to millions of seniors that they are not alone right now. Because of the tireless commitment of these heroes everywhere, humanity is winning. Support Meals on Wheels now by donating at nfl.com relief. We've always been interconnected, interdependent, united. And that's never been more apparent than right now. What we do together today will determine how we live united tomorrow. Stay home, stay strong, and if you're able, give for your neighbors who need help the most. Everybody, Rich Eisen here for the final hour of NFL Draftathon Live. We are here for everybody who is under the thumb of this scourge of COVID-19 and fighting on the front lines to make everybody better, to make people less hungry, to make sure that we are all together as a country fighting a virus that does not check anybody's voter registration, that does not check anything except a box. If you get it, you may be asymptomatic, you may be symptomatic. There is something that maybe we can all do to make people's lives better by going to nfl.com slash relief. That's a sign that I've had up on my wall for the, since the first round of this draft. My kids, my three kids, 11, 9, and 6, made that sign, so that means you have to donate nfl.com slash relief that's mark ingram my friend from the baltimore ravens good to see you mark how are you sir going on? appreciate good. you having me chilling I'm, you I'm know appreciative of you being here. Doing well. we are all doing well and thank you for being here uh jr martinez the uh, best-selling author motivational speaker u.s army veteran good to see you here on behalf of national yeah. domestic yeah. violence hotline how are you jr i'm well man thanks for having me on it's a uh, it's an incredible NFL is using their platform to inspire people and raise some money and, you know, create a portal for all of us to be there for one another. It's really cool to be here. You got it. And uh, now we also have somebody here um, who plays the sport of football. 
um, as the rest of the world calls it. Um, we call it soccer, but that's because we are American. What do you <laughs> mean? But the rest of the world calls it football. And joining us from uh, a man who's won two Premier League championships with Mas Manchester City, Kevin De Bruyne. How are you, Kevin? I'm good. I'm doing well. How are you? Did I botch your name, Kevin? No, it, it's difficult. It's, it's De Bruyne, but people just call me Kevin. It's Kevin, how are you, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing really well. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. Mojo Raleigh is uh, right in the center of my screen. I don't know where he is for everybody else, but Mojo, you stick right there. We got to bring up Gronk's name in a second. Uh, I want to welcome in my friend Max Greenfield, uh, an Emmy-nominated actor who starred in the TV show New Girl. He's a big Giants fan. Good to see you, Max. How are you? Well, it's good to see Kirby. Uh, Coach, uh, how are we feeling about Andrew Thomas? <laughs> you ought to be happy you got him. He's a big man. He's, he's them running backs like Mark. They love a guy like that. Yes, sir. Yes, All right, sir. that's a good way. That's a good way to mix this thing up right away. The head coach of Georgia football, Kirby Smart, joining us here. And uh, Max, I do want to feed your Giants fandom and give you your mojo fix for just one second. But uh, coach Jake Fromm just got drafted as we started this final hour of NFL Draftathon live. The 167th draft choice uh, in this draft by the Buffalo Bills. I, I wonder, uh, I'd give you the floor about Jake Fromm, Coach. Uh, I'm just so happy for him. I was trying to get on the Zoom, and I just knew. I said, if I get on the Zoom at three, surely Jake will be drafted by then. And he wasn't. And so I've been sitting here holding my breath that he'd get picked. And now he's going to cold, cold Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, wh wh why do you think um, he's lasted this long? And why do you think Buffalo got a great value pick at 167th overall, as I'm sure you think? Well, as you know, there's only one quarterback on the field at a time. And so many teams have filled their need. You know, it was a, it was a weird year. Things happened in a strange way. Uh, you know, I thought all along he'd be a third, fourth round pick. And, um, he lasted to the fifth. People got a lot of doubters, and uh, sometimes doubters motivate you. So I know he'll be happy to go to Buffalo, be part of a good organization, and they're going to be a lot better off having him on their team because he's a winner, that's for sure. All right, Max, ask him what you really want to ask. Why Why did Gettleman choose his player over everybody else that you saw in mock drafts go higher? Go ahead, Max. Go ahead and ask him that question. Well, I'm just – I'm very curious. What, what, what did we see? <laughs> well, I'm going to be real honest with you. You asked Mark. I, I, iron sharpens iron. So when you go to the SEC – you block the best players in the country and all these draft picks that are coming out and all these pass rushers that are coming out. He blocked all the guys at Auburn. He blocked all the guys at Florida. He tried to block the guys at Alabama, but he <laughs> played against the best for a long time. And not only that, he's really smart. I mean, this guy's articulate, plays the piano. I mean, he's going to fit in well in New York. What kind of stuff does he play on the piano? Just curious. He's got. A, he's got. A, he's he's multi talented. He can do it. All. He played all our team. Uh, we have these little freshman uh, deals where the freshman got to put on a skit and do a play. He played it all those. So any any Billy, any Billy Joel? A little bit of everything. <laughs> Billy Joel. That'll go over well in New York. Yeah, Max, I'm gonna tell you right now. Listen to Kirby, man. If he gives you his blessing, it's legit, man. Kirby's the man. man Kirby's you got Kirby's it. Kirby's hey, I, 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 I yeah, played golf with now. Mark, where I'm sitting right now in this golf course with him and him and Nick. He hits the golf ball further than anybody I've ever seen. So don't play <laughs> golf with Mark. He'll set you up. Yeah, I just got to hit it straight, man. I got to hit the fairways. That's the issue. <laughs> All right, Mojo. Uh, is Gronk is Gronk trying to hide from you? What's happening? Yeah, man. Go back to the NFL. Running and hiding these units. This quarantine, man, is no good. You know, kind of stole my title at WrestleMania, our biggest night of the year. And then he just runs off and locks himself in the house. So... <laughs> Better, he better enjoy his time while he's got it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> you better be doing more squats with that trophy he has. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> I think he's ducking you personally. I mean, this whole thing about wanting to play with Tom Brady again sounds good, sounds good but I think he's ducking you. I would be rich. You want to go tag team with him? <laughs> yeah, I'd go top rope. I just yeah, you know, he left, he left the league the first time to avoid these hits, but... Uh, now he's coming back the second time to avoid the hits from me this time. So. Uh, Kirby, I'm from the era of a, of a folding chair to the back of the head. That's my era of wrestling. <laughs> yeah, mine too. Ole and Arn Anderson, the old friend. <laughs> Builds character, baby. Builds character. Hey, Kevin, what's going on in your world that uh, we're really appreciative of you uh, making it, making this uh, NFL Draft-a-thon live and, and bringing your platform and your immense fandom with you? 
Well, it's, I think it's the same for you guys. I think uh, it's like NBA season, middle of the season got interrupted and we're just waiting to, to start, I guess. I think uh, my view is I think we start training in like three weeks and then trying to be ready in another three weeks because I think we've got another 18 games to finish in like a month and a half. So do you think you'll get out there soon? Um, well, I think we'll when the lockdown gets a little bit easy i think we'll be one of the first ones out it's my view well that would be great news no doubt about that jr i give you the floor on the platform that you are representing and i could see you've got your saints gear on yeah you know it's good to, to look to see mark you know and uh, we still miss him man we miss you but you're yeah. who that you know what's the who that you're all all doing your thing it's it's okay <laughs> we, you know we're, we're still loving you from afar and coach smart like i'm a i, I actually graduated high school in, in georgia and uh, as you can see behind me, too, I, I was born, though, in Louisiana. So that was really hard for me uh, when LSU and Georgia played. I, I, you know, that was tough. I was the only one rocking some purple in, in Georgia. You know? <laughs> it, it, it was tough. I mean, that's probably one of the hardest things I had to go through in my life is, you know, growing up in Georgia and pulling for LSU. Uh, but, no, it, it, it's, uh, you know, for me, this it's a pleasure to be on, you know, with you guys. It really is. And... You know, I, you know, to be quite honest, uh, you know, as we're all trying to like inspire one another and just kind of cr create a little bit of a distraction to a degree from what we're all having to go through um, around the world, not just in one particular place, but everywhere, everybody's, you know, influenced by this. It, you know, we're obviously being told to stay at home and I'm here representing the National Domestic Violence Hotline and I've been able to partner with them, you know, in the last couple of years and just kind of raising awareness about who, who they are and, and what services and resources they're providing to a lot of individuals. And the reality is, as we're being told, you know, to stay home because it's the safest place for us to be. There's a lot of individuals, unfortunately, that are that home isn't the safest place for them, you know, that, that their abuser is close and nearby. And uh, it, we're just trying to let people know that, hey, listen, you know, I, I grew up, you know, where growing up as, as a young boy, like I, you know, my mother was a victim. Unfortunately, I witnessed a lot. And, you know, here I am, I'm married, I have a daughter and just kind of break the cycle. But it was because I had a community and people that helped, uh, you know, kind of help understand how to break that cycle and, and kind of move into a new space and create the new story for myself. And I think that's what you know, for me, representing the violence hotline, I think that's what we're trying to, sh you know, show people is that, hey, you're not alone, even though we're physically dis distancing, you know, we don't have to necessarily kind of lack that compassion and that support and, and just be there for one another. I think that's the key. And, you know, getting people to say, hey, listen, you might be at home and you might feel isolated and you might feel like you're by yourself and you're taking a few steps back. But, you know, listen, the, the hotline is there and, you know, you just go to the hotline.org and learn more about, you know, all the services that they're providing, whether you can talk to somebody over the phone, chatting, you know, or texting somebody. Um, and, and, you know, Rich, I, I, I was in the army. I was injured overseas in Iraq in 2003. Um, as you can see, my body was burned and like a lot of service members, I mean, the recovery was really challenging and difficult and it was a long one, but what allowed me to get to the position that I'm at now to where I can, people introduce me and say, he's an actor, he's an author, he's a speaker, he's doing all these things that he's been able to do. It's because I have a community, man. It's because I've, I have found a community where you know, my friends and family in Georgia, you know, people that I've met in the last 17 years that have just showed love to me and, and just been there for, for me. That's what it's about. And so I just want people to just kind of walk away from all of this and just say, hey, listen, yes, this is a very challenging time. You know, but we can all get through this if we just understand that we can all contribute and be a part of the team that's going to, you know, build that community out for a lot of people that, you know, may not feel like they have that community. Jr., I really appreciate you you uh, coming on here and, and bringing attention to, to, to that. Kevin, thank you for joining us as well. Mojo, we'll get you Gronk soon. Don't you worry. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Coach Smart, I know you want to go back and see how many more of your players get drafted, so I appreciate the time. Absolutely. And you bet. And Max, uh, I'm not just saying this because Coach Smart is here, even for another second. The Giants got a great offensive lineman. And your G-men got a ton. I mean, they they hit that line hard, which you know they had to do. Now, I I'm just excited. You know? Maybe at the press conference, he plays Italian restaurant or, or <laughs> just something from the Billy Joe, early Billy Joe, and I'd be yeah. I think that I mean, goes over. Right. 
Maybe he'll, he'll get a play some Thursday night and then play on Sunday. You know, yeah. I think. Right. He, he signed with Rock Nation, so he might not come Billy Joel. Now he might come. <laughs> Maybe so. You you save yourself some of the early scrutiny if you just you give you give the you know the city a little bit of what they want, and then later. Right. later. <laughs> well, we'll see if he gets a place on Fifty Second Street, Max. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, thanks, thanks everybody for joining us. Appreciate it. Want to welcome, in right, welcome in right now. Want to welcome in right now a man who everybody watches on Extra Actress Access Hollywood, um, our good friend of uh, the National Football League, and someone I have not spoken to in a very long time. Mario Lopez, how are you, Mario? I'm well. How you doing, my man? Nice. Well, I got some, I had somebody here who wants to wants to say hello. Zan, you want to say hello to him? Sure. This is my son Xander. He's 11. Okay. I'm gonna come over, Coop. Say hi. What's up, Xander? Hi. How you doing, man? Oh, he's out. <laughs> Good to see you, Mario. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Had a little bit of a rough night last night, but uh, <laughs> I'm but okay. You, was it a late night for you in, in quarantine? <laughs> late night in quarantine. These days are all blending, you know. Ironically, I've been busier than ever during this time, still doing my shows and my radio show. And now with the kid, which proves right. it. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> proves it to be more uh, 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 challenging. Um, I was more worried about them being home all the time than I was with the virus itself, but it's been working out really well because I, I travel a lot and I get to spend family time. So yeah, sure, just get to stay at home. Uh, yeah. We've gotten some more uh, guests here on NFL Draftathon Live. Tina Shea and Jack Harlow have just joined us right now. How are you guys doing? Great. How are you? What's going on with you? You're uh, now. This is interesting because you're a Rams fan, correct? I'm a big Rams fan, definitely. Okay, LA Rams. We've got, we've got the battle for LA that we got going on right here. <laughs> yes, I'm very excited. Yeah. Excited for that stadium to get up. It's going to be great. Now, um, nothing be. I've called a couple of London games, um, and really nothing beats the international flavor of that game where um, Bears and Raiders. I assume was that where, where, which that was Wembley or was that Tottenham Hotspur? The new it was ta Tottenham oh, Stadium. That's, that's stadium. It was amazing. I know, it right? Was gorgeous, just like the most high tech, huge, st crazy stadium I've ever seen. So that was really, really fun to be able to sing the national anthem. Yeah, that must. I had to hopefully do more. Uh, that, yeah, I know. I know that place is just. Uh, I've never seen any place like that, and I've been fortunate to go to a ton of uh, of NFL venues. That must have been really, again, something for you. I mean, you've done a lot in your career, but to go there and represent our country in this sport, in the league, that must have been pretty cool. Absolutely. It was amazing. Especially, yeah, to go all the way to UK. It was really, really dope. And to be able to, yeah, you know, support all of the, the country, to support the teams. It was just good vibes. Awesome. Jack, you're representing the Steelers. Am I seeing that correct right there? You're correct. Okay. How does someone from Kentucky represent the Steelers? How does that happen? Well, you know, there ain't no team in Kentucky. So the next best option I had was to just go for the team that my dad grew up watching. So he grew up watching the Steel Curtain. So I became a Steelers fan by default. The Bengals are close, but I never got into the Bengals. The Titans are close, but it was easy for me. Steelers. I so. Mark, you got anything you want to say to these folks here? Hey, all those all those AFC North teams you just mentioned are just terrible. Steelers, Bengals, all that's awful. So, you know, go flock. We the Ravens over here. <laughs> Shots fired. Shots fired. Exactly. Well, I mean, that's what the NFL is all about. No doubt about that. Um, the link in your Instagram um, page, Mario, goes to St. Joseph Foundation. What is that about? Yeah, uh, St. Joseph's Medical Center is a hospital that uh, I've been working with for years. My golf tournament supports uh, building the new emergency room center there. And, and uh, we, we've uh, tried to continue to raise a lot of funds there, especially during this time. So we've been feeding the ER department on Fridays, supplying them with thousands of masks. Uh, all three of my kids were born there. Um, it's the local church to uh, where we shoot here by Universal. So you know, you know, a lot of great things. And obviously, they're going through it just like everyone else. So trying to do our our part to help out and I put the link in my bio if anyone wants anything helps as you know Rich. Well that's beautiful. Is that Deshaun Jackson who just joined us? Yes. Fan? What is going on? How everybody doing? Deshaun hey, Jackson is the man. D Jack, <laughs> what up fool? You the man. Nothing much man. Just chilling man. Staying safe man. How you feeling? I'm feeling great man. I'm back to 100% man. That's all that matters man. I'm okay. Up. Well, that's nice. good. Uh, Tina Shea, what are you doing during quarantine? I see you, you're staying active and trying to make sure that everything 
that you can uh, provide this world yeah. uh, makes it a better place. What are you up to? Yeah, I mean, I've been making new music. I've been, you know, trying to get as much live performance still happening as possible. I was supposed to be on tour right now, so that's a huge bummer. Right. Uh, but, you know, safety first. Uh, so it's exciting to be able to still do live performances, like, on Instagram or on Zoom, things like this. This is really fun just to try to stay connected and try to maintain positivity, keep everybody in good sure. spirits, because this is a crazy time for a lot of people. So. Well, I, I, I really appreciate you joining us and lending your, your name and your huge platform to uh, this cause. It really helps. It really is wonderful. And I appreciate you joining us today. Thank Thanks you. for having me. You absolutely. Have a great rest of your Saturday. And uh, Mr. Lopez, the, is that the new gear that you have on? Is that I got, well, not new, new. It's okay. relatively new from this uh, this you know came out towards the end of this this last season. I'm waiting for it. The new uniforms are sick though. They are. Come on now. Those right. are on point. Got new uniforms, got new stadium, got new quarterback, new linebacker. I'm, I'm all fired up. I wish I could see the game in person. Doesn't seem to be the case, but hopefully we'll at least get some uh some playing. Knocking on wood. Right Knock right on wood prayers up. That, right, exactly. And Jack, it looks like a throwback you've got going on. What um, it's been through a lot, man. Ooh. Wow. Legendary. The Polamalu uh, throwback right there. Is that Heinz? Is that Heinz Field dirt that's on it? <laughs> I'd, I'd like. I wish it was, but no. This is okay. my childhood. So, what are you? What are you up to these days, Jack? Well, like Tanache said, I've, I've been working on music, um, writing a lot, and I think the music's gonna get um, really honest and introspective this time around. You know, I've, you don't get to party, you don't get to go on tour. It affects the things you talk about. So, just being in the house makes you kind of reflect a little more. And so that's what I hear the music shifting to right now. It's just more personal, thoughtful stuff. Um, you know, not as much partying because there ain't no partying going. <laughs> well, uh, Jack, you hang in there, man. And I appreciate you, uh, Mario, joining us. Appreciate it. You've got it, Rich. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Thank you. All right. Now it's all, now it's just us, Deshaun. Now it's just us, me, you, and Mark Ingram. What's going on with you? Are you... You're ready to, like, if there's week one, you're ready to go week one. If uh, yeah, I'm ready to fire it up, man. I, I see, you know, with the draft and a few other uh, acquisitions, we got we got some some serious speed on the field with us now, man. So, shit, I'm, I'm ready to go, man. It's uh, been an honor. Um, obviously, very humbling time for me going through what I went through last year, first time in my career, kind of missing the whole season. So, uh, you know, I've just been able to kind of have time to reflect and, you know, kind of just readjust real quick, real quick, and just pro reprogram my mind that, you know, going on year thirteen, whoever would have thought I would have been in the NFL going on thirteen years. So it's just been a blessing. Man. I bet so. Be rolling, boy. Thirteen. Let's keep <laughs> Come rolling, on, boy. You know, we've been rocking forever, Ingram. You know, I'm going on ten, boy. Let's keep rolling. Let's keep, what do you think of the? Uh, what do you think of the Jalen Hurts selection? Hey, um, shoot, man. It honestly. I was sitting there yesterday watching it, and, and it kind of threw me it threw me for a surprise, honestly. I mean, I feel like, uh, you know, he's he's had a great career at Alabama, then going over to Oklahoma and, you know, succeeding like that, you know, after transferring from Alabama. But, um, you know, I mean, I, in, in my eyes, I guess he was the best available pick, you know, and they, you know, I, I know how the front office, I know how, how he picks, you know, they're going to go with the best available pick, and I feel like he's a, he's a great quarterback, you know, coming off of what he's did in college. So we'll see what what happens with him in, um, in the NFL. Hmm. Well, you, um, you're you the man, Deshaun. Thanks for joining today. Really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, man. All the time. Appreciate you for having me. You got it. All right. That's uh, that's D-Jack, as you saw on the right, screen right there. All right, bro. Um, hey, I want to take a minute right here, uh, while it's just me and you, Mark, to thank some of the um, partners of the National Football League and partners of NFL Draftathon Live that have been so very generous the uh, $1 for every retweet of the hashtag Boo the Commish, up to $500,000. I want to thank the folks at Bud Light for that. Uh, Oikos giving $50,000 to Meals on Wheels. Bose, $150,000 to this draft a thon. Old Spice giving $320,000 on behalf of all the draftees that have been involved with Old Spice to the United Way worldwide. Uh, Ford has got given $250,000 to draft a thon. And Campbell's giving half a million dollars to Feeding America. Want to thank all those, all of the uh, partners on that front. Some really generous people out there, Mark Ingram. You know. Yes, sir. That's a blessing there. That's a that's a big blessing for all the people. So, sure, we appreciate we appreciate that. Appreciate the support. It's all for 
everyone to do better. So, mm -hmm. hey, we all we all in this thing together. I know, you know, and um, what's going? Oh, that's a gaming chair if I've ever seen one. That's an esports chair if I've ever seen one. So, are you yeah. on Twitch? Are you on Twitch, Mark Ingram? No, I'm not on Twitch. I've been thinking about it. I got some. I got some cold highlights on the Call of Duty. So. I've been thinking about loading How up. Are you Twitch. not on Twitch? You know, we're on Twitch right now, and we've been on Twitch NFL Draftathon. So I know. Literally, I've been talking about making one. I've been seeing everybody make them and be streaming and stuff. I probably okay. should. Probably should. Hey. Well, um, we have some new guests right here on NFL Draftathon Live, and um, Xander, I'd like you to come over here. My 11-year-old son has been <laughs> waiting for uh, for this very moment. Come over here, Xander. Come over here. <laughs> Do you want to say hello to to Miranda May? Hi, how are you? Hi. Tell her what you'd like to what you like of her work, Zan. Um, Go ahead. You thank you. Here. Last you night, um, I I was sitting in um our room over there, and my sister was using all the TVs in the room, and I was just scrolling through um Disney Plus, and I found <laughs> Bumped because. I haven't watched that in so long, and now I love it again. There you go. But and you want to say hi to Milo? I'm going to get Taylor because she loves zombies, too. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> How are you, Milo, man? I'm, you, I'm by so the way, you, you've got huge fans in this household. Huge I, fans in this that's household. great to hear. That's why we do it. Me and Miranda were just talking. We were waiting in the green room, and this is the first time we've ever met. And we are just discussing. Yes. So are you we're serious? Both, we're both in the Disney yes. Disney together. Yeah. It's I'm, weird, though, because like we do all of these like Disney events, and we'll yeah. be this but you don't always cross paths at the same event so yeah and Jeezy how are you how's it going how you feeling out there how you holding up we're hanging in there we are we are holding up and I want to just you know thank you for being here today as well thank you for so, being appreciate here. you for having me man you got it you got it and, and again uh, to uh, Miranda and Milo thank you for helping me get through quarantine with your shows for my children of course. My gosh. You, you just heard that be on them too. Now, we're sorry you gotta we're sorry you gotta sit through that like 10 times a day yeah I'm so sorry the uh, no, of it, no 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 <laughs> you have no idea please I mean look we're we're the reason why we're here is we're raising you know money for people who are obviously in need of it and all of us making sure that we flatten the curve we're staying at home we're trying to get through the day with kids and so your programming that you have uh, been doing for so long and so much fun the impact you guys make I mean you just saw that my 11 year old he's so excited to meet you guys so thank you for thank being you. here thank you so much for saying that thank you for having us we're so excited to be here we can make something that makes them laugh and you laugh too then we're doing our job <laughs> yeah, I've got it. absolutely well it's interesting that you, you guys have never met before because if i'm not mistaken that would make a dallas cowboy packers game very interesting between the two oh we got a <laughs> dallas fan here okay yes. hey, wow okay uh, I, I, okay I think we're gonna be watching a lot of fun uh intense games together in the future let's do it I'm down. Well, Miranda, are you from the Metroplex area? Are you from Dallas or, or? I'm not, I'm actually originally from Ohio and I was raised a really strong Ohio State Buckeyes fan. Um, mm -hmm. And my brothers, their NFL team was the Dallas Cowboys. And so that's worked out over the years with a few of our players going over there, but uh, that's our two teams. Okay. And uh, Jeezy, your team, I can't make it out on your hat right there. Is that it, right? What do you got well, right it's, there? It's, it's, it's definitely the Falcons, but this says Georgia, so I'm double representing today. Okay, yeah, I mean, oh, you know, Jake, Jake I'm Fromm doubling just, down. I'm doubling down. <laughs> I bet. Jake Fromm just went to uh, the Bills, which is yeah, great. absolutely. Congrats on a long time. Him. That's great. I saw that kid play. He's amazing. He's amazing. I know. And DeAndre Swift being uh, being added to the Lions, that you know, we, we we had Barry Sanders on when that draft choice took place, and he was all fired up about that. No, that's great, man. I, I, I love guys, you know, live out their dreams, and and you know, just you know, just keep pushing, man. To me, it's just amazing to see, um, you know, just just the success. It's crazy. Crazy. Well, um, what's going on? And Milo, you're from Wisconsin. Is that why you're a parent? I'm not from Wisconsin. My dad was born and raised in Wisconsin. So okay. when I, before, I, you know, when I was just old enough to know what football is, we've been watching Packer games since I was a kid. Well, Milo and Miranda, I thank you guys for coming on. And I'm so glad that my kid got to say hello to you because of course. the dad points I just got is there through the roof. So I really appreciate that. Thanks so That's much. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, thank I, you. Again, I appreciate you guys lending your name, your platform, and support the NFL Draft is on live. And keep doing what you're doing. Of course. It's going to be a season. All right. Absolutely.
Well, we've just got, we were just joined by Lecrae, so our Falcons fandom, uh, young ladies, got added. Uh, we just doubled it right here. Yes, sir. Lead that. What up, though? What's going on, man? Hey, baby, oh, no, we're doing better than most. You know, we're right. here for a great cause, baby. We're here for a great cause. I love it. Absolutely. And AJ Mitchell, if you wouldn't mind twisting your phone or whatever you are on so we can see you <laughs> up right there, you go. Yes. There I'm you still go. horizontal, but I need this By the way, I like it. Right there in front of the piano. I like oh, it. Oh, yeah. I've had this piano since I was like six years old. It's, I mean, this piano is like what I've been writing songs on pretty much my whole life. And luckily, I was fortunate to bring it to L.A. Um, I'm originally from Illinois, but I brought it to L.A. with me. Okay. Well, I'm glad that you're there, and I'm glad that my <laughs> sons are in earshot because sometimes they have to really uh, twist their arms to take their, uh, to take their piano lessons seriously. <laughs> I get it. Honestly, I used to take piano lessons. I was like, nah, I don't even want to be creative and write the music. And now it has all worked out. Um, so, Young Jeezy, what's going on in your world? What What can you uh, tell us what's going on with you and uh, quarantine, what we need to know about? Quarantine is staying inside, um, doing as much as I can to make an uh, impact uh, as far as giving back to my community, um, looking out for the people I love. Actually, I'm excited. I have some Agency 99 players, which is my sports agency. It's actually in the draft this time around, so I'm excited for them. And other than that, just staying safe, staying prayed up, keeping the faith, and, uh, you know, just forward thinking. I mean, it's time to reflect. It's time to stay close to family. So, you know, I'm just taking the good with the bad and keeping it pushing, you know? Uh, and and your Instagram um, live, Lecrae, of what you did in support of COVID-19 relief, how did you get involved in that? And um, and I, I give you the floor on, on why you took part in that. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I, you know, first and foremost, I just want to let the NFL know I'm still an undrafted free agent. That's right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just, just in case y'all are wondering. Well, let's, 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 dig into this. let's dig in this a little bit here. Um, <laughs> what position? What, what, uh, what position? <laughs> Whatever, whichever pays the best, baby. I'm willing to you know, all these defense. We can work it out. You know what I mean? I got speed, size. Well, you should have been old agent too. He's pretty good. This guy. I know. You should have been on when Kirk Cousins was on the last two nights because he can tell you something about that. Hey, man. I, well, right. Kirk. Kirk knows how to play both ways. You know, do it all, man. He does. I know. Yeah. All right. No. So. But I, I just been, um, you know, being being in Atlanta and seeing how, um, you know. Uh, there's just a, a a population of folks who are living on the streets and and don't have the the necessary means. I, I connected with my partner Terrence Lester, who started Love Beyond Walls, and it's an organization that uh has been helping people who are experiencing homelessness for years. And so I called him up, and he said uh he wanted to just get people the basic necessities to just be able to wash their hands. So um, he said he he had one hand washing station, and I said, well, we're gonna change that, and now there's 30 of them around the city. And, um, you know, it's, it's branching out into other cities across America. So we just, you know, something basic that we can take, we, we take for granted just being able to wash your hands. But there's a lot of people out there who that's something small, but that's, that's life changing for them. Well, I, I appreciate that. And um, I hope that your tenure on NFL Draft is on live um. gives you the NFL career that uh, clearly was robbed from you. Um, Man. Right. <laughs> And you know what I mean? I just, I, you know, I had to do what I had to do, man. I had to rap. You know what I mean? Make music because this whole NFL. I don't know what's going on with these coaches out here, man. <laughs> I understand. It's crazy. Combine. Hey, you, you and uh, Jake Fromm. Get out of baby. <laughs> well, thanks for thanks to you guys uh, for coming on here. And AJ Mitchell, you tell me what's going on in your world right now. My world right now. Um, same thing. Honestly, just trying to, um, you know. Uh, you know, keep supporting with uh, the COVID-19, everything that's going on, like doing all these lives, um, you know, showing up with some fans, keep playing music, because, you know, a lot of people really want that in their life right now. So I'm getting ready for an album release. So, um, mm -hmm. That's that's my world right now. What's your favorite AJ Mitchell song? Uh, I don't, I think maybe Slow Dance or hey. the first one. I forgot what it was called. You know what I'm <laughs> Slow Dance, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. See, I mean, <laughs> again, my, I am... My Mark Ingram, my daddy points today are just through the roof. I'm just Damn, you winning. You winning, dog. <laughs> you win all the points today. I got him trying. <laughs> AJ, thank you for thank you for being here. Appreciate that. Thank Thanks so, so much. much. You got it. Uh Taya Cooper, good to see you. You there? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. How's everything going? 
It's going great. Thanks for asking. on being a member of the Phoenix Mercury. Well, thank you. What was your draft uh, experience like just uh, last week? Um, it was very different. We had a virtual draft, so yeah. just, you know, appreciative that the fact that they still did something for us. I mean, it could have been worse and didn't know if we were going to have one. So just really appreciative that they still made it happen. I know, right? So did you, Is it, I guess it's just like everybody else here in the last couple of days with the NFL. You're just sitting at home, your family, and then you get a phone call and then, and then, uh, then you get ready to suit up whenever you can. Yeah, you just got to stay ready so that when you get there, you're not too far behind and you just prepare for whatever happens. Okay. And so uh, do you have a favorite NFL team? The Arizona Cardinals. Okay. <laughs> you know what, Mark? Mark, it's okay. Not everyone's a Ravens fan. It's okay. No, it's all good, man. It's all good. <laughs> NFL family. It's all good. It's all is love. That, is that because – you're a member of the Phoenix Mercury now, or or you're just are you being a good company woman right now, or what? Um, no, it it is has to do with me going to Phoenix, but um, I don't really have a favorite NFL team. I kind of just know people that play in the NFL, and I support them as an individual. But um, I don't really have a favorite team. Okay, well, good luck to you in your career. We appreciate you joining us here on NFL Draftathon Live, and the same goes for everyone on the screen right here and McCray and. Obviously, Young Jeezy and A.J. Mitchell, thank you for all being here today and lending your platforms to this cause. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Got it. We'll be right back after this word. Our team at New York Presbyterian wants to thank all of you. You can't see it, but behind these masks, we're smiling. Your cheers are keeping us strong. People are doing the right thing by staying home, keeping themselves safe, keeping us safe. It's why we care for all the people who need us right now. We want them back on their feet and back home with their families. From the bottom of our hearts, thanks so much for your support. We know we'll get through this together. Hello, my name is Linda, and I'm a simulation education specialist with Advocate Healthcare in Chicago. I am proud to be on the front lines of this pandemic, helping our patients beat COVID-19. Team up by doing your part. Stay home and practice social distancing. Go Bears! I'm Natalie Jarrow, President and CEO of Second Harvest Food Bank of Greater New Orleans and Acadiana, and a die-hard Saints fan. For more than a month, our team has provided more than 3 million meals while we respond to the COVID-19 emergency across South Louisiana from New Orleans to Lake Charles. And on behalf of Saints fans all over the world, Go Saints! Hi, I'm Sean Payton, head coach of the New Orleans Saints. As many of you know, I was diagnosed with COVID-19 a month and a half ago and have been fortunate enough to have fully recover. Many people across our country and across the world have not been as fortunate. My thoughts and prayers go out to all of those who have lost loved ones during this extremely difficult time. To all of our first responders, healthcare providers, and essential workers, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. I can't stress enough how important the stay home, stay strong message is to our NFL fans. Please stay home. Please be a good neighbor. Keep your heads up. We'll get through this together. And if you have the means to support, we ask that you join us in supporting our communities during this unprecedented time by texting DRAFT to 21000 during the draft. Every single dollar counts. Thank you. While families go hungry, as they do now, I'll fight. While workers see their jobs disappear, as they do now, I'll fight. As the lonely sleep on beds of concrete night after night, as they do now, I will fight. While sickness spreads fear. While caregivers grow weary. While love is kept distanced. While parents fear for children and children fear for parents as they do now, I'll fight. I'll fight for families. I'll fight for the vulnerable. I'll fight for heroes. For joy. For hope. For good. While light can vanquish darkness. While love can change lives. While I can make a difference as I can now. I'll fight. I'll fight. I'll fight to the very end. We're back on NFL Draft the Thought Live. I am Rich Eisen sitting in my right desk position in my home office. 
We uh we we, we did have Mark Ingram, but uh we have Baltimore Raven running back. Running I'm right here. Uh, <laughs> how are you, Mark? Good to have you still there. Hey, the kids done bomb rushed the room. Trying and, to uh, and, trying and, to regain control. You know, with my with my show, the Rich Eisen show, available on YouTube every day. Um, that makes uh, two YouTube star turn rappers that are joining us right now. That would be me and uh, DDG. Good to see you, DDG. <laughs> <It's> good, <man. laughs> good to see you. And then also Sim Santana is joining us right here on NFL Draft. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Uh, we fine, man. I'm good at myself, you know, trying to hang over this coronavirus nonsense, you know. Are you uh, doing laundry right now? That looks like a laundry room, Sim Santana. Oh, no, this, this is my closet. I'm, this is my closet. <laughs> closet? This is my laundry room right here. See? Okay. That's what it looks. There you go. All right. Sim Sant I mean, I, I, look, I've been doing this since the first pick of the draft. This is the first, I think, um, washer-dryer that we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. I made history. <laughs> you did. You did. You I set the bar very high, just as we're, we're in our last day. Um, DDG, I could see you've got a mask on. I want to give you the floor and what, um, you know, your thoughts on what's going on in the world and what you want to put out there for all your fans to hear. Man, it's crazy, bro. It's just how crazy how everybody got a mask on. It's just how we living now. You know what I mean? It's like normal. But I just feel like, I don't know. I take it very serious because I know people that pass away from it. So at first I thought it was like a joke. You know what I mean? I was just like, you know, it's probably something probably the government did, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. But then I started hearing about people that I knew that was catching and then people that was passing away. So I took it I took it a lot more serious. Well, I think it's crazy, man. It's slowing down life for a lot of people. Yeah. So, so. Sim Santana, I see you have a mask on as well. But yeah, um, you know, it's just a it's a wild thing that's going on right now. It's like you go, you go to the supermarket, and it's just weird. It's like you see everybody, kids, older people, everybody wearing a mask, like really trying to not catch it. And I can piggyback off of what DDG said because I personally know people who died from it, who suffer from this virus. And this, I'm just trying to stay safe, keep my family stay safe, you know. It's wild right now as well. So um, I guess – with you being an Eagles fan and you, DDG, being a Patriots fan, that must have made a, a, the Super Bowl a couple of years ago pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So, for sure. So, uh, DDG, why are you a Patriots fan? Is that the area? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a Tom Brady fan. Why not? Wherever, wherever Tom Brady goes, I'm that type of so, thing. Yeah, Coop, come over here. Why don't you to ask that question to him? My nine-year-old just overheard that as he's, he's watching the draft in the room here. Mm -hmm. Come on, here. Coop, 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 coop. Oh, the Patriots are on the clock, he wants to let you know, but maybe you maybe you should become a coop. It could be a Tampa Bay fan, but I'm still being a Patriots fan because I don't care about if it's if it's Tom Brady. I just like the Patriots in some way. He's gonna Patriots. stick with them. Yeah, you're right. Patriots the greatest. But are you guys got Michael Owenu of Michigan? Of Go Blue, yeah. right there. They just picked up a guard. I'm there you from go. Michigan, actually. Are you from Michigan? Where in Michigan are you from? Yeah, where are you from I'm in Michigan, though? I'm from Pontiac, Michigan. Okay. I'm yeah, from I'm Flint, bro. That's where the Superdome used to be. Uh-huh. It used to be in Pontiac. That's where the Lions used to play. So, um, okay. Brady went to Michigan. I'm trying to get the con – I'm trying to just make connect these dots here. Yeah, Is that man, dots you know, right there? Michigan people winning right now. You know? Okay. W. Is that where you're from, Mark? Yeah, I'm from Flint. Yeah, I mean, my, my whole family up there right now. I never knew that. Yeah. So, um, okay, if you don't mind, Sim Santana and DDG, uh, I just need to take a moment for myself. Did Michigan never knock on your door, Mark? No, Michigan never offered me, man. Um, you know, I was a Michigan State legacy. You know, my grandpa played there, my dad played there, my mom went there, and um, so I guess they just figured out I I, I would never go, but okay. um. It never offered me, bro. I told them I was open for recruitment. And, you know, them and a lot of other schools never offered me. I really wasn't offered by every single school in the country. What about I state? Did state ever offer you? Yeah, yeah. I had I had state offer early. Yeah, I had a state offer early. But you went to Alabama instead? Yeah. They, they, Alabama came in kind of towards the end of my senior year and kind of, uh, yeah, they took the lead on it. They took the lead on it. 
Well, look who just joined us, Polo G, Bears fan, another uh, rap star joining us here on the NFL Draftathon Live. Um, Chicago Bears fan, correct? Yes, sir. Hometown. Okay. So what do you think about the Bears' chances here and what you might have seen over the last few nights if you've been able to take it in? Uh, I ain't really been watching no football. I wouldn't lie, but um, that's me. Um, really paying attention to what the Bear, Bears got going on. I just know we probably need a new quarterback there. Yes. <laughs> that is, that's at least filtered in, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Oh, man. Well, look, you guys, I really appreciate it. Oh, Sim, I haven't even asked you about your uh, your Eagles. Uh, uh, I really don't watch football like that, but <laughs> I, I, like, I was really, you feel me, like, rooting for the Eagles just because it was, like, it was good to see my city Went something after a long time, you feel me? But football not really my thing now. Basketball is a different story. Okay. Know? All right. So if this was basketball draft to find live, you'd be talking about what? You'd be talking about Joel Embiid or what? Yeah, I would be I would I would be more active, you know. Okay. I, I can't really speak on football. So screw it. Uh, we, we can do it. Um do you think do you think that Simmons and Embiid can play on the same team? Yeah, for sure. Like they, they just complement each other game. You know, they on the same team. So Okay. You can, you can tell. Uh -huh. compliment each other again. You can do that. All right. See, that, that, I'm all out of Sixers questions then. After that. <laughs> um, but that wasn't a bad one, right? That wasn't a no, bad one. No, it wasn't. One. It was okay. good. It was cool. That's right. I was. I used to be on Sports Center, probably when you were all on diapers, to be very honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> um, well, look, everybody, I appreciate you all joining us. Is there anybody who wants to let us know what's going on in there? Uh, Sim, why don't you tell us what's going on with you? Um, anything going on in your career? Anything going yeah, on? Yeah, I just... I recently just dropped my uh, first EP, you know. I got uh, Lil Dirk on there, Fabio Foreign. Um, shout out to Fabio. Shout out to Polo J. They both under my label. Um, I got, who else? I got uh, Stunner for Vegas on there. You know, I got I got a nice couple features on there by, like, some, some cool guys, you know. So just make sure y'all get that. It's called Trenches to Riches for me. Uh, that's it. I'm just working right now, working on the album. So we're going to start okay. DDG, what about you? Man, I'm just working on new music, dropping frequently. I just dropped a new single called OD. It's going crazy right now. Okay. You now, so um, I'm just focused on constantly dropping. Congratulations. I just, I, that's crazy. I recently just watched the video. It, it go hard, bro. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, you already know. Yeah. yeah. And Paul G, what about you? And then I'll let you guys go on the rest of your Saturdays. Man, I got a um, I got a project I've been working on. It's dropping next month for sure, mid May and of May, and um, that's pretty much it. I ain't got no more singles lined up. I'm just gonna give them this this thing I've been working on for a year now. Well, thanks for uh, you guys joining us here on uh, NFL Draftathon Live. NFL.com/slash/relief is the uh, is the website everyone should go to and give as much as you possibly can for to. Um, to fight COVID-19 and give those on the front lines a little bit of help and those who are trying to get better from it a little bit better. We'll be right back right after this. As we work to get through these times together, you may not be thinking about blood donation, but blood is needed to save the lives of people who are sick with a range of illnesses. It's easy and safe to give. If you are in good health, Please donate. We need heroes now. Visit redcrossblood.org to schedule an appointment. While we're all home, social distancing, Meals on Wheels volunteers are on the front lines across every community, responding to older Americans who are most in need, delivering food 
and a reassurance to millions of seniors that they are not alone right now. Because of the tireless commitment of these heroes everywhere, humanity is winning. Support Meals on Wheels now by donating at nfl.com slash relief. We've always been interconnected, interdependent, united. And that's never been more apparent than right now. What we do together today will determine how we live united tomorrow. Stay home, stay strong, and if you're able, give for your neighbors who need help the most. Okay, we're back on NFL Draft-a-thon Live, the final moments of uh, this fundraiser that I'm pleased to say raised over $6 million for COVID-19 relief. I know, it's really amazing. The generosity of, of NFL fans and NFL partners in the NFL, um, matching donations from Friday night and, and anybody else that, that gave to NFL.com slash relief. I want to thank everybody for doing that. Um, and Mark, uh, just in our commercial break, we were just chit-chatting about, you know, um, the ages of our kids. You know, you saw my two oldest sons, my six-year-old daughters running around the house. They're all older than the four kids that you have in your house. Yeah. Now I understand why you don't mind spending a full hour and a half uh, on NFL Draft. <laughs> hey, yeah, you guys bought me a, a little bit of time. Wifey locked me in here, but they somehow broke into the contraption that she set up. And they've right. got to control the situation. But, yeah, I got a five-year-old, um, three-and-a-half, two years yeah. old, and a, and a five-month-old. So, wow. um, yeah. So it's full-time daddy daycare when I'm not working out and, uh, you know, keeping myself right that way. Well, that's great. You know, I don't know if this microphone uh, takes all the ambient noise of the room out. I hope it does because my three kids are right here. They're dancing. If I flip this camera, <laughs> this laptop around. Hey, it's all good, man. They just infiltrated my whole situation. I can't believe I've been able to keep the peace been, this long. The- you know what I mean? Oh, man. So um, we had Lamar on first night. Um, and... Um, I just love that that kid, there, and yeah, I, I, you know, he is he is a kid. He's so he's just at the very beginning of his career in superstardom. Um, and there's you, and I, I think you and J.K. Dobbins and the rest of that crew. I mean, mm-hmm. that is impressive. That is you're yeah. gonna, you're going to go to work. Yeah, this man. We had a uh, you know they've been building a solid foundation in Baltimore for a while, but just our team that we had last year, a um, right. special group, and just for us to be able to add more dangerous players. We're adding pieces. We're getting stronger. Um, we're making a better team. We're getting more playmakers. It looks like from the from free agency and from the draft, we're getting ballers to come. Good people, good ballers, man. So um, that's what you need to, you know, challenge, you know, for a championship year in and year out. So, um, you know, our front office, our, our organization is great, and I know we're just going to add the right pieces so we can give ourselves the best chance to be champions. Right. And, um, that's the ultimate goal of everybody. Well, I'll, I'll turn you in the last couple minutes into paparazzi like a regular TV analyst. You know, uh, Aaron Rodgers apparently connected with uh, management in Green Bay and also congratulated Jordan Love on being drafted. Uh, all that said, what do you think he and maybe Aaron Jones are thinking that the Packers used their first two picks on the backups to the two guys named Aaron? What do you think what they're thinking right now? I, bro, I, I don't know, bro. <laughs> I don't know, but... Um... That's, that's, that's stand-up of Aaron, you know, just to go ahead and reach out to Jordan like that. But, you no, know, I think the league is uh, needs that, you know. Um, instead of just being selfish, I think you always need to take a younger player along and um, just, you know, um, be be open, you know, um, be transparent, teach them, you know, some of your successes, your failures, and help bring them along so they can have great careers and they can do it to the further generations. It's all right. about passing the game down, passing the love down. So well, I guess uh, you'll, yeah, you'll yeah. be doing that with Dobbins, it seems, right? Yeah, man, you know. You know, I came in with some OGs that kicked game to me, Darren Sproles, Pierre Thomas, you know, Chris Ivory. You know, I was in a good room as a youngster and a lot of other older players, you know, in the locker room. But, you know, I, you know, just being with Alvin, being with Lamar, being with Gus and Justice last year, the running backs we have there now. Right. Um, you know, it's just all about passing the game forward, you know, uh, being transparent. Competition breeds excellence, you know, so um, it's a good thing. Well, I'll tell you what, man. Um, John Harbaugh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure – for many reasons, watched Michigan-Ohio State games, obviously, being personally invested in it. Yeah. I am thrilled that Dobbins is no longer running against Michigan. That kid, I'm, yeah, I know he was tearing the Big Ten up for, what, three years, man? I am telling you, he is yeah. serious business. And I just yeah. think you and him in the same backfield on occasion or 
seeing, I mean, in Lamar. Hey, we're going to get busy. We're going to get busy. That's for sure, man. He definitely can tote that rock, man. You know, he had two years of a 1,000 freshman, sophomore, didn't go for 2,000. I don't care where you at. That's 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 toting the pill right there. So, yeah, you can tell he got it. He got it going on. All right. Well, that's it for NFL Draftathon Live, which means Mark, you've got to go back in <laughs> that house. <laughs> it's all good. Got, you can't hide out. I got my five year old just off the training wheels yesterday, so I'm on that mission. They want to okay. go swimming. So between okay. the 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 tricycle, I mean the bike training, and then jumping in the pool, we should be. You know, that should take us to about eight o'clock getting ready for bed so good so we'll stay <laughs> home and stay strong that's the idea that's what everybody's saying thanks for doing this yeah yeah, yeah thank you okay that's mark ingram of the baltimore ravens right here on nfl draftathon live and i just want to say you know um just a few words right here as we're wrapping things up um this idea to have a fundraiser and have as many guests come in and have as many guests be involved uh, as you might imagine, there wasn't a lot of planning behind it, that this was something that a lot of people did not know would be necessary, obviously, and did not think that it was something that could even be pulled off. But on behalf of uh, everybody that's behind the scenes, uh, from the social media team uh, of the NFL to the folks uh, in the charitable wings, if you will, of the NFL, those who deal with charities and those who deal with community relations and those um, who deal with getting these players. Tracy Perlman, I'll just give her a shout out because I've known her for a very long time. And the rest of the teams that have put this together, it was absolutely remarkable. My friends at Central Talent Booking and you, Mark Teitelman and your crew, who are all, who are all sheltered in place to make sure that this all went off without a hitch and most importantly raised as much money for COVID-19 relief for the six charities that the NFL identified, along with the partners of the NFL who are so generous with their time and also their money. And um, everybody should be proud. Everybody should be absolutely proud of what we have been able to do. Uh, and I'm very proud that I was a face front individual here. I just sat here at the corner of my desk and just talked to a bunch of people. Um, but we, we all together uh, did some good, which is great. Six million bucks for NFL.com slash relief. And that website is not going anywhere. So let's keep hitting it. And let's keep making this world a better place. And let's keep understanding that even though we are being socially distant, we are staying at home. We're doing it for a reason. So that the Thursday after Labor Day, this coming September, we can watch football the National Football League, kick off, and we can all be out there best we can. I understand what's happening in the world right now gives everybody a lot of pause and potentially looking at the glass a little half empty. But what we've been able to see right here over the last three days with NFL.com slash relief should give us that half glass full feeling because this was nothing short of awesome. And in terms of my career, one of my highlights. So signing off from my office, certainly since my children are running around right now and I've got to go do this daddy thing for the rest of Saturday. And then we'll be back at it on NFL Network and the NFL Media Group because the draft will be over soon and we'll figure out what's going on in the NFL world as best we can. But on behalf of all the men and women who pulled off this NFL Draft-a-thon, I say thank you to all of them. And I say thank you for taking this in and to all the social media partners of the NFL who pitched in. Thank you. And this is Rich Eisen signing off.